How are we doing, chat? Make sure the music is just right. Now listen. Uh, Outer Worlds, because it's like space RPG, okay? Listen. That's the current project I'm working on, so you better just get used to hearing the music for it, because you're going <laughs> to... I'm going to be stretching like two and a half hours of music out into like four hours, so... Stop streaming during my work day. Stop working during the day. Just pay me money. I can't believe you got a copy like four months early. So true. Is that leak copy? So chat, how's it going? We all here was here for Mr. Private Sessions stream yesterday where I was there. Did you knowingly put Stavros Halkias in your videos? I mean, like he's in the Come Town bit that's in the Skyrim video, you know? I wasn't making a statement with that. I'm not making a statement ma now. I don't care. <laughs> I don't know why people are confused with this. I guess they really don't know. So when I did Cyberpunk 2077, um, I went through the process of going through a VTuber model. Wake up here. I went through the process of going through all of the kind of marketing material that got released for the game. And, um, that's what this is going to be, is uh, catching up on the marketing material ahead of the stream next month. What state do I think Starfield will be in on release? There's no clue because um, they delayed it by almost a year, so them delaying it is kind of a kind of a sign that maybe they're trying to put some polish into it. I think it'll be boring. It'll probably be boring as sin, and it's probably going to have a little bit of cringe writing. Um. I have no clue what the technical state of it will be, though. Twenty seventy seven delayed for who knows how long, and it was still a mess. Uh, Twenty seventy seven was a complicated thing for sure. It was a mess in different degrees on different platforms. Is Starfield coming out for PlayStation? Because that might that might be a might be part of it. For some reason, stuff coming out on the PlayStation just tends to be more broken compared to the other releases. But listen, listen, chat, chat. Rules for today: hard mode. Okay, no black pilled posting. That's the rule for today. I'm gonna pin this. I don't want to hear any nihilism. I don't want to hear anybody going, "Fucking Elder Scrolls Six is only gonna have three skills." No, okay. Keep it simple. Keep it straight. I know it's hard to keep it straight, but try to do it anyways. Alrighty. I want to say Starfield is required to be on PlayStation. That would be a hell of a rule. That goes straight to you have to release it on your competitors' platforms. Keep it simple is fine. It was ML's 
uh, edition of Keep It Simple Stupid that kind of tanked it. All right, it looks like Mr. Private Sessions is ready. So, um, brace yourselves because it's going to be a couple minutes here of us tuning the volume. Hello, Mr. Private Sessions. He says nothing because he's expecting an apology from me. You see, I hijacked his stream yesterday and was drunkenly, drunkenly spamming racial slurs in the chat. Yeah. That was me. YouTube, YouTube's, um, they're not willing to lift that community strike. They said, um, you really shouldn't be associating with people like that. It's, mm -hmm. That's on you. Of course, I go unpunished as it wasn't on my channel. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to accept like four Raid Shadow Legends uh, sponsorships now. Just to make up for it? Mm-hmm. Hang on. Um, I got to put the Outer Worlds music on tracks three and four. Otherwise, you're going to be quiet too. I've been uh, going through some of my Fallout 76 footage, pulling up clips. Some tasteful, what a game. some tasteful clips that we can post to share to really sell <laughs> our Fallout 76 project. Cumulative eight hours, four hours a piece over at Patreon.com/slash Patrician TV and Patreon.com/slash Private Sessions, of which you only have to buy. <laughs> The, the pitch is getting too long. <laughs> it's a convoluted plan for sure. I mean, the thing is, it's like really simple, but like it just seems convoluted. <laughs> no, the convoluted thing is that I had to upload four versions of the same fucking video <laughs> on YouTube. Well, I did that for um, Skyrim. So that's just kind of the uh, way it is these days. It's what they want. Mm. They want us to waste their server space with redundant videos. Private Sessions need to, needs to rig himself up a mocap Fargoth. No. You need to take the, the VTuber pill. I need a... I need a... camera first. I don't, <coughs> even, I don't even have a camera. <coughs> That's the easy part. <coughs> fucking expensive. Log Logitech has that shit on lockdown, you know? They're like, do you want 1080p? <coughs> well, you gotta pay 90 bucks for that thing. No, my general rule in the uh, Discord server is if anybody's talking about Elder Scrolls 6, they're not allowed to be blackpilled. Because <coughs> it's the most boring kind of conversation that uh happens is people just going and then bethesda's gonna cut this and then bethesda's gonna do this and it's gonna be bad and yeah so <coughs> i had to toke up listen <clears throat> this coke hits hard I become a Marwind VTuber, what race slash model would I choose? Hmm. I haven't played enough Marwind yet to make a funny joke. Yeah, to know what the uh, deep cuts there would be. Yeah. All right, let me get you into the uh, watch together before, we, uh, before I make it publicly, like, seen. Oh, yes. Oh no, chat, you got distorted. Private is a sky baby. It's true. Um, I'm on a I'm an oblivion boomer. No, he's a sky baby. His first Elder Scrolls game was Elder Scrolls Online. 
This that's fucking slander. <laughs> Dangerous. You'll be hearing from my lawyer. Dangerous slander. <laughs> I'm trying to think what character I would be from Oblivion. Probably Raminus Polis. Hmm. Here's the deal. Um. So I didn't want to invoke Redfall in a discussion of Starfield. I'm going to invoke it insofar as there's no way that the money isn't looking at the vultures. The hungry, starving, YouTube-grifting vultures that are t tearing apart Redfall. <clears throat> and uh, they're just salivating, okay? They can smell blood from a mile away. They're looking at Starfield as their big paycheck this September. And they know full well if they don't put a well put together product out, they are going to get destroyed in that field. So they got to make a decision about whether or not they're going to take advantage of that or not. The vultures, you mean? I, I mean the the influencers. Yes, the influencers. Yeah, I mean, it, if you want to be if you want to be proactive, it's best to get your black pilled predictions out now. So in like four months or whenever they release starfield you can be like i called it mm -hmm. i called it guys guys starfield was broken who could have who could have predicted this i i do find it funny that uh red fall is now um has a lower metacritic rating than fucking saints row the reboot like come on guys <laughs> it's not that bad <laughs> Did you play it? No, I haven't played either. But well, see, there's no then, way it's that bad. Then you don't know. <laughs> there's no way it's that bad. There's already like five videos titled I'm Worried About Starfield. So that's the funny thing. As I was pulling together all the material <laughs> that we were going to watch today, I was seeing... I was fucking seeing the Bethesda shields that were like, Oh, I'm worried about Starfield. Red, Redfall is such a worrying sign. And it's like, they're, they're different companies. Just because it says Bethesda's, like, Bethesda somewhere on there doesn't mean that, like, they actually, like, Bethesda Game Softworks or Studios or whatever, whichever one it is, they don't have anything to do with Redfall. Now, of course, they're both going to be probably bu be busted as shit. I'm not going to deny that there's a high probability Starfield's going to have issues. But what's going to happen is Starfield could have, like, a an Elden Ring tier release where it, the issues are admittedly minor and get fixed pretty fast. And there will be endless mm -hmm. compilations of even minor stuff, right? So it's like, I remember there was an article that was written about games that got released this year that were horribly broken upon release and like Hogwarts Legacy was listed as one, despite me literally never hearing anything that was broken about it besides like, uh, the only thing that's busted about Hogwarts Legacy is that it leans on DLSS to get performance. But, like, in terms of mm. bugs, I didn't really hear anything about Hogwarts Legacies. But the grifters are out there saying that, like, oh, yeah, it was another one of those games that came out horribly broken. So, like, Bethesda could knock it out of the park and have an admittedly minorly broken game. And you're still going to hear about it from the grifters because they are relying on it to make their paycheck this September. Bug Bethesda. <clears throat> They're going to deliver. I heard today that uh, the new Jedi game is uh, eat for a completionist playthrough only 50 hours long. And that right there was like so tempting to go play. That was the best reason I've heard yet besides the good dungeons that are apparently in the new Jedi game. Yeah, I'm finding the the Redfall Starfield stuff going on right now more interesting from the perspective of Microsoft than anything else. Yeah. I, 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 I just want to be a fly in the room of those board meetings right now. <laughs> 50 hours for a 100% playthrough, that's it. That's apparently what a completionist playthrough of Jedi uh, Survivor Stories or whatever the fuck it's called. That's what it's looking at. Um, I'm fine with that. I am so fucking sick of games that want to, well, they just 
want me to dedicate like 300 plus hours to playing it yeah i was happy with hogwarts legacy being like 40 hours it yeah. felt it felt pretty full too for that give like, me like 30 to 40 hours of just like really fun solid gameplay and you know maybe like maybe i'll come back and play it again in like two or three years what's funny but, like, is that's how, well, how people defended outer worlds which is the music that we're listening to today um where outer worlds has a different problem where yeah it was on the shorter side but there's a very different reason for why that was like, you, you give me that i can justify dropping 60 to 70 bucks on that as long as it's you know good of course i don't want 40 hours of time wasting terrible story boring gameplay bullshit but well the thing with the merlin trials is that's fine i didn't have a problem with the merlin trials because it's on you how much you want to do it and upgrading your gear is kind of a meme yeah there's supposed to be music in the background ignore that the uh the sound people for outer worlds normalized it to where <laughs> the peaks are like barely audible but yes Wasn't Outer Worlds a double-A game? That's funny. Obsidian only makes double-A games until somebody wants to say that they're good, and then suddenly they're a triple-A studio. They're kind of the, the quantum triple-A studio. Who's the worst Outer Worlds companion? Um, Depends on the metric. Probably, probably uh, either Felix or Parvati. Double A point five. I like that term. <laughs> Sam. Actually, I like Sam more than Parvati. Parvati, like, isn't a companion so much as she is just somebody who lives on the ship. She's a fine character for being on the ship, but literally, I very rarely saw people bringing her out after they leave Edgewater and they get other companions. Okay, let's let's have a more contentious discussion. Who's the best and worst follower in Fallout New Vegas? I didn't really use followers in New Vegas. Oh my god. I know it's Yeah, theoretical. actually a, a, a lot of them are pretty fucking overpowered. And you can get pretty overpowered in that game quickly too. Like Boone is basically he'll just he'll just annihilate anything before you even get to it. Boone's the best character if you literally want to play a pacifist. I also can't even answer my own question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I like pretty much all of them. I dropped I Outer guess. Worlds after the second world. I don't blame you. I have uh, <clears throat> a lengthy explanation for what all is filtering players out of the Outer Worlds. Because uh, it is a an amazing level of attrition that that game has. Your odds are better of picking up Dark Souls blind and finishing it than it is picking up Outer Worlds blind and finishing it. I'm not even jo joking. Like, I have achievement data to prove that. I think my fallout, my fall off was when you get, um, no, no, what, what's, Nioka? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I got, like, halfway into that planet, and then I just stopped. Yep. If you survive Emerald Vale, Monarch will filter you. And what it is, is either you have the taste to realize that the game is bad while you're in the Vale, or you hold out hope that the game is going to be good, and then you get to Monarch and realize that um, the Vale is not intentionally bad to make a point. It's just bad. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of... My experience with that game was a lot of giving the game the benefit of the doubt because of obsidian's track record mm -hmm. and then i got like halfway into it and i was like this is not good it's not bad but it's not good either and i just i have other stuff i want to play instead i think the biggest problem with the game is its sense of humor um it doesn't balance humor right 
and they admit in the like behind the scenes stuff to like they wanted their uh project to be they wanted the game to be taken seriously at points and then the humor is there as like spice to because it's 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 so dark and it's so serious that you need really? the humor to pepper it out and then you play the game and it's like weenie hut juniors sci-fi like yeah, the, the darkest part not... of Outer Worlds is in the DLC, and it's just that they turn people into meat cubes. Yeah, I did not take that game seriously whatsoever. I, I thought that was intentional. I, th I thought it was supposed to be too, like just kind of wacky and silly. Wow, that makes the game even worse. Awesome. Man, how do you, how do you fumble on that? Um, I mean, just the tone. It's hard to tell if it's cope or not. Because the other the other telling thing is that I don't know if you did you play on Roseway when you played? Um, I don't think so. How'd you get the monarch without going to Roseway? Never mind. Um Roseway was the game's vertical slice, which was like the first thing that they did. And uh if you play through Roseway, it kind of becomes obvious what the problems with the game are because it was done first and it doesn't have any of the the main problems that the rest of the game has, like with its its writing and humor and world building. So, um, <laughs> like the humor in Roseway is a lot more subdued compared to the rest of the game. And so it's like, oh, okay, so they played through Roseway and like, we got to turn up the humor. Mm. Yeah, maybe they got feedback from that. Listen, if you haven't already played Outer Worlds, you are never going to get a good experience out of Outer Worlds because, like, that ship's already sailed. That game's going in the fucking memory hole. People will kind of go, oh, I remember that the next time Outer Worlds is at, like, a trade show and they do another cringy trailer and then that's going to be it. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you're doing a video on it just so that I don't have to. Mm-hmm. It's it's one of those games. It doesn't need that much discussion around it. Alrighty, so uh, chat, are we ready to take the horse off the screen? I know, I know. How dare we take the horse off the screen? Does anyone even remember the DLC for Outer Worlds? That's funny because the DLC is actually way better than the base game. The only problem with Outer Worlds DLC is that you have to play the base game to uh, play the DLC. So. It with that in mind, then, do you think Outer Worlds... Like, if Outer Worlds 2 is as good as the DLC of Outer Worlds 1... There's no way they'll pull that off. <laughs> All right, I won't even finish asking my question, then. <laughs> it's kind of like a Tribunal Blood Moon versus Oblivion situation. Bethesda Ooh. never pulled off making the follow-up game as good as the DLC the last one. So, yeah. I don't see Obsidian beating that trend, either. Yeah. Shivering Isles? God damn. Yeah, imagine a Skyrim where like it was at the level of Shivering Isles in terms <laughs> of quality. That's what we missed out on. Mm. Alrighty, chat. Uh, this is just the announcement trailer, so I'm just going to play it and let it go in the background. We have to charge... Will you tell us about that time you almost drowned? It's not really that much of a story. I was in the water, and I almost drowned. I can't swim that well. I can swim a bit better than most common people. So, I need to remember, when did this trailer come out? Because I need to put that in the... It was 2018, wasn't it? With uh, the Skyrim one? non Zor, please, too loud. If I alter the volume, does it alter for you too? No, it shouldn't. June 10th, okay, 2018. Okay. 6 10 2018, because I'm not a savage who puts the day first. It's a nothing announcement trailer. Um, I'm trying to think in the history of announcement trailers, have there been as scarce of details? Besides, obviously, Elder Scrolls 6, because the Elder Scrolls 6 honestly really wasn't announced. Like, 
I saw yeah. and somebody was talking about an interview where they were like, his is he's so good. He got Todd Howard to admit there's going to be a Fallout 5 and it's like, wow. That's like getting the weatherman to admit that it's going to rain at some point. Like of course there's going to be a <laughs> fucking Fallout 5 at some point. Dip shit. I'm going to be even more prophetic. I think there's going to be a Fallout 6. Mm. Unless the studio studio closes <laughs> down. Yeah, mass industry death. Yeah. <laughs> My question is, why did we give 3D Realm a hard time for taking 12 years to give us Duke Nukem Forever, but they won't do the same about Tez 5? I assume you're meaning Tez 6. The difference is that they were actually working on Duke Nukem Forever, and that there were multiple versions of the game that they just didn't release, because they kept changing the design vision to kind of, like, respond to new games. So, like, Duke Nukem Forever was going to come out, and then Halo came out, and they were like, okay, we got to respond to what's going on in Halo. And then, like, by the time they got around to getting that done... Like, I think Call of Duty had come out, and so they had to add stuff to respond to Call of Duty. And that's, so like, it was legit in development hell. I don't buy for a second that beyond, like, some pre-production ideas that have been jotted down on, a like, a piece of paper, that anything has been done on Tez 6. That reminds me of a story that I heard from um, Ken, Lev Ken Levine's new studio. This is, like, a year ago, I think, maybe close to two. A um, bunch of people left his studio, and they were reporting that his game, which he released, he, they, like they've announced it now, it's called Judas. Um, it was basically stuck in development hell because um, Levine would see like a new game come out and be like, "All right, fuck it, we have to restart the entire project. I want the game to look like that now." Yeah. And because uh, because Two K literally wrote him basically a blank check, he was able to just continue to do this. So like, the the studio, like all the, the teams and stuff, are getting really annoyed because they're like they just kept throwing out months of work and stuff. Like they would have like the whole like vertical slices of an entire game and stuff, and be like, no, no, no. You see what this new game does? I, I want to start doing that. It's yeah, it happens. So, yeah, um, that's kind of the difference between Duke Nukem Forever and Test Six is that. Test 6 is just in pre-production. It's not like they've actually been working on the game since they announced it. You realize they only announced it just so that people would stop asking if it was going to come out. Yeah. Well, they announced that before the acquisition, right? Mm -hmm. And that was the other yeah. component of it, too, was that they were just like, Hey, Microsoft, we've got Elder Scrolls. Do you want to buy us? <laughs> we've. Oh, that was also the update where they announced a new IP from Bethesda. And Fallout 76. Mm -hmm. Their, their oh, live right. service Fallout game. 70. Yeah. So they were literally in 2018, like doing everything they could to shake their ass hard enough that Microsoft would go, damn, girl, got a dump truck on you. <laughs> and so uh, that's why it got announced. It didn't get announced because they were working on it. Yeah. And they, and they had their own show at E3 for that, too. So, like, they needed something. They wanted their mic drop moment because Starfield and 76 were not going to be it. The community patch for Test 6 has been announced insofar as they want to restructure how it's going to be done so that a single person doesn't get to like dictate changes. And um, so, like with Skyrim, there has been a huge problem with the guy who maintains the unofficial patch just being a massive fucking diva about everything. And so, like, that's the uh, that's the main thing I've heard talked about about future community patches is they can't have that can't happen again, or shouldn't be allowed to happen. Which is it's easier to unfuck once you uh, once you work at it from the start. Sorry, I was loading up our next our next video here. Wasn't what a great teaser trailer. Can private sessions just say Hollow Knight 2 this month so I can sleep? I think you're thinking of the wrong one. <laughs> I don't think you've ever done Hollow Knight. No.
Alrighty. Kind of looks like, uh, like this barren area. Oh, okay. There's this alpha in-game footage on the creation engine, too. I wonder how much Morrowind code is still in Creation Engine 2. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just thinking, I'm looking, I'm like looking at this area and it's just like kind of the, like they've got this filter on because I think some of it is untextured or something like, and I think the mountains in the background are a sprite. <laughs> yeah, probably. It's hard to tell. From the award-winning creators of Skyrim and Fallout 4 and nothing else. <laughs> Why are you watching the old teasers when the gameplay reveal and the release date trailer is already here? Because I'm going to watch everything. Why is that such a mystifying thing? Only watch the most recent trailer. Twenty-five years in the making because Todd Howard had to keep begging for the money to make the game. <laughs> now, what happened? What happened to? We like to start over with every project we make. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Just shot. I'm trying to think like. With the Fallout 76 experience that we have for the way that they're going to do Starship building. So this has got to be just like a clicked on cell that they've done, right? Yeah. So it's like how much of this is interactable environment and how much of it is like pre-made set dressing. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm wondering too. So like maybe they could do something where the individual, like I'm seeing the, the barriers here. Like, uh, you know how in cells it's very obvious where the uh, corners are? Because I had you yeah. mess with the construction set. So I'm yeah, seeing yeah. kind of like where the seams are hidden, but like you can still see that it's like that blocky layout that they do with Creation Engine stuff. So like these two bays look like they're independent. So I have to wonder if like it's going to be a bunch of preset variants or if like... I mean, it would be cool if like the stuff that you have in your inventory dynamically shows up, but there's no fucking way that... That they're gonna do that i'd be surprised if it if they did that i would imagine it's gonna be very similar in granularity to what they had with fallout 4's settlement building yeah because i mean like i'm thinking of 76 and it's like at most you had the comic stand and like the bobblehead th display and like yeah. you could put your guns on the wall yeah yeah um and that like that was about it in terms of like the modular set decoration. Otherwise, everything you had to be like go out of your way to have like a preset prop that you had to learn the plan for. It, it wasn't like a dynamic inventory that was responsive to the things that you possessed. Did they confirm zero G environments? I think they did. Because that would be kind of neat. I don't want gravity in my ship. Everybody has to fly around. Well, there will definitely have to be gravity on the ship. No, I'm turning gravity off. I'm tur turning disabling, oxygen off, too. Disabling life support. <laughs> Look, guys. Dynamic shadows. So, uh, that's going in there. Hang on. How many of those can we get on screen at once? Six? Seven? Okay, I don't... Oh, all right, no, bla no black filling. Teaser trailer. No black filling. What's the time stamp? Current time stamp? Uh, forty-three seconds. Okay. Oh, 43. Dynamic shadows. Now you might be thinking, how is that gonna end up in the Starfield video? The answer is simple. If the game doesn't have dynamic shadows, <laughs> I have a fucking timestamp right here that says, "Hey, they advertised shadows." <laughs> And you might be going, there's no way there won't be dynamic shadows. We've been saying that for 20 years, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so what is this perspective? 
Oh, there's Outside windows. Of the ship yeah, there's windows in. behind the. Oh no, please, not windows. The windows automatically tint when you're flying around locations. For safety. Of course. I mean, Elite Dangerous has windows. I'm just thinking of, like, the Mass Effect. Them talking about the windows. Yeah. <laughs> Seamless cell transitions. I'll believe it when I see it. Nothing to confirm that right now. I think that the ships are going to be, like, one interior. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's not, not particularly complex. Here. We're going to give it another listen to listen to what she's talking about. But we're just looking at, like, the what they're showing us right now. Mm -hmm. Nice Wait. fucking model with the sandwich. <laughs> Dynamic food? So the question is, are the sandwiches all going to be have a bite taken out of them? Or is it dynamic? Yeah, it's definitely going to be just a static model. Dynamic sandwiches. It's going in the notes. Can I pick up each and every item on that table with the dedicated button? Uh, Fallout 76 removed that feature, so... Oh yeah, that's the funny part about Fallout 76 is that you can't... <laughs> you know that thing you could do since Oblivion where you can pick up objects and move them around? Yes, yeah, 76 doesn't have that. Will food grow mold if left out for too long? <laughs> No, it's, it's Molds one. can't grow in an environment when there's no oxygen. It's one specific sandwich model that has the bite taken out of it, and all other sandwiches in the game are the same full model. Probably. So it's going to yeah. be like, it's going to appear three times if you look in the construction set. And then, like, this is just one of them. So vast. But that we have measured it. Your part of con. So the weird thing is, like, this is the least effective way to stow stuff. Like, I like Firefly because they go out of the way to show, like, how the ship is designed to present stuff from prevent stuff from flying around when they're yeah. when, due to uh, inertia. Um, you've you have two bungee straps that are crossed ag against each other that are supposed to stop this stuff from flying out of the compartment. No, we have inertia dampeners. <laughs> well, then why have the bungee straps? Uh, because it looks cool. Hello? No, it's the bungee. See, the bungee straps are so that you can clip things to it. So, like, you know. Yes, I am nitpicking. But also, no. We've got... Well, like... I'm, listen, I'm not going to go into the symbolism of having a book titled Omega... Well, it's like, so this is what they're showing us, right? So what what conclusions are we supposed to draw from this? Either we're supposed to be able to sit here and, like, nitpick this shit and be like, okay, what, what can we figure out from this scene? Or it's completely worthless, and in which case, why are you showing us this? Sailing around, sailing alone around the world. Is this a dope literary reference? The first-hand autobiographical story of Joshua Slocum, first man to sail single-handedly around the world. Hmm. Neat. Okay, so Bible reference. <laughs> I am the Alpha and Omega. Literary reference to sailing. I think, like, I think they're trying to pitch with this game that, like, I don't know. I don't know what what is what does it mean? What does it mean? It's about this is going to be the most exploration we've ever had in a Bethesda game. What happened to that helmet? Why can't we use it? I don't know if it comes across in the stream, but there is like a chip right here in the helmet, like a crack. Oh yeah. So you really wouldn't want to use it if that happened. Uh it's environmental storytelling because you can see that um at some point their helmet got cracked <laughs> and then the space station here is like the space station that was in the announcement trailer is the ocean map part of our 
family. Okay, wasn't I heard somebody talking about how the game was about like an artifact? So is this like mm -hmm. hinting at the big MacGuffin? Ah, uh, this is why the player shall be the protagonist. Protagonist MacGuffin. Because I mean, how are they gonna work in that the player's the, the space chosen one? I wonder if this environment's actually gonna be in the game. Um, well, the ship is gonna be modular, so I think you you could probably get something that's like it. This is pro this is probably the starter ship. Yeah. The welfare ship. Yeah. It could be a bullet hole. I can't tell if it's actually been like uh penetrated. So I like the rolls of duct tape that are stuck up onto the, the wall here. Um we've got concept art, random patches, a poster. Uh the robot that's in these pictures, there's a no shit, a, a trailer to introduce that character. <laughs> So that character is kind of apparently going to be like a big deal. I think it's one of your companions. Probably your yeah, first it's, companion. It's, it's called it's Vasco. Codsworth. Yeah, the Codsworth of uh, Starfield. Do you, what do you think's up with the writing? Also, reflections. Okay. So there, that goes in. That goes into yeah, the notes that. as well. Dynamic reflections. <laughs> Showing off a lot of things here, Bethesda. I hope you through on Vasco we are out of tranquil light do not act deaf okay uh, reminder security does not have a sense of humor okay upgrade reactor like I wonder what's up with the writing on this am I just am I gonna have to like look at a preset written thing on my ship every time I pass by it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm thinking, like, this is probably your starter ship or something. Yeah. And every other ship you go into is not going to be nearly as, like, lived in. Mm-hmm. Not going to be detailed. Well, you Unless... know, Out Outer Worlds had the robot companion that you started with. <laughs> Unless it's, like... Fallout 76 where you build a uh, like the bar for Beckett and stuff so in order to get the companions to live on like your ship or in your base you have to build their module and Probably. each module for the companion would be customized to that character right so this is like Vasco's uh, little mm -hmm. bay that uh, you work on him in yeah 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 okay yeah, that's probably the way that they're going to do it. It's going to be, yeah, it's going to be like a little room module. And like for human characters, it'll probably be like their bedroom. Yeah. What you found. It's the key to Dr. Halsey? <laughs> we have to get you to Halsey. She can fix you. Chief. I remember in Fallout 4, uh, Fallout 4's, like, uh, promo material, they were making a big deal about, like, all the panels and buttons and stuff that they designed. I don't it's remember hard. that. Uh, I, it, was I, it that's for the all I remember from the promo. Was it for the settlement? I don't remember what promo it was. I, it might have been an E3 thing, but, like, Todd Howard was like, yeah, our team was spent... Our art team just knocked out of the park. They made, like, hundreds of different control panels and stuff. Yeah, the gameplay... The gameplay Energy does look boring. Here. Favorite Outer Worlds companion is Vicar Max. Halsey. We gotta get you to Halsey. Chief, I was put into service eight years ago. Yeah, this is your companion. Mm-hmm. Well, it's nice to look at. To discover what's <laughs> out there. Player character con phenotype confirmed. Good luck, Dr. 
The ship controls look similar to Star Citizen ships. So like super over designed, but actually pretty simple because it's just you press a button. Like you start holding down W and the ship takes off. <laughs> you guys got fucked. That's a joke. That's going to be a joke that's in everybody's Starfield uh, <laughs> video. Release date fail. 11, 11, 2. What's Todd's obsession with the number 11? I think they were just trying to like thematically tie together the studio and like, guys, they're like, they're trying to tie it closer and closer to like Skyrim and their kind of legacy. Con so Constellation is literally just a way to join their Discord server. And then you can ask them questions that Todd Howard will highly selectively respond to. Uh, <laughs> maybe three times over the course of this entire marketing process so all right now we're going for like to listen to what's actually being said in the trailer so oh my god we missed starfield's release date by six months i can't believe the video oh it's already out oh that's so embarrassing i thought it was not out yet All right, so they're doing the, doing like a checkup. You know that like it's gonna be probably sell a lot when they can waste a lot of time in their trailers, because they know that like people aren't are still gonna watch it anyways. Not that the field of stars is so vast, but that we have measured it. Okay. You're part of Constellation now. So Constellation is probably going to be like the blades. I don't know. It's got to be... It's got to be like a main character thing, this whole constellation thing, because they're drawing yeah, so much attention to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's the first faction. Like, that's the faction that you basically work for. Mm hmm But then you're going to have, like, other factions that you can voluntarily sign up with. I feel like they'll opt for, like, a blade situation where you can be in whatever faction you want, but you're always, like... It always loops back to Constellation. And so, like, it'll be kind of like a morally undefined faction. So people who want to be ra space, space raiders. Yeah, uh, somebody's saying space Minutemen. I think that's a more accurate. Probably. Uh, well, yeah, because the, the Minutemen are like the, the ultimate fallback faction. In Fallout 4. Yep. Yeah. Part of our family. What you found is the key to unlocking what you found is the key to unlocking everything and for some reason we can't take it away from you so you're going to be the main character yeah it's like um it's like the cypher in mass effect mm -hmm. implanted itself in your head it would be gay if there wasn't some kind of universal threat that you were helping to stop Go for launch. I feel like the, they're falling into the same trap that No Man's Sky was falling into with the meme of like, you'll be exploring and stuff when obviously uh, you weren't exploring very much in, uh, in No Man's Sky because like everything was already discovered. Oh, <laughs> I, th I thought you were going to make the joke that, uh, you know, exploring procedural generated stuff isn't really all that interesting. Mm -hmm. 
Especially well, I mean, you start to see the system, like you start to see the code. Yeah, hopefully they try to do a good job of avoiding like um, Starfields, like or No Man's Sky's big fucking problem with that. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, that was the teaser trailer. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't have time to put this into release order. I know some of the stuff that happens later on, but uh, for right now, uh, it's going to be kind of out of sequence. So we're not doing the gameplay reveal yet. Um, we can do the launch date announcement, just because it's kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> that to go from, you are go for launch, 11-11-22, to guys <laughs> guys please we need some extra time also this is i mean this i'm is longer fucking, so i am so glad that they delayed it I, I hope they delay it again the more time they delay it the better it is for me i think it's better is for everybody yeah but aren't you thinking of mr maddie plays five vacations that he had to put off yeah was it him that yeah. had the five vacations or was it somebody else there was somebody there else. Was some, I know who it is. I don't want to... There was somebody on that. Twitter who was complaining that they had to delay five vacations because Starfield wasn't out. Yes. Yeah, I, these people... You, you are supposed to sympathize with these grifters. What did you think about Skyrim builds from you? YouTubers like Fudge Muppet? Um, Skyrim builds are a fucking meme and you can come up with them. Like, <laughs> like the best way to do Skyrim builds is to just like kick your feet back up and shit post ideas out. Especially with like the bonkers creation club stuff that exists now. Like, oh yeah. What's the weird stuff we came up with? The sledgehammer the that you use to spam hammer. runes yeah. because there's tons of stuff that increases the distance that you can cast runes. So you're yeah. literally just standing there using a runes alter a sledgehammer's alternate ability to spawn runes under people's feet. <laughs> That's what building in Skyrim is like. It's just the stupid Be shit. Because the game is so fucking easy that almost every anything can be viable. Yeah, there's more like build composition theory in Fallout 76 than there is in Skyrim. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, did, did we miss something? The eye is showing signs over another one of those big anomalies. So the player character is the chosen one and they investigate anomalies. Player character slash constellation. Investigates anomalies. Oh, that sounds. It sounds very generic, but you know, it's something. The thing is, is that sometimes it's fine to lean on tropes if you're able to expand in other ways. Um, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen with Bethesda here because I know, absorb the anomalies record. energy to unlock my new ability. Maybe you catch a smile and uncover the source of it all. Hang on, hang on. So there's like sand at the bottom of this impact crater. Mm -hmm. Why? Um. Okay, so this is an airless world, so there wouldn't be wind. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess if it was a big enough impact, no, yeah, this could have. No, the sand would just. It it wouldn't be like this. This looks like uh something that happens on Earth. Yeah, it looks it looks like terrestrial. Is that even sand or is that snow? Is it? It's 
Well, if it was snow, like there would be melt because the body is able to get sunlight in it. So I don't think it's supposed to be ice. I think that's like the darker spots are like hard rock textures, and then the lighter spots Listen, are meant to be kind of like a, a sandy loam. Sandy loam. Listen, this is Bethesda we're talking about. This isn't. This isn't Frontier Listen, who have. It looks good on the composition. Yes. Like that structure, I don't think would even really be physically possible. Well, listen, the anomalies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is this wouldn't happen. It's got to be artificial in some way, or something, or like they're saying something happened to this planet <clears throat> that like it used to have an ocean or something. Who knows? Almost black hole imagery, but uh, this is like the the artifact thing i saw in the i have a document that i've titled starfield autism document where people have <laughs> poured over every frame of these by the way and they the like the ring stuff is like a big um symbolism that they seem to use a lot Oh my god, it is No Man's Sky. I recognize that building in No Man's Sky. You can learn like you can learn um like three words of an words, alien yeah. language based yeah, on the system that you're in. You can even see the you're in. you can even see the pillars around it, like the yeah. black uh, yeah. obelisk. So like you go here and you interact with this pillar and then like you will unlock a single word of the like Gek language. It's a no, it's a No Man's Sky structure plopped onto an elite like a discount elite dangerous barren world well they would put they would put these kinds of buildings on barren worlds in no man's sky too oh they have barren worlds in no man's sky it's listen, it's been a while mm -hmm. yeah they got like lifeless worlds that's like the best way to farm language is to go to the lifeless worlds because it's very easy to like get, if, yeah to just it's farm awesome. words But like I'm telling you, this is literally the layout of a building from No Man's Sky. <laughs> oh my god, this is fucking what the No Man this is what the like the obelisks in No Man's Sky look like. Two, three, zero, nine. So it's going to be the 9th of June, 2023. <laughs> that, that's how the Europeans do it. I know, I know. Do you think it's going to be like Space Daggerfall or No Man's Skyrim? It's going to be No Man's Skyrim. It's going to be No Man's Fallout. Like Skyrim's yeah. too dated a reference. They'll only like they're only referring to Skyrim insofar as the nostalgic um, prevalence of it. They are firmly a Fallout studio, especially since the game has guns. I mean, so what do you think the rest? Oh yeah, I think the rest of this is like Todd Howard talking. So, everybody's got that to look forward to. Hey everyone from It's the Lich Master himself, Todd Howard. <laughs> Myself and everybody here at Bethesda, we are so excited to finally tell you when Starfield is coming out this year. Are they actually playing back there? Yeah, so he's going to draw attention to that later. You know, we have Straight chat get excited because there's going to be uh there's exciting things ahead for in this video. And even I'm surprised how much we can pour. It is large. Uh, we're playing the game all the time. Shout out over here. I so don't. You see him running in the background. I don't. I don't think he's actually standing here. I think he's standing in front of a green screen. You think it's composited? I'm telling you. I, I think so because Shout it's out. too the 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 camera like he's too much into focus and the ca and the the screen back there is way too focused. No, he's got like a dual focused camera. You're telling me that this is, is you're telling thing? me that you think this is composited. 
Wait, is that actually a thing? I have no clue. <laughs> it's not like this isn't terribly in focus. Like this could actually this could be like a 4K screen that's like so sharp that like even if it's slightly out of focus it still looks like it could be. I don't know if I if I was like, seizing she's, this she's I not, would absolutely. Like they're not really have... in focus compared to Todd. Like you can kind of see what's they're going not, on. They're not yeah, they're not in focus but the camera but the the screen is in focus and Todd is clearly like very well in focus as well. I don't know. I I I think he's in front of a green screen. See? They're interacting. <laughs> you may remember him from the Oblivion making of video where he Hear that chat? He's referencing the Oblivion making of video. Todd is literally talking to us right now. Deep lore. Um, the Oblivion making of video where he's sitting on a similar sofa doing similar things. But also uh, this June we're going to See? They're play testing, guys. They're play testing. Man, they still haven't given the guy a proper back support seat and everything. Mm hmm You can't hear Todd? That's too bad. It's it, it's quiet. The, like the the trailer part was loud and then his section's really quiet. I don't know why. No. And give you a deep you have to understand the they're like an Starfield indie studio Direct. there's so much <laughs> that we still have to show you the game you don't have to show us yeah, you could just give us the game as many i'm like looking at the game in the background and it's like it looks like a slightly more polished uh modern version of fallout 76 where um you've got like the jetpack gameplay and it's like but it's very flat it's very much reminding me of post jetpack uh gameplay in fallout 76 like we're gonna have to give this another pass where we just watch yeah. what's going on on the screen there yeah yeah, yeah. so go ahead todd serenade us any of the hallmarks that you'd expect from us but it's also a very unique so many of the hallmarks you'd expect from us okay todd Thank you, Todd. Unique experience. And again. Okay, that's definitely being captured on, on that monitor. The previous one, that also looked like a composite. You think that's a composite? Yeah, that looks too, too crisp. Experience. But, but then, see, yeah, and this here, is on I an ultra wide, the... so it'd be yeah, like it would be a pain in the, the ass glare. to uh, composite it. Yeah, oh, that's probably it. Because it's on an ultra wide curved monitor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, they're like everybody's playing with controllers. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope you're not looking forward to a PC user interface because uh, they test it on controller. <laughs> xbox to be specific i think like i like the simplicity of what's what's going on with their user interface yeah um it's not fallout know. 76 where it's way too fucking noisy and there's like elements in every corner i don't know what that thing on the bottom left is supposed to be though there's like a big deal that they're putting into with a watch where um it tells you a bunch of different things yeah um, that's probably like your compass or something like that it, it, it's a mix of like compass and oxygen levels and like um your your different life meters yeah so like it, it's this big ui mcguffin that they've got in the corner here mm -hmm. controller shooter yeah it's going to be a controller shooter guys hate to break it to you and again thank oh, they you must all. have vats in this then uh, for all your excitement about the game, your support, your comments, we really I feel like do. they would have shown it off. Oh, yep, here's the Starfield Discord. We never did go to the uh, Fallout 76 Discord. I couldn't get in. Um, they immediately banned me because I was on an alt. Because there's no way I was going in there on my, on my uh, actual account. Uh, read it all. And so this account that they're logged into. Well, no, wait, there's two things. So there's Starfield, and then there's a server that just says C. 
So what do you think is this server? <laughs> and look, we know you've waited a long time. We know you've waited a long time. But if you wait just a little bit more, we'll get there. Let him finish. The come server, come town, cat picks. It's probably cat picks. To play something new from us, believe it or not, we're kind of the same. Uh, we miss it, and we really just can't wait. You miss it? Is this No Man's Sky? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! What? Dude, there's that's such No Man's Sky vibe. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> that's that's No Man's Sky. Like this, is literally a. It's a literally trailer yeah, from it's, No Man's Sky. That it looks literally like looks that. like a trailer from No Man's Sky, but it's they obviously know Starfield. They're... They know what they're doing here at this point. Mm -hmm. oh, nice custom keyboard he's got here. And yet he refuses to play on it. They have him playing on a controller. They very explicitly made sure to place the Xbox and the Xbox controller. And then, like, I don't know, oh. there's some code shit or something. They know who daddy is now. Mm -hmm. Wait for you all to play. It's literally, I'm, that's all I'm paying attention to now. It's just the Xbox controllers. Yeah, Xbox. I think those are all the elite controllers. Too. Yeah. So like they probably brought like five five elite controllers. Just they had to make sure that they worked. Um, yeah. Because you know they they didn't want one with stick drift making it into the video. Um, <laughs> so here's his audio interface. So this is one of the sound guys, but for some reason he's playing Starfield. This looks like know. a pre-built keyboard, and he's got his motorcycle helmet. Audio engineers have to play the game to make sure the uh, sound is mixing correctly in game. Mm -hmm. Play it. Well, oh, oh, they, they had him. So they went to his office and they saw that he had a helmet, and they're like, "Okay, we know what you need to be showing on your screen during your <laughs> shot. It's gonna be you looking at helmets." <laughs> This guy is forever typecast as the helmet guy. <laughs> Thanks, Todd. Those are Xbox One controllers. I kind of thought they were Xbox One controllers. They look like the controller I have, which is an Xbox One controller. To play it. Uh, did Disney approve this inclusion of Baby Yoda? <laughs> so this is an art guy. Still playing on an Xbox controller, of course, but he's got a fidget spinner, too. So thanks, and we'll... What was that gameplay? Oh my god, we gotta give this the ga a gameplay yeah. pass. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll see you soon. PC game. Xbox Series X. I don't see Nintendo here. Or uh, Nintendo. Fucking PlayStation. PlayStation. Oh, yeah. It's... I'm like your boomer grandma. So this is the No Man's Sky trailer. All right. So, chat. We are now watching the gameplay that goes on in the background and ignoring Todd Howard. I know it's hard. His 100 charisma makes it so that hey, you just have to look at him. And everybody here at Bethesda. All right, so he's like, they're walking away from a ship, and he's walking to somewhere. He zooms out and like he's sprinting. It looks, it looks like it has a decent H uh, FOV as well. That's nice to see. Well, of course, he has to play it eight hours a day. So, <laughs> so he like. I don't get what's going on with the zoom. There's different zoom levels for like sprinting. I don't know if you've noticed that. Yeah. So like he's sprinting, he's sprinting. Suddenly he zooms out and then like. Oh. Is it when he goes to first like... person, it like zooms out and then switches? I th I think those were like set camera positions. You know, like in GTA, like four or five, whatever. When you yeah, hit like the. You hit back and it zooms out a little bit. So maybe they have like you have to cycle through them. Yeah, because the you know, pressing right. a button to switch from third to first person, too complex. We're really going for the GTA vibe here. Yeah. 
Yeah, that was never really something I had an issue with in, like, even Skyrim and Fallout 4. You just you hold a button and you can zoom in and out as far as you want. We should be able to play a Todd Howard build in Starfield, which is like a speech build where you lie your way out of everything. <laughs> lie is a skill in uh, Outer Worlds. <laughs> What's that shadow? Hang on, what's the shadow that's behind the gun? Because it doesn't look like the, the player. Follower? You got a companion just weirdly sitting yeah. there. So it, so it looks like, if, if you go back, it looks like it has the um, Fallout 476 uh, quick looting menu. Mm -hmm. well, it ha it have to. There's no way that they're going to yeah. not have that. I mean, I, fuck I, I mod Skyrim to have that shit at this point. It's a decent system. So they're like looting a ship and then quit cutting away. See, they've got the. It's not even the original wall. It's like a mock up that got made <laughs> of the uh, Alduin's wall. So, like, here's a combat sequence. You can see he's using the jetpack. It almost yeah. looks like Mass Effect 1, just for a, a hair there. That's just animations, but, like, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, that jetpack looked very floaty. Well, of course, you, you, you need to, um, if you have Bullion, go play Fallout 76 at some point, get the jetpack, and see how it controls. I wonder if they're going to have planets with different types of gravity on it, too. Like, if you have, like, a low-gravity planet. They gotta, right? Well, yeah, gravity, like, gravity scaling is a thing that most engines are capable of doing pretty easily, so. Yeah. So maybe that's why it looks a little bit, fl so, that, like, that that also could be affecting what we're perceiving here. So they, they've got, like, a custom walk animation there. And it looks like they have, uh, where was it? So there's a custom walk animation for like when he's walking around with a pistol out. So mm -hmm. that's that's a revolver. So you could know that revolvers have made it to Starfield. I feel like a Bethesda shield channel. It's good to see that revolvers have made it. But like you can see as she pans the camera, the head tracks. So it's kind of like a another GTA uh, character kinematics thing. Yeah. All right, so now what's going on back here? He's like shooting at somebody. I like, I don't like the really big like bars that seem to indicate enemies. Health bars, maybe. Hey, kitten. <laughs> Okay, so there's like radio a radio menu. Yeah, quick switch, quick switch radio menu. But it looks yeah. like there's not like an arbitrary limitation on how many weapons you can have. So it looks like it's going to be the old system of just like however many weapons you carry around. What ha was that Fallout 4 that had that system? Yeah. Like something similar? Yeah, it looks like the Fallout 4 like quick switch menu. Which I never really messed with because i just hotkeyed everything on pc mm -hmm. and then we got the no man's sky <laughs> will there be capes or will modders have to do everything again i mean why would you want capes in a space game so yeah this is literally like a no man's sky trailer this looks awful by the way i saw this the first time yeah this that... little this little uh sequence where he's fighting something yeah, this that look does, that, lo looks that looks like, like Skyrim. <laughs> that looks like Skyrim. Yeah. Get like, it away from me. Like it hits you and there's like no responsiveness to it. And yeah. it just looks like a reskin of throwing grenades in uh, the Fallout games. Fallout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So good news. It's going to be the same mid gameplay. So yeah, that's your uh, that's your little gameplay analysis of that. Now, this is the twist. Uh, why don't you tell chat what I what I threatened? Kind of what I kind of alluded to. The special, the very special interview. 
Oh, yeah, you told me you have, like, a really cursed interview that you want to show us. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what it is, but I'm nervous. All right, chat. What's your bets on what this is going to be? Go ahead. Guess who's going to be interviewing Todd Howard? Is it Jeff Keighley? No, it's not Jeff Keighley. Definitely not, because that wouldn't be cursed. Mm-hmm. Who's it going to be? Is it Lex Friedman? Is it Joe Rogan? <laughs> I think there's going to be a Joe Rogan appearance at some point in the next few months. Of uh... Who's it? Who is it? Is it Sam Hyde? <laughs> what a weird appearance, right? All right, chat. We already know the oh answer. Oh, my God. What? <laughs> Oh no. This is happening, chat. This is what oh, we're this no. is what we're watching. Welcome to E3. Thank you. Great to have Great you guys here. Guys. So I think when we announced this, <laughs> oh, oh no. Do you guys know each other? Why are they together? You guys are friends, right? Yeah, a bit. Yeah. 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 Um. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get to know each other? People I tried know, to like connect us over several years. Like, yeah. do you know Elon? You should know Elon. And uh, we finally connected. Say it like you actually mean it and not like you're going, yeah, I'm friends with Elon. <laughs> yes, chat. There is a Elon Musk, Todd Howard conversation at E3 2019. <laughs> God damn. Why did E3 die again? Can somebody <laughs> remind me? Can we get this interview now? Can, no, 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 no. I want, I want Todd Howard to interview Elon Musk now. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, this is pre-Twitter acquisition. This, this is before everything, I, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm not just gonna, I'm not just gonna play this because this is 44 minutes. Um, <laughs> let me look at, let me look at the cheat sheet. <laughs> So, so oh, this, wh was what are your... this was even before the Microsoft acquisition. Mm -hmm. That was in 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, I was, I was going to make a joke that somebody at Microsoft got laid off from this. <laughs> I need to control F this document for Elon Musk because it's such a... How did I not hear about this? <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, they don't have timestamps. Okay, hold on. I'm going to get the transcript on YouTube and search that. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is wild. I promised you that this would be uh this would be something. Oh my god, they made a <laughs> they actually uh released a their own transcript. Like, they didn't just use the auto-captions. They actually made a transcript for this conversation. Nice. Game feel. The other characters in the AI, you know, I think a lot of people, including us... So... Sorry, trying to find something in particular that's kind of hard to find. Yeah, I'm definitely going to send this to people next time <laughs> they wonder, like, what happened to E3. Be like, this was the last E3 to ever exist. Here you go. I think this will answer everything for you. There wasn't one after 2019? I don't think so. What we'll have to do is uh, it's like the speed this up. Developer direct type stuff. Yeah, okay. Yeah, captions. Nice. Well, he's going to be really special. Um, you know, talking about what game you're starting to This is my jam right here. So I think when we announced yeah. the biggest question I've ever had, do these guys know each other? Why are they together? You guys are friends, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Um. <laughs> How did you get to know each other? Um, people tried to connect us over several years. Like, do you know Elon? You should know Elon. And uh, we finally connected, I think it was when I bought my Tesla. Yeah. And somebody, <laughs> I went into the store. Todd Howard owns a Tesla. 
There's no way. I call bullshit on that. Dude yeah. has more money. He can do better. Tesla is the like janky rich person car. It's the Bethesda the, of cars. Todd, Todd's like at least a Porsche owner. The sad part of this stream is that I feel like there's got to there's going to be at least one content creator that's going to steal jokes from me because I mm. am putting down so much gold material. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just putting it out there. There's no, yeah, there's no way that it were like, yeah, I'll say I own a Tesla, fuck it, you know? Yeah. But the thing is, right, so Lex Friedman interviewed Todd Howard, too. So he's in that Joe Rogan sphere. It's not impossible that we're going to have a Todd Howard, Joe Rogan interview. Wait. Is based Thesda? Does that come from Todd Howard? Mm -hmm. It comes from the top down. <laughs> Giga Chad Todd Howard, who supports election denial, uh, <laughs> believes in faulty vaccinations. Uh, <laughs> it will all make sense once you watch the Fallout 76 video. Yeah, if you go and watch our Fallout 76 video, you're going to realize... Um, there's no way that people aren't going to start making memes of, like, based Thesda from all of the crazy political takes that are in that game. All taken out of context, of course, but... <laughs> <laughs> Ultra for all the settings? Yeah. Click that button when ordering okay. a Tesla, and then, uh, then we connect it. Yeah. Um. So if you, buy, if, you, if you get all the add-ons for a Tesla... So... You get to meet Elon Musk. So Todd Howard doesn't just own a Tesla. He has all the add-ons for a Tesla. And uh, I've actually been uh, a big fan of uh, your games for, for a long time. Um, and uh, you played uh, Fallout 3. Oh, wait, like, I really played that game a lot. Um. So this, ex this explains the autism right here. Elon Musk <laughs> is a Fallout 3 fan. <laughs> You couldn't say Skyrim. It all comes together. <laughs> I really love the part where you guys blew up the East Coast. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's whatever you remember that game. Uh, I played the oh, I'm just Skyrim. Um, I did not complete Skyrim. That was intense. I loved it. It's a big game. <laughs> uh, so he did play a lot of Skyrim. He explored every corner. Man, had I had this when making my Skyrim <laughs> video. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, when I was having like a birthday, I asked for the hey, can I have that statue of the that weird looking guy in full out, uh, you know, with the, the 1950s guy with the, <laughs> you know that, that guy? I don't know. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it's a life-size life statue okay. of, of this, this uh, 1950s dude in like a, I guess a bulb jumpsuit. It's a bulb boy. Bulb, bulb boy, yeah. exactly. Bulb. Yeah, he's totally a fan of Fallout, guys. <laughs> Listen, he needs, he needs to save his uh, mental energy for all those lawsuits from the SEC and shit. Yeah. Got, the man's inventing the cure for everything. Todd Howard is just looking at disappointment. Like, you don't know what a vault boy is? <laughs> Elon doesn't dare mention New Vegas. Of course, it wasn't contracted. Did he do so? So was this, like, th this paid position here, this, this positioning <clears throat> that they did when they paid Elon Musk to do this, is this how he paid for Twitter? <laughs> vault boy. <laughs> and you have this at home? It was so weird having that at a party. Like, most basically, no, there were like two nerds that knew, knew what they referred to. And like, yeah, yeah. Um, and everyone else was like, man, that's weird. <laughs> now, rolling back in time, when you were a kid, you programmed the game. Oh my god, who is this cameraman that they cut to that's like. They bumped the camera. Yeah. <laughs> it happens. Is that true? Yeah. I mean, primitive. I was just a kid, yeah. You're like 12, I think, right? Uh, yeah, I remember. I think it's probably like 10 or 11 when I programmed that game, but probably when I was 12. Laster, uh, it's called? Yeah, it's a simple game. It's like, you sort of fight your a space fighter and you fight an alien space raider. Uh, yeah. I read the game, the, 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 the graphics, the sound, and everything. Just you know, everything else. So it's a very simple game, more emphasized. <laughs> when you were younger, did you ever aspire to like make games or get into making games? Oh uh, yeah, that's actually one of the things I thought about uh, doing career-wise for sure. Wow, it seemed like that would be super fun. Yeah. I remember that you went into like rocket science or a few places where you, you kept doing. A little and then he realized actually, fintech uh, okay. was way more profitable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Todd's sitting there like, "Fuck, man, that could have been me." Yeah. Startup, which really was well, see, he Todd didn't have the diamond mine though. 
Mm -hmm. Why does the camera point right at Elon's crotch during wide shots? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, irony. Yeah. Listen, the framing is all kinds of fuck. Todd Howard here is dying inside. He's like, the <laughs> shit I have to do to make this game. <laughs> Todd Howard visibly dying inside. <laughs> uh, yeah, I worked at Rock, Rock Science uh, Programming Games. Uh, um, that was a long time ago. Um, and uh, that must be like. 93 or something? Or 94? Um, yeah, that was, uh, that was tricky. Can't remember why I didn't. Uh, <laughs> but I was, I was, he was doing other things. <laughs> well, I was, I was gonna, like, my original plan was to go to grad school at Stanford and do um, just a, a study of capacitors for use in electric vehicles. Uh, so, uh, you know, I always wanted to uh, do electric cars um, and uh, you know, work on like sustainable energy. Elon, this is E3. Nobody wants to hear about electric cars. Wait, why did E3 fail? <laughs> You think if Musk showed up in an interview like this today, would the crowd boo him? Probably just because he's more notorious. Like he gets more notorious with time. Yeah. But if you were on the level, you knew that like this was just how he was all the time. It's like one of the things I think that's like quite important for the future to be good. And uh, obviously, in order for the future to be good, we have to have uh, sustainable energy. So we have to have sustainable production and consumption of energy. Um, so uh, that makes means making sustainable energy in the same sentence as electric vehicles. Stop it, you. And solar panels low cost and uh, making electric cars appealing. Am I going to play a version of Starfield? Yes, let me go to my Steam account where I have Starfield installed. Because it came out six months ago. You think Elon Musk is going to play Starfield? Um, and then uh, we want to become... Oh, God. I'm just now imagining the Rick and Morty <laughs> X Elon Musk <laughs> Starfield live stream. Space, <laughs> SpaceX... Are we going to see some SpaceX references in Starfield? Uh, no, there's no way they could do it now. Not after the Twitter thing. <laughs> but you go, you go to, you go to Earth, and it's just like you can't land because of all the space <laughs> Starlink satellites, <laughs> all the defunct Starlink satellites. There's just too much space junk. <laughs> multiple species, no space-faring civilization, with rockets, um, and. Uh... And then there's some things that will affect the future, but I'm not sure if it's good or bad, uh, like AI. Uh, that just worries me, that one. Sure. Um. <laughs> I don't want Pinkertons showing up to my house because I'm playing a leaked <laughs> copy of Starfield. <laughs> um, in fact, I, think... I just made video games. Not bad. <laughs> yeah, but... they, that can actually happen since they had Elon on Rick and Morty, so Justin Roiland worked with Elon before. No, like, it's actually a possibility mm. that we're going to have a repeat of Rick and Morty X Ninja X, but this time with Elon Musk, uh, playing Starfield at release on Twitch. Like, that's a thing that's in my video. I remembered that Rick and Morty and Ninja played Fallout 76 together. It would be on, um, Oh, yeah. Um, fuck, what is that new one? Kick? Um, uh, Kick, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they don't want to be attached to Amazon? They still do stuff on Twitch. Because Microsoft hasn't got out its own platform yet. They no, would... no, no, Elon Musk is not going to be on Twitch. Twitch, people on Twitch would fucking throw a fit if Elon Musk went on their platform. Do you think that Microsoft gives a shit? I don't think they can have any more bad PR right now. I mean, they they got to play safe. Go to sleep in the Morrowind Oblivion Skyrim retrospectives playing every night. I do rain noise. I don't understand people who sleep to videos. I have fallen asleep to videos before, but... Um, I fall asleep to live streams. But yeah. Oh yeah, Mixer. Was Mixer Microsoft? Yeah, it was. Oh, that's... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So they killed their own streaming platform and they have to go to Twitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I think the the official live streams I always see are linked to YouTube, actually. Yeah, they're like minor marketing stuffs over on Twitch. I'm sure Elon <clears throat> playing Starfield with uh, Richard and Mortimer would be over on YouTube for sure. But yeah, thank you for the thank you for the 100 easy. Um, 
I'll, I'll put on the Hawaiian shirt for you. And, and then I'll just watch the cool. I mean, I, I can sort of talk a little bit about like, like the basically it's like what are the things I think are like quite important for the future to be good. And uh, obviously, in order from uh, making electric cars. And, and then there's some things that I put. <laughs> um, in fact, I, think I just made video games. <laughs> yeah, but, oh, but, but I was going to do all that, <laughs> but, but I actually don't know how to do that. So I, I think I think it turned out. Yeah, it, it's it's right. That's what friends say to each other. <laughs> yeah, Pat, I was going to do the Outer Worlds video, but, you know, I just didn't, I just couldn't, so. Three, the, the, uh, three, the, the AI basically calls World War III, <laughs> as I recall, or something like that. <laughs> a little bit. Don't spoil it, I mean, is there, a, is there a link there between sort of, you know, you talk about AI and video game AI and, you know, the technology and video games. Is there anything there that sort of, you know, helps push technology that you think, I mean, you look at, like, you know, self-driving cars or other things, like, are there things from video games that, you know, you think help push technology forward? Well, I think you know, probably just oh like my god, technology. the jokes I can make with that prompt. <laughs> uh, maybe the reason was video games. So, um, you know, I probably wouldn't have started programming if it wasn't for video games. I uh, wouldn't have been as interested in computers and technology if it wasn't for video games. So I think actually video games are um, a very powerful force for uh, getting young kids interested in technology. Um, it has way, way bigger knock-on effects than people realize. And, and generally, like if uh, we're interviewing somebody for a software engineering role at uh, Tesla or SpaceX, uh, many times they're like, how'd you start programming? It's like, oh, go to video games. You know, over and over again, and I think many of the especially if, if people had had space engineer. Told me the best anecdote between video games and rockets. He said rocket AI is actually for him quite easy. Just thrust left, thrust right. Gaming AI is so much harder. The difference is when the game crashes, he presses reboot, and when the rocket crashes, <laughs> giant mess spread over several miles. Yeah. This is so boring. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I know you got uh, we got some clips, right? Of what this is uh, yeah, like. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Some clips of some uh, upcoming games in the car, and you know, it's just meant to be like, uh, hey, what, what are some cool games that, that people might like to play? And depending upon how much people play them, we'll you know uh, add them to the like higher up, higher on the list, or, or 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 maybe put it into sort of an archive that you can tap to download. Because uh, the screen was not originally meant as a game player, so it's just it doesn't actually have that much storage. Right. But, but you're gonna be able to play video games in your Tesla. Yeah, I don't see any. Uh, <laughs> I don't see the government not having issues with that. You know what's funny is that there's a bunch of like vehicle manufacturers are afraid of putting like phone mounts into their cars because yeah. of like vehicle reg um reg yeah. regulations in the U.S. specifically. So like you'll go into Japan and stuff like that, and they'll have like phone mounts built into the into the dashboards. But then when they want to bring them over to the U.S., they have to like remove those or like disguise them some way. So yeah, I, I definitely don't see the uh, Department of um, Interstate Highway, whatever the fuck that is. I think it's DOT that does vehicles, or is it some other? It's is there the some sub department? Agents, it's like the Agency of Highway Safety or something like that. I right, right, yeah, something like that. Yeah, because I remember reading some of their statistics <clears throat> on like the trends of what vehicles people are buying, and like over the past ten years, vehicles have gotten like significantly. The average vehicle on the road has gotten significantly heavier, uh, which they're is they're gonna and they're gonna get heavier too with uh, with you know everybody going electric vehicles fun thing we just had a parking garage collapse in manhattan a few weeks ago because uh vehicles were a bit too heavy and they just they did like a whole investigation to a bunch of parking garages around manhattan they shut down like six of them i think five or six because they were also at risk of collapsing well yeah and it also contributes to uh fatality statistics with pedestrians because the vehicles are being heavier yeah. and Force is a force is a function of mass times acceleration. You increase the mass, yeah. you're you can decrease the the acceleration, aka the speed at which the car hits you. That Man, it I will be a wait. lethal uh, collision. I can't wait to be a pedestrian walking around and when everybody's vehicles are self driving and they're playing video games. Yeah, they're playing fucking Starfield and Fallout seventy six <laughs> on their on their Tesla that's auto driving. That Listen, decides got... to run you over because it's in urgent mode, and you should have had the app downloaded onto your phone that would tell you if a, if the cars were actually going to stop at the pedestrian crossing. Listen, they got those um, they got those uh, really expensive uh, graphics cards in them, so you got got to use the license for something, right? Mm -hmm. If you're not self driving, I know I'll I'll set mine to mine Bitcoin when I'm not self driving. <laughs> Yeah, you got the PCIe, so you can th throw your 4090 in there. You t you hot swap it out of your computer when you go to work and put it into <laughs> your car. So, uh, yeah, um, this is an interview, all right. This interview sucks. <laughs> yeah, Elon Musk is fucking boring. He's boring and kind of cringe. And uh, this is a cursed... This is a cursed interview. 
I just don't like Teslas. If anybody uh, wants to do me a favor, sucked. if anybody wants to do me a favor and watch the interview and send me highlights on my Discord server, I will not do yeah. anything with that info. Like, I'll do stuff with that information, <laughs> but, you know, I'll acknowledge that you did me a huge favor, but uh, don't expect anything else. Tesla has a good um, supercharged network, but their vehicles, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't own one. Yeah, chat. There you are. What about when Elon smoked weed? Dude, that's such a meme. I have that image downloaded of him coming out of the Tesla uh with like a giant cloud of smoke, and it's the cut from him on the Joe Rogan podcast, uh, when he smoked weed. Nobody gives a shit. You can legally smoke weed in most states in America now, anyways. Imagine buying a Tesla if for the same price you can get a BMW. At least a Tesla comes with working turn signals. Hi, I'm Istvan Paley, lead artist on Starfield at Bethesda Game Studios. His name is familiar, but I don't know from which project. Oblivion lead dungeon artist. <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, Skyrim additional graphic design. Fallout 4 lead artist. Fallout 76 art director. So what's the difference between a lead artist and art director? Uh, you, the What title you put on your CV? <laughs> it's like art director sounds more important than lead artist, but... I don't know if, if he's running the, the thing here. I would assume that means he's head honcho. We're excited to introduce you to one of our favorite companions in the game. Hello. Constellation's very own expeditionary robot, Bosco. I'm trying to think of a clap, good clap tra trap joke, but it's really hard <laughs> to do because <laughs> clap trap isn't funny. As an early model built by Lunar Robotics, Bosco was refurbished to meet the requirements of Constellation's mission. He's a utilitarian, heavy industrial machine well suited to the rigors of space travel. Bosco's design is based on a standard Type A bipedal oh, no, chassis, please stop, stop capable the, the of traversing fact. rough terrain, it doesn't long sound like survival a robot, gear, so. and payload capacity needed for it extended like a video editor said, journeys. I can kind of make him sound like a robot in post, but you probably yeah. should have given him the direction that he was going to be doing that for this section. Uh, so this is your little robot slave that's going to be a welfare companion on your ship. <laughs> Vasco does have defensive capabilities, should the need arise, but his primary role is peaceful. He wears the white and red livery of Constellation, though many years in the field have worn the paint and dented a few panels. White and red, huh? The rising sun. The thing is, like, um, it doesn't have to be bad. You know, Sam was a robot companion in Outer Worlds. He's one of the better ones, but like... How can I be of assistance? But he's still the reliable companion that an intrepid explorer like yourself can depend on. So he's the one companion who's not going to get angry when I start murder hoboing everybody, right? Yeah. Literally every single other companion will not like it, including the raider companions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he is the... Yeah, I mean, he, the welfare companion, the fallback companion. Yeah. Um... It is what it is, you know. This mission requires you have a companion. And if you alienated or killed every other companion, well, you still got Vasco, right? Pull him out of storage. Yes, yeah, this is this is how they are marketing the game. Just random shit like this. I don't know if Hi. it's better I'm, I'm... or worse. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Brace yourself. Right as I say worse. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's better or worse than Cyberpunk. Because Cyberpunk had these, like, annoying... The Cyberpunk directs that they did ahead of the game's yeah. release were, like, really... 
What was it like Nightwire? Nightlife Wire or something yeah, like that? Yeah, Night City Wire. Yeah, 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 there you go. Uh, that was just like one of their arms of marketing, but yeah. Plus, I mean, you got a marketing budget in the hundreds of millions. You got to... You gotta do something, right? Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Emil Pagliarulo. Hi, Emil. Do you not wear, like, <laughs> so is Emil the kind of guy that wears a jacket and no shirt? Listen, he goes to the gym like three times a, three times a week. Right, he, right. He's on that fucking pull-up bar. You're, you're gonna see his pecs. I mean, listen, he looks good, considering. I wonder how old he is. I mean, he's, he's got to be somewhere around Todd's age. Yeah, right? So, like 50-something? But yeah, he used to be a really heavy guy. So, good on him. Design director of Bethesda Game Studios. Design director. That's going in the notes. So, are we still holding out hope, guys? <laughs> <laughs> at least, it, at least that means he's maybe he's maybe not in a writing position. Yeah. <laughs> No, 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 he, he took the time to write those readers. Don't you worry. <laughs> We're very excited to offer you this exclusive look at Starfield in the exciting universe we've created, which is an area of our solar system we call the Settled Systems. An area of our solar system that is the Settled System? Is that Some, what he said? Something's not right here. We're very excited to offer you this exclusive look at Starfield in the exciting universe we've created, which is an area of our solar system we call the Settled Systems. Oh, okay, the, the universe, he said. No, he said our solar system. Solar system we call the... Oh, yeah. Which is an area of our solar system we call oh, yeah. the Settled Systems. Huh? All right. Uh, let let put, him finish. Put that in the notes. I'm going to let him finish. <laughs> Starfield takes place entirely within our solar system. Now, this is nitpicking right here. Got him. <laughs> That's the headshot. Our game is set in the year 2330 in a relatively small pocket of the Milky Way in an area that. Ex yeah, our solar system. <laughs> extends outward from our solar system for approximately 50 light years around 20 years before the start of the game the two largest fact no please not again <laughs> 20 years again no the galactic civil war was 20 years ago and it's gonna be like everybody's gonna act like it was last year now, surely, I mean, surely they've learned. <laughs> surely they've they they know what a calendar looks like now, right? It's I twenty mean, years. It's twenty years in a different travel, solar system, and you're measuring things in light years and stuff. This is <laughs> this is gonna go over well. Trust me, guys. That's such a bad sign. <laughs> Hopefully they have like an explanation that humans like their lifespan is measured in like centuries now or something yeah. so they can justify. <laughs> no, she, she, you know, she was, uh, she was, uh, waiting around for 25 years, but you know, that's only like a 10th of her lifespan anyways. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it would still be stupid, but <laughs> no, like legitimately, if you watch your Fallout 76 video, they did the, they literally did the 25 year meme again. <clears throat> Actions in the settled systems, the United Colonies and Free Star Collective engaged in the bloody colony war. Oh my fucking <laughs> god, no! 
<laughs> it's all happening again. Galactic Civil time, War. That was is 20 that, years ago. Is that, what the, is that what the anomalies are? They're actually like We're, we time are, loop. This is the Todd Howard's phylactery. It's literally, uh, <laughs> we're in the time loop. <laughs> so which one's the Stormcloaks, I guess? And then which one's the Imperials? Go back to the go back to the logos. We'll we'll judge it that way. Yeah, the, well, those are the logos. Oh, Around twenty years the before the start of the game, the two largest factions in the settled systems, the United Colonies and Free Star Collective, engaged in the bloody the right colony war. Cloaks. Today, yeah, that's the vibe I got too. Was like the, <laughs> the bird is the Stormcloaks because they're the fascists. Yeah, and then the UC is the uh, is the Empire. They'll be called like a. <laughs> They'll be treated like the Federation from Star Wars, but they, they really are like the, the <clears throat> Imperials. Someone was joking. Like, I was looking at the subreddit for research, and there was a post that literally said, uh, General Tolius and Legate Ricca. That was a shot from a trailer. It's actually true. <laughs> All right. Ten dollars, but no message. Ominous. This is uh wow. <laughs> <laughs> when when Emil when Emil's on the mic, dude. When Emil's on the mic, <laughs> he is like such a um, he's he's so honest about everything that um like. He can say two sentences and, like, give us material for years. <laughs> Man. So much packed into 40 seconds. They're going to give us... It, this is this is the Skyrim Civil War, like, part two. They're going to do it right <laughs> this time, guys. Space racists. <clears throat> Today, the major factions enjoy an uneasy peace, but the settled systems is still pretty dangerous. They're okay, so they're at peace this time. The war's over. It might have been 20 years ago. There might have been a war, but it's over. Oh, so should we have been looking at that as a Thalmorph? Who? The, um, the ones on the right. Non-UAC. Are they the Thalmor instead? Oh, you're thinking it's like Imperials versus Thalmor. Yeah, that's a possibility. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, like, the, the symbology of the logo is, like, a fascist government. It carries over, you know. There are plenty of human threats out there. Like, ecliptic mercenaries, pirates of the Crimson... Why are mercenaries? Oh, no, the gunners? So, we got gunners and raiders. Fleet, <laughs> violent spacers, or even the fanatic... Spacer's choice. Fanatical <laughs> religious zealots. Sworn. Yeah, so we got gunners, forsworn, or raiders. Cult, we could or cultists if we want to keep it in the uh, in the Fallout seventy six paradigm. Yeah. The cultists or the uh, was it Church of the Atom or whatever the fuck they were. Can't wait for these to be extremely boring and get no depth. <clears throat> yep. No, it, no. 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 It's no black pills. No black pills. Remember. ...of House Varu. The organization known as Constellation is committed to uncovering the mysteries of the galaxy. And as one of its newest members, you'll explore the deepest reaches of the settled systems, and you'll find yourself at home in the Starfield. I Title drops effects Boom. when they Boom. make you a member of the Spectres and you have like unlimited legal authority and stuff like that. Could I get that again in this game? Uh, is that, no. Is that what constellation is? You're an explorer, searching for the the. the see what it's gonna be is you're gonna go from planet to planet. You're gonna go to a bunch of shipwrecks, which are gonna be populated by those three factions of raiders. And then you are going to <laughs> uncover audio logs that include oh, details no. of the Galactic Civil War. And then um, you're going to reveal that actually the Civil War was fought over a MacGuffin that only you are capable of interacting with, an alien MacGuffin. 
that will save the starfield. Yes. Pre-ordered. <laughs> wow. It, it's sad, but like you're probably 80% of the way there. Yeah, I mean, like that's a... Uh... <laughs> Most generic, generic setup. But remember, like I said, sometimes, especially in science fiction, trope is not necessarily a bad thing. It's what you do with those that can really help you define and find something special. And they, they brought out the big guns here. They brought Emil out. Mm -hmm. um, I can't wait for the thrilling gameplay weird. of flying from sp so, Space so, Wreck to hold, Space Wreck. Hold on a sec. So they brought Emil out, right? He's mm -hmm. lead designer or design director. And all he talked about was story. Oh, shit. You're right. <laughs> Dude, he he wrote this game. There's no way he didn't. Because the gameplay that we've seen so far this just looks like baby. Fallout 76. So he's written this story. He's taken another stab at Skyrim. <laughs> Starfield is worse than you know. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm now dreading playing Starfield. <laughs> I am very excited now. I, it, excited in so far as I'll be one of I don't, the vultures picking up the bones. But <laughs> I don't want. I don't, the worst thing possible is for Starfield to be boring. If it like imagine if Starfield is as boring as like Outer Worlds, right? Yeah. I don't think it, I don't th I don't think that's possible. But imagine like that's that's what you get. That would be the worst case scenario. Yeah. So then another case is like it's super broken. Mm -hmm. And then, like, it's just kind of broken, but it's, like, super badly written. Yeah, super badly written, or there's, like, or it's, like, Fallout 76, where it's just everything is fucked. Like, yeah. writing, gameplay, just everything. Top everything is, like, a bottomless chasm of <laughs> bizarre decisions that the more you learn about, the more insane you go. <laughs> it's one of those games where it's like, okay, I can do a three-hour video on this or a 20-hour video on this. <laughs> <laughs> oh no this is not good this is why i keep saying i need this game to get delayed <laughs> audio engine please mix can, can you please just mix your fucking audio properly <laughs> join constellation become one of bethesda's discord kittens can i get groomed there Will Emil groom me? Well, I mean, the prediction's been on the table for a while. I actually predicted the, like, first-person perspective. Like, I basically said it's going to be a mix of No Man's Sky and Outer Worlds, and everything I've seen so far has uh, validated that. Is this game going to have VR support? Out of the box? Probably not. <laughs> you, know, you know how lazy they were with VR last time, right? I feel like we need to watch that one again because we you just kept so? stopping and laughing. <laughs> I, I, don't, I, I don't think some it shit. I don't think it comes together into. But <laughs> um, yeah, we can we can go back and give it a second screening. There's a lot of I missed a lot of stuff. I don't remember watching that one. What? This one. Oh. That's because it's hilarious. <laughs> Let him There's talk. A thumbnail. There's a thumbnail for you. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Emil Pagliarulo, design director of Bethesda Game Studios. We're very excited to offer you this exclusive look at Starfield in the exciting universe we've created, which is an area of our solar system we call the Settled Systems. Our game is set in the year 2330, in a relatively small pocket of the Milky Way in an area that extends outward from our solar system for approximately 50 light years. Around 20 years before the start of the game, the two largest factions in the settled systems, the United Colonies and Freestar Collective, engaged in the bloody colony war. Today, the major factions enjoy an uneasy peace, but the settled systems is still pretty dangerous. There are plenty of human threats out there, like ecliptic mercenaries, pirates of the Crimson Fleet, violent spacers, 
or even the fanatical religious zealots of how ecliptic. I didn't even notice that the first time. Wait, okay, so the guy in the middle is not the religious dude, not the religious zealots. Yeah, I, th I wasn't sure where you got that from. So this is a, there's a fourth faction that we're talking about. The Neo-Luddites. House Baru. The organization known as Constellation is committed to uncovering the mysteries of the galaxy. So why does one of its newest members exist? Is the is the question I want to know? Why what does Constellation exist? Yeah. <clears throat> You know, they're, um, they're like NASA or something, or, um, like a United Space Agency. They're, uh, federally funded, and they go around, uh, I mean, somebody has to be doing the science, you know? You, you need an independent third party. No, they're not gonna make you play in the religious faction. Constellation's the default faction, it's gonna be, like, super secular. You'll explore the it's not the best choice, it's Spacer's choice. The deepest reaches of the settled systems, and you'll find yourself at home in the Starfield. Yeah, we did, I don't think we missed anything. Other than I get to add the uh, e ecliptic. Uh, so I'm going to be looking for uh, ecliptic raiders in Starfield. Now you're going to be looking for the eclipse marks. Oh, yeah. Ecliptic. <laughs> oh, yeah. Eclipse. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. He was thinking of Mass Effect again. You know, Mass Effect 2 just, is Emil's favorite game. Which is funny because, like, the eclipse marks were, like, the techno, like, the tech-heavy uh, marks. Like, the Solarian marks and everything you can, like that. Listen, I'm not saying that they're not going to let you be religious. I'm going to say that they're not going to default to religion. Listen, Starfield is a game that just it wears its inspirations on its sleeve. It's it's homage, it's an homage, really. New Atlantis. You didn't have to cut me off. <laughs> I like that like like the robot is prominently in the art. It feels like this was a game where they made like they went dick first with this one. So they had like they, they came up with the promo material first and then they made the thumbnail first. Yeah, and then they made the the game after. Hi, I'm Emil Pagliarulo. Oh, uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Please. I love and you. And here they show him writing. Oh. Dude. <laughs> Dude, he... No, this is no, no, no. It's, be it's better. Look at what's in the background. It says it is what it is. <laughs> they know. Man, this I, is... know I, I know I said that a lot when I was playing Fallout 76. They literally know. They are, they are uh, making these for us. <laughs> Okay, so fuck. Ten seconds. Emil, <laughs> writing for ten seconds. It and you is have like what four it is. Notes. <laughs> it is what it is. It is what, what can it you is. Do? Does he have two bottles of eye drops? Well, you know he's staring. He's looking at a screen all day as he. Light mode writes in Word the yeah, story. Oof. Yeah, that's a wow. How do you write in that setup? Mm -hmm. With eye drops, you know, he probably like maximized it because there's a bunch of shit behind that that would be like, no, it, you know, yeah, it's not even blurred out. It's just not like really in focus. I can see urgent communication. Please be on alert. Powers of the Crimson Fleet have done something. This is clearly no longer just a uh, United Coalition problem. 
Now be warned that the Crimson Fleet is not a... So yeah, you can read what's on the screen there if somebody wants to... Um... If somebody wants to like dive in and analyze, like I mean, really, really, uh, hang on. Here, let's do this. I just have to put the horse up here for a second so I can get some zoom in on this. Yeah, somebody on the Discord server is going to have to uh, micro-analyze this frame, but... Uh, it's not even worth the effort. Yeah, it really isn't worth the effort. It's just generic. It, it kind of indicates that uh, the story, it's just going to be like a typical ML story. <laughs> There's a big bad called the Crimson Fleet that is going to be a threat to everybody, and it's probably like the raiders that you see in the concept Dude, art on the background. You're literally... You're li literally reading the raiders right here and yeah like, like we were like we've been predicting he's gonna write the raiders in this game he loves his spunk man how's that spunk gonna come across with this like art style and stuff because it looks like they're trying to go for something super grounded with starfield it is so, what like, it is so take take the fallout 76 raiders and all that writing and stuff and supplant it into like this world and this hey listen no stuff. listen god that's gonna be so no chat listen you haven't played fallout 76 you don't realize the raiders are joinable in that game oh yeah they are the I, raiders I are it. massive pieces of shit that you can join but then you join and you find out that they're they're just they're just really misunderstood. Yeah, they're misfits. You know, it's a collection of misunderstood people. They don't want to kill people. They just take their stuff away in ambushes. And yeah, in an environment where you know there's radiation and deadly animals everywhere. And uh, so each each of our Fallout videos is four hours long. That's eight hours of cumulative material made available over at patreon.com slash patrician TV. And patreon.com slash private sessions. You only have to pay once to get access to both videos. Yeah, if you want the if you want the deep dive on the on the Raiders side of the uh, Wastelanders quest line, you'd want to go over to my video. Yeah, I literally couldn't like <laughs> I was so pissed off with the first conversation with the Raider leader that I made you do that side of the quest line because <laughs> I was not putting up with you it. You literally called dibs. You're like, yep, dibs on the settlers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would have taken it anyway because I was I was getting concerned for your mental health when you started screaming at Meg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally thinking of that scene in Astartes where the uh, space marine just punches through the psyker's head. <laughs> and guns him down because I was wearing the Enclave power armor. So yeah, it was very worth it to play uh, Fallout 76 ahead of Starfield to really get a good feel for where this game was going. It made me very nervous. And that was literally, the, that's what I was saying as I was playing it. I was like, I, I don't, if there's anything that uh, Fallout 76 is going to indicate, it's how they're going to handle factions in Starfield. And holy shit, am I nervous about that. I think you literally said, oh, God, Starfield isn't going to be good. <laughs> Design director of Bethesda Game Studios. <laughs> we didn't even get... There's still 10 seconds in. Yeah. Design director of Bethesda Game Studios. What you're looking at here is the spaceport of the city of New Atlantis, the capital city... How much of it will be explorable? That looks like a bunch of 2D sprites. It is. It's it's just concept art, and the spaceship concept art is, like, flying across the screen. <laughs> so they're not really showing us anything. Like, this is their locate. Their idea of a location spotlight is to show us when did this, when did this concept come art. Um, You're going to have to, like, actually go to the YouTube page. See. All right, I'll look, I'll look that up. It's a matte painting. No, because it's not... It's not even being used for compositing. It's just, a, it's a digital painting. This came out one year ago. If you mouse over the one year ago, August, it'll tell you the exact date. August 27th, 2021. Yeah, so after E3, they were doing like a bunch of these random like location insights videos. There's like three of these. 
which is weird that they wouldn't have like any sort of in-game footage when they i'm had dude i'm telling you they are footage like they have the concepts down and they probably have like it's probably just fucked yeah. like you re- do you remember how many bugs people found in the gameplay reveal yeah <laughs> like there the are square, bug compilations the square, uh... from the promo yeah it was the square um shot double barrel shotgun uh was it the shells that were square it was like the the no. chamber that was squared no bullets came out of the uh out of the shotgun so it, it didn't use shells it uses bullets and they were full <laughs> bullets so it still had the like it still had the casing and the bullet and everything i think that's what it was No, like it legitimately looked jank. Like we're not even to uh the prime time of this stream yet where we actually look at the gameplay reveal. We're yeah, just check we're, we're we're checking yeah, off we're the still. easy boxes right now. Yeah, we're 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 be- we're eating the appetizers right now. We're beating around the bush. I mean, I, I we did we did watch some of the Elon Musk interview. <laughs> For those who are late joining, Elon Musk and Todd Howard were on the same <laughs> stage with Jeff Keeley. At E3 2019. God damn. City of the United Colonies, or UC, the most powerful established military. There's something weird to me about them just like being called the UC. So it's like abbreviations make sense when it's kind of like what the it's abbreviating is wordy. So like um, University of what is UC? Is, is there a University of Colorado? Well, like UCLA is University of California, Los Angeles, right? Yeah. Um. So, I mean, like your FBI, Federal Bureau of Investigation, that's a lot of syllables that you can just knock down to FBI. Like United Colonies is not such a wordy um, name for it that they would act that like it would be common no- nomenclature to just call it the UC. University of Cincinnati. Probably like the UN for United Nations. Well, the interesting thing is like with the UN and the UK and the US, we say that mostly as like, um, like shortened nomenclature. So like they print UN on stuff like uh, their vehicles and stuff for quick thing. But I don't, like there's something off about it to me, because every time I hear UC, I keep thinking the UAC from from I think Doom. How's that different? I don't know how it's different. There's just something fucking weird about it. UC doesn't flow well. I think UC flows as well as United Colonies. I don't know why you wouldn't just call it the United Colonies. Yeah, okay. Someone someone posted the screenshot of what I was talking about with the shotgun. I will put that on the screen. This is in their marketing material. It's like saying GB instead of Great Britain. Yeah, that's kind of it. Like, um, people do say UK instead of United Kingdom, but I don't, I've never heard people say GB instead of Great Britain. So I was right. It it does have a square, square barrel. (laughs) Yeah, square barrels, and it's ejecting like. Actual like <laughs> rounds that haven't been Unfired. fired. <laughs> People do use GB when talking about it in Paradox games. Well, okay, so let's clarify. Do when when people are talking about it, are you talking about text conversations or actual verbal conversations? Because it you see sounds like a thing that is in a design document and makes a lot of sense when you read it in text, but then when you say it, it just feels 
Like, yeah, it doesn't yeah, yeah. it doesn't I, flow I right as a name. Yeah, because United Colonies actually does flow pretty well when you say it out loud. It would be like if Firefly called them the SA instead of the Systems Alliance. Like, sometimes the wordier name just functions better, and that's what's throwing me off with the UC. Well, you see. Mm-hmm. So. It's a minor thing, but it's... It's just a little incongruence it's, that, like, it's the little thing is is going to literally scratch my brain every time it, <laughs> it, it, I hear it, because it's like they could have just said it, the United Colonies. Terry and political faction in the game. The city is a true melting pot, and its residents come from every race, creed, and ethnicity. In a lot of ways, New Atlantis is a true reflection of the future of our world. Okay. Is that it? It's just... Yes. You made a whole trailer to tell us that there's going to be a city that's a melting pot? Yes. Sounds like a nightmare. Yeah, it sounds like a... <laughs> sounds like a high crime rate uh, area. Hopefully then, they do it better than they did did it do it better than they did with the Imperial City. What you're looking at here is the pleasure city of Neon. The Xeno Hello, Patrick Television. Fresh Corporation built a giant fishing platform on a rather okay, so I, was, I was thinking that this was going to be Raider Town, but it's actually just going to be Corporate Town. Cool, getting those Outer Worlds. Uh... So now you have to side with New Atlantis, otherwise it will be racist. I mean, that's kind of the thing is like, when you're working on such non-specific levels as these videos are, literally anything they say is going to be like a huge deal with what they make so when they say it's going to be a melting pot that's probably like there's probably literally going to be missions about it being a melting pot yeah because you know they've only got like 30 to 40 seconds to sell these places so like it, Rifting, when he went home of the thieves guild when he went out of his way to mention that this is going to be a corporate town expect all the stories in this area to be about it being a corporate town aquatic world they wanted to catch fish until they discovered okay so i didn't say it i was going to praise whoever's been editing ml's audio to catch all the little pops and clicks that he's making because for some reason, every time Emil talks, it's like literally every <clears throat> syllable he says has like a click, like a glut guttural clicking yeah. sound to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it is so bad in this video. I want chat to listen yeah. to what's going on here. What you're looking at here is the pleasure city of Neon. The Xenofresh Corporation built a giant fishing platform on a rather nondescript aquatic world. They wanted to catch fish until they discovered a fish with psychotropic properties. It's so bad, and they were fixing it with the other videos. He speaks an African language, maybe? No, I'm not talking about, like, not that kind of clicking sound. I'm talking about, like, um... The mouth noises. Yeah, there's this... There's this tendon that's under your tongue that interacts with the other parts of your mouth and makes various mouth noises. And if you don't go to the process of, like, there's ways that you can alleviate it, but if you don't go to the process of trying to fix it, you can have so much. So, no, who cares? Literally listen to this shit. It sounds so fucking bad. What you're looking at here is the pleasure city. Like, what you're like when he says what you're listen to like really listen in on it of neon the xeno what you're looking you're, at you're also not going to hear it of if um if you don't have like headphones on what you're looking at here is the pleasure city of neon 
the Xenofresh Corporation built a giant fishing platform on a rather nondescript aquatic world. They wanted to catch fish until- This is the type of shit that I fix because if I didn't, I'd have 100,000 less subscribers. Yeah. And, like, the thing to note is, they could get anybody to do these, right? Like, they can get anybody to voice it, and they also have a marketing- they have a marketing budget measured in the millions of dollars. So it's like, this is one of the videos that you're putting out. You can probably calculate th this video alone probably costs like in the range of tens of thousands of dollars. Or well, and why it. is it in this video, but not in the other ones? Yeah. That's the weird thing is like, this is just how ML, th like, this is just a quirk of the way ML talks. And I'm not talking about his accent or his lisp. I'm literally just talking about the fact that he makes a ton of mouth noises and they were fixing it in the other ones. So why aren't they fixing it in this one? Until they discovered a fish with psychotropic properties. They could oh, make Jesus, way more money than selling a drug. No, okay. I was going to say Bioshock. <laughs> so there's, this is how they're going to get magic into the game, basically? Mmm. Plasmids. Yeah, this, is, this sounds like... Um... And it's the corporate planet that discovered it? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> As I've been saying, Starfield, it's a game that just, it just wears its, its uh, inspirations on its sleeve. Bioshock, but above the water. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't think this is a corporate pan planet. They literally said it's founded by the corporations and that the corporations found magic slugs that are going to give you magic superpowers. That's literally ver word for word what he said. You just can't hear them because of all the mouth noises. All right, let's back this up. Let's see if it's a corporate planet or not. What you're looking at here is the pleasure city of Neon. The Xenofresh Corporation built a giant fishing platform on a rather nondescript aquatic world. They wanted to catch fish until they discovered a fish with psychotropic properties. They could make he called it a pleasure city. Did anybody listen to the next sentence? What you're looking at here is the pleasure city of Neon. The Xenofresh Corporation built a giant fishing platform on a rather nondescript aquatic world. They wanted to catch fish until they discovered a fish with psychotropic properties. They could make way more money selling a drug than they could fish. That drug is Aurora in his legal. Okay, you got it? Corporation started fishing rig. They found a psychotropic fish. They sell it as drugs. It's now a pleasure city. I know, I know. It can be hard to understand what Emil's saying with all these mouth clicks that are going on. <laughs> Legal only on Neon. People come from all over to experience it and everything else Neon has to offer. But yes, it's Space Vegas. Man, dude, this game. <laughs> I really hope that this this is also what Todd has been wanting to do for a long time. He wanted to do his Indiana Jones game for a long time. You know what it is? It's like the reason that there's elements of it in the other games isn't because uh, this is copying them. Those those games were actually copying Todd Howard's design vision for Starfield. <laughs> and it's just that he wasn't able to make I the game hope. that he wanted to. I hope that is the case. They're selling this with concept art. Yep. Uh, they are showing off these locations concept art because chances are the cities don't actually run at a marketable frame rate. Or it's all like untextured or something like that. Yeah. It's just unfinished. Months before the original uh, release date. Yeah. So is this going to be Bandit Town? It's got to be, right? Behold, Aquila City the capital of the Freestar Collective, a loose confederation. Okay, so 
I have a feeling this was originally conceptualized as three these three videos as being one video, and then someone in editing decided that they could make three trailers. Because he's not really like leading into it. It's just yeah, like it feels he's like. Not... Because in the first one, he introduced himself. I don't give a shit that he has a lisp. I literally only care that he makes like annoying mouth noises. Because when, when it's not even it's, it's not even on him either. It's it's, it's, it's on, on the audio who's engineers. Not, yeah, it's on whoever's not fixing it. Yeah. Like I wouldn't expect a game designer to learn how to speak on a mic because it's like th th those are techniques that take like months, years even to really master. Yeah, I care. Dude, I, I care about the look. fucking. And, the lazy ass marketing people that are probably getting paid six figures to not yeah, do their it, job. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. All right. Has he actually said anything about this place yet? Or the capital of the Free Star Collective. Capital of the Free Star Collective. See, he doesn't go. It's the FC FSC. Yeah. He calls <laughs> he calls it by the verbose name. Why is the longer one called by the verbose name, but the shorter one's just called the UC? Because the UC is the official one. Mm -hmm. It's like the uh, who, I don't know if it was you or somebody in chat who said it was like the like comparing it to the UN. I think that's literally what they're going for with the use with the UC. I'm getting real uh, Systems Alliance versus Brown Coats vibe from uh, from this dichotomy. You've got the like overarching superstructure government and versus like these are the freedom loving people that love to rough cloaks. rough it out in the wilderness and storm cloaks. A loose confederation of three distinct star systems. The city itself is home to a variety of people, but they all have one thing in common. They believe in the sanctity of personal freedom and individuality. Oh my fucking god, it's literally just the Firefly conflict. <laughs> well, here we go again. I'm glad I'm a fucking Firefly fan, because 20 years later... <laughs> I'm recognizing everybody that's badly copying it cuz I talk about in my I talk about in the Outer Worlds video how they it's a Firefly reference but it's like it they learn literally nothing from the dynamics that are on the ship. Well, we're at the point now where people have been copying Firefly for so long that people are going to be copying the people who copied Firefly so they don't even know that they're copying Firefly. Man, I am just, I am floored. I had no idea that it was th that bad because, um, like, I I hadn't really kept up too much with the, like, miscellaneous marketing material. I'd seen the gameplay review, and that was about it. Yeah. I've been watching a few of these and stuff, but, like, watching them in isolation, you don't really get the full, the full picture. Watching them all back to back like this, it's, uh putting some things into perspective but remember remember it's we're not supposed to be taking our black pills today that's why i do it like this <laughs> yeah the city is walled for a reason and stepping outside is those walls walled? means facing the deadly ashta alien predators that are a cross between a wolf and a velociraptor oh no how dangerous where's the walls it's the little like white stripe there in the background. It oh, looks like the Great Wall of the China, dist that, actually. That thing in the distance, that's what's keeping the wolf the wolf velociraptors out. Mm hmm By the way, they did wolf velociraptors. They're called Raptodons. They're in Outer Worlds. I don't even remember what he called them. I'm just going to call them Raptodons because that's what they fucking are. That was it? Yes. <laughs> Facing the deadly Ashta, alien predators Ashta. that are crossed between a wolf. You mean Raptodons? We have, we have a town. They have a wall and a velociraptor. And there are dogs mixed with velociraptors. Alien dogs. 
mixed with Please Veloc clap. With alien Velociraptors. Actually, I don't think you were able to pre-order at this point. It'd be a waste of money anyways. There's a chance that it could get delayed. <laughs> Alright, so... That's the Starfield Suite OST. That's the music for Starfield that they played at the Skyrim event. Alright, um... Right, what are we at here? Two hours and 25 minutes? Nice. We might actually get through everything. There's not a lot. Yeah, the interviews are like the big, the big thing. Will Starfield be the first Bethesda pleb tier game? Dude. You have to realize that the only reason Oblivion wasn't hit with pleb tier was because I just didn't use that uh, title. Are the aliens are they aliens or genetically engineered? What does he mean by a cross between them? He means that when they designed them, they took a wolf and a velociraptor <laughs> and made a chimera out of it. So it's not that they're they're probably not going to be genetically engineered so much as just it's literally a velociraptor slash wolf. No, no, no. You see, the the corpos were playing with genetic engineering and stuff, and they dumped all their failed creations on that planet. the opening vistas of space literally what i just said that they came up with this first well they said they were they they've been work they wanted to make this for 25 this game is 25 years in the making so surely there's some ideas here that came before the thumbnail Promise high costs as well as high reward. We set sail on this. Is this a Star Citizen trailer? This new scene because there is new knowledge to be gained. The exploration of space. What is this? This is one of the great adventures of all time. This is like just vibes. That's what this is. Yes, they're setting the setting the palette. But you just want well, this is literally just a, this is a minute long. Time. And we mean so it's just like at this point, the people who are into Starfield are like, yes, 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 I'm so excited. Be a part of it. We mean to lead it. We're literally not seeing anything new because it's just the artist painting the marketing material that we've already seen for years. Holy oh, shit. I that thought that came out after the announcement reveal. Mhm. Mm like the, the the what a fucking waste of a trailer. Man. Somebody is justifying their job. I've mm -hmm. seen bad marketing campaigns. <laughs> this one's pretty fucking high up there. I mean, I, I, I get it. I get it. It's hard to do marketing on a game that you're not allowed to show. I know. That's the funny the thing is, like, how much material did the marketing people have to work with? Because apparently they just had concept art. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is this, are we looking at why the game industry is the way it is? Like, why developers can't produce, like, good games anymore? It's too expensive. I don't know where the money's going. It's all being embezzled. How are we on episode three? Hang on. Ah, fuck it. Uh, the order's not going to matter. Yeah. I always say that the music is the fourth dimension. It is the emotional dimension. 
And so in order to create this, you have to ask these questions. Where are you going? You know, what's your motivation? What is your story? <laughs> There's a quote. <laughs> your composer asking what your story's about. <laughs> what are you doing, Todd? <laughs> Where are you going? What is your story? <laughs> As Todd Howard runs out of the room. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I got an interview with, uh, with Elon Musk. Yeah. <laughs> The quote, the, the quote is the composer begging for details about the game so he can make it the music. Which is fun. Oh my god, that matches so well with my joke in my video where I said I think Inan Zur was the only person to actually go to West Virginia. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it fits with the Mick Gordon thing, too. <laughs> well, guess I'm just going to figure it out on my own then. Inan Zor was like, all right, well, I guess I'm going to just take a space flight then. They weren't, <laughs> an they weren't answering my questions about like what their game is about. So I just took a flight out to space and figured it out. I'm going to make a I'm just going to make a banger and go for it. <laughs> It'll fit. Whatever I do will fit. They're not going to dynamically use my music anyways. <laughs> These are not rhetorical questions. He is lost, delirious, and afraid. He is trapped in Bethesda Game Studios. He's begging for someone to tell him what Starfield is so that he can make the music. <laughs> what is really pushing us? This is... I'm starving. What <laughs> is really pushing us? Where is the cafeteria? What really drove me more than anything else. <laughs> so scared. What really drove me more than anything else? I like his unimpressed look, too. <laughs> Who the fuck is this guy? It's probably like your lead audio engineer. These huge questions. He's looking at him with like such this contempt. This fucking guy this is what sent me really... nothing but 30 second palette snippets. <laughs> we couldn't work with that shit. Do you know how many emails I had to send to Anon? <laughs> we had 300 emails we had to send. I saved them all. He <laughs> drove me more than anything else. These huge this fucking guy. <laughs> it's the little <laughs> lip twitch that he does. Staring daggers. Where like you like he literally like is pushing down the intrusive thoughts that are telling him to like just cut loose on this guy. <laughs> like he he is not happy to be doing this. Questions that are as big as space. Literally sitting there. He's literally sitting there just going, I need to get back to my fucking studio. The audio engine is like three months behind schedule. <laughs> Dear God, get me put somebody else, get Todd to do this shit. In on, in on Why Zer, am I here? In on Zer is like literally the only person who's uh on time with his work. <laughs> and the, the sound engineer is like, dude, the game is so fucked. We have to <laughs> we can't waste time on this marketing shit. <laughs> It's a question as big as space. What is Starfield? <laughs> I like how he said nothing either. <laughs> Everything I've worked on at this studio, the music started very early on. Oh, right. As early as the concept art for uh, the these game. Are the, um, for... These are the interviews where they had the developers interviewing each other, so yeah. it comes off really fucking cringy. <laughs> yeah, and this is Mark Lamper, and Mark Lamper, I think, wants to murder other people at Bethesda. <laughs> Everything I've worked on at this studio... He says it with such anger. Everything <laughs> I've worked on at this fucking studio... <laughs> Has fallen apart and has been memed to death on. Like he looks like the embodiment of intrusive thoughts. He took. He took the. He bore the full brunt of the. Everything of, I've of worked the on here. 
everything I've worked on here, and you come here with these bullshit rhetorical questions. <laughs> and Inon's like hitting him with this smug ass look. <laughs> The music started very early on. The music started early on, and I fucking hate you for that because you're done, and I'm still trying to fix this shit. <laughs> as early as the concept art for the game, from when I began here in 2005, at that time, Oblivion was already well. What's that? Is that mithril armor? Oh my god. I think this is the first time I've seen this concept art. It yeah. looks like Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Literally. The dead armor variant. Rest in peace, Mithril. I like its aesthetic, though. It's a vibe. I like that even in the concept art, they've got, like, kind of the <laughs> UI frills. Yeah. Like, they had a strong vision for what the UI was going to look like. That's nice. No, he's simply saying that, like, um, they used the concept art to score the games. Well, well under. It looks like it's from 3E Player's Handbook. My guy, you know what Oblivion is based on, right? <laughs> spell effectiveness is, a, I was amazed that spell effectiveness is actually a D&D &D idea. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Way, but as we went on to Fallout 3 after that, God, I feel the hate. I'm just you, looking at fucking visit? Fall Three. Yes, I did visit. Did you this. visit this place? Yeah, it was nice. Don't get me wrong. Just, I hate Fallout Three. So, <laughs> that was one of the first things I worked on music-wise was the main theme, and that's always been the case where the main theme sets the tone for everything else we do in the game. And there's time throughout the entire project for that to evolve. That's true. And look at that beautiful Fallout 3 artwork that isn't reflected at all in game. That's what bugs me about the Fallout concept art is that the games look nothing like it. That's Fallout 3 and New Vegas. There's so much sex in that Fallout art that they made for those games that like <laughs> just doesn't get reflected. And then Skyrim kind of hits its its concept <clears throat> art. I remember like during the Fallout 4 uh, visit, which was actually in 2012, I was wandering um, through the corridors and I basically stumbled into um, the artist's room. And it was the first time I actually saw them do what they're doing. I was captivated. I was like... Look at how much color is in they put into the concept art that doesn't make it into the game. Stumbled into um, the artist's room and it was the first... Yeah, holy shit. Like, if Meyer Lurk Encounters actually felt like the vibe that this picture gives, that would be one thing. I mean, con it, it's nev concept art never... It, it's always, you know, step above. I think, like, Halo Reach is a good example. Like, Bungie, they kind of hit their concept art. I think Bungie's Halo games feels like playing in the concept art. This looks pretty cool, and then you fight Meyer Lurks in the game, and it's so fucking bad. I hope you, hope you specced into vats. There are way too many Meyer Lurk encounters in Fallout 76 for how many like weird and creative creatures they added to that game. Yeah. To just keep using Meyer Lurks. I remember that vault that was full of nothing but Meyer Lurks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my god you just unlocked a memory for me fucking vault 94 yeah. that was literally nothing but Meyer lurks Meyer lurks and like Meyer um, hunters and no like the uh the fact that there's a terminal at the very back of the dungeon that has all of the like uh the storytelling of the area the it was the liminal like the liminal space of fallout 76 which is like the liminal space game yeah, and it was that way because it was part of Nuclear Winter, Nuclear Winter which is yeah, it, which yeah. that that is an update that basically got cut. <clears throat> oh man, Bethesda is <laughs> such a lol cow. It's it's actually kind of amazing. First time I actually saw them do what they're doing. And okay, like here's another picture. I know what 
I know what area this is in the game. Yeah. And it's so much worse than like the vibe that this gives off. Yeah, it's not even like I can understand not being able to capture like the fidelity of this and everything. There's lighting effects in here that the engine obviously isn't capable of, but it's the vibe that they aren't even able to, which is funny because that's the exact same issue that we had with West Virginia, the mm -hmm. Fall 76 map in West Virginia. It's like they just did not capture the vibe whatsoever. It's amazing that people are finally figuring out the Patrician TV can't wait for them to disband from failure after failure. I want Bethesda to pull it out of the death spiral, but I know that they won't. So I kind of just want the the talent to leave. I was captivated. I was like, wow. Yeah, and then you actually and then I played the game and I was like, <laughs> whoa, that whoa. sucks. <laughs> I can't believe you put my mute my great music over this horrible fucking game. <laughs> I mean, this is really what it is all about. And I felt so inspired. Remember when we were driving through West Virginia and like the mountains and stuff, and we had the music playing mm -hmm. and, we and it was like, perfect. holy shit. Did an Anzur just like completely nail the soundscape for this game? Yeah. If you ever visit West Virginia, listen to this Fallout 76 soundtrack because um, he absolutely nails the feeling of West Virginia. The game doesn't. <clears throat> oh. Not in the slightest. And motivated, basically, to go back and, you know, to do the same thing with the palette of music. The biggest challenge... Hey, so why doesn't he mention Fallout 76? <laughs> like he's he produced the most music for that game too dude he made music for the dlc for fallout yeah. 76 <laughs> fallout 76 has three hours of music that he scored i think yeah it has just like the base game has three hours yeah and then and then an hour for wastelanders and the bos an hour for wastelanders 40 minutes for bos 20 minutes for steel rain But yeah, that's uh. Why doesn't Can't he mention, mention it? it? Can't mention it. You cannot mention like. Is that actually going to be a rule in their marketing that they literally are memory holding their involvement in in Fallout seventy six? They're like, <laughs> nope. The last thing we made was fucking Fallout four. Yeah, I mean, you you can't that's throwing shade on the narrative of like they fixed the game too yeah because the dlc the sales for the dlc in fallout 76 is entirely based around the they fixed the game meme and um it, like you're seeing here that like bethesda austin is being forced to carry well was was being forced to carry fallout 76 while bethesda maryland literally threw it like under the bus yeah. and just memory hold any involvement with it No, like, there were people at Maryland who worked on Fallout 76. The the map was made by Fallout by Bethesda Maryland. The uh, lead the, the, the lead writer, the lead quest designer was Farrah Bedwan, who worked on Fallout 4. And the lead designer after the game's launch was Farrah Bedwan, who made one of the main factions from Fallout 4. It was the railroad, but it was one of the main factions. is actually creating the signature i relax a lot once once exactly. we feel good about the main thing because the rest is going to it'll be work and iteration but it's going to write itself the way here's that one painting they did for the marketing <laughs> the way i looked at starfield always is what i called the sanctified triplet which is everything is streaming right Everything is changing and everything is returning back. No, Mark Lampert is literally like shooting daggers in this. <laughs> I, he, I, the serious vibe, he does not want to do this. 
and Inan is like just so happy and full of life and everything. <laughs> like it's such a such a weird, awkward contrast. What's the worst <laughs> faction in Outer Worlds and why? You're talking about a game that has <clears throat> one faction. It doesn't have two factions. It has one faction and it has a guy that is against that faction. What do you think about the theory that Fallout 76 was originally going to be a single player game and got mangled into a, a live service game? I don't think it's true in the slightest. Not with the way that it's written. Ta-da! Ta-da! Here's your development. And then, ta-da! And, and back. So basically, it presents itself, it develops, it goes back. The circular is exactly some sort of like a circular um journey i do not want to be here <laughs> he, he looks like the guy from the big short that like the really angry guy in the office that like had like in every meeting has a baseball bat <clears throat> and looks like he's just gonna murder the investors that's who he looks like you go out you adventure discover return yes there's always you go out adventure discover return Mark Lampert really uh, confirming the Joseph Anderson uh, gameplay <laughs> loop here. <laughs> he watched the video. He's a. F Why do you think he's he's well, in such I, a bad mood? I like that he goes out of the way to acknowledge that the uh, third part of that the, the third leg of that is return, aka inventory management. <laughs> oh no! It's Fallout seventy six's game loop again. All right, I'm gonna use the restroom, and then if you need to, you can after i come back okay so hey, i'll be right hey. back chat what do you guys feel like discussing want some more fallout 76 deep cuts i look forward to joseph anderson's review of starfield i don't think joseph anderson's going to be releasing much he's uh he's a twitch streamer now a successful twitch streamer too When we playing Halo 2, when MCC goes on sale and I can buy it for cheap on uh, on an alternate account. That's my opinion on meatloaf. Easy to make. Fun to eat. I feel like your 76 video could have been six hours. Yeah, it's one of those things like I could have... We could have easily gone longer, but... Pat and I worked to, it, we didn't even really coordinate all that much. We just stuck to talking about what we wanted to talk about. It wound up being that we both made like four hour videos that are actually pretty good to watch side by side. So like we really think of it as we made an eight hour long Fallout 76 video. And we were talking about this yesterday and we didn't leave a whole lot left on the table. Um, we could have gone in deeper with some of the stuff, went into like the drama and stuff if we really wanted to but fallout 76 is a game that it could have like a solid 12 hour video on it so like a solid 10 to 12 hours is the 76 video staying patreon exclusive no um we're actually going to be premiering our 76 videos or the first parts of our 76 videos uh this friday um Pat will go first, and then I'll go second. So that's why we're doing the streams this week. Joe said he thinks the Witcher 3 video will be finished in 2024 early. Damn, this how does year. a bladder retain that much liquid? <laughs> We're talking about Joseph Anderson. Hmm. What about him? So apparent apparently his Witcher video is going to be done in 2024. Uh apparently his Witcher video was going to be done in 2020. When did he say uh when did he say that? And where? Earlier this year. Are you still um? Are you still on the Polish 
language grind set. Mm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I had to slow down though while it, we worked on the distribution. Uh, I've been having to work more. I'm going to go to the bathroom then real fast. All right. Say goodbye, chat. The funny thing about the Witcher 3 video is that he uh, he said like the video was like 99% done. Damn, we have 470 viewers. Crazy. You guys all came out for this, didn't you? You want to see me talk about the uh, whole Starfield here. But yeah, it was basically done at the end of 2020. And it would only have to be updated based on information about Cyberpunk and uh, never again. Yeah, ideally, like, one of my main operational goals is literally to avoid falling into whatever fucking trap Joseph Anderson fell into. Check the comments on J.A.'s Witcher 2 video. Witcher 3 video is releasing this year or else J.A. is completely deleting his channel, supposedly. I think I should have something more reliable than the comments on Joseph Anderson's Witcher 2 video. He said on stream that if it's not out at the end of this year, he's deleting his channel on Twitch. Yeah, but I mean, like, isn't... Isn't he, like... Is he working on it at all? Like, it sounds like he's basically saying that he's just going to quit YouTube. What do you think the best thing about 76 was besides music? Because that's every Bethesda game. Um, the map, the way, like, okay, so the way that 76's map is designed, it doesn't capture the vibe of West Virginia, but it is very good at channeling players through areas uh, via exploration, um, biome distinction, surprisingly, given that this is, uh, given Bethesda's track record with the past few games. And, um, I don't know, it's just, like, a very interesting map. Especially for a game where you're expected to kind of, like, pick a place to build a base. Fallout 76 is very good about giving you a lot of places to want to build a base. Yes. Most I still preferred Fallout 4 settlement building, but... I haven't played 76 since launch. Is there any reason to return to it? Um, do you like Borderlands? Do you like gambling for the perfect like combination of effects on a weapon? Do you enjoy one in like one trillion loot rolls? If so, you might like Fallout 76. People do play Fallout 76, but the thing is, the thing is, you have to understand... People also play Metal Gear Survive. So every game that's out there has at least one person who's going to dedicate their life to playing it for some reason. And some games have like one or two more people than others. But um, like, yeah, there are people who play Fallout 76. They are degenerates. Like we found a YouTube comment by a guy who was like, uh, the new update isn't that good. As somebody who plays Fallout 76 eight hours a day across like three characters, and you know, like they were detailing what their day looks like as somebody who plays Fallout 76 eight hours a day. So, like, the, yeah, there are people who play Fallout 76, but that doesn't really mean anything. Because I have a meme of, um, I have a meme of like autistic people. Picking the absolute worst games to spend one third of their life on. That's the type that's like that's the kind of people, the hardened core of people that are playing Fallout 76. And what you have to bear in mind is 
There might be 6,000 people playing Fallout 76 right now. Bethesda claims that there's, like, supposed to be millions of people that are playing Fallout 76. You know, it's on the consoles where they don't publish the numbers. But yeah, like Fallout 76 is always going to have a small trickle. I wonder if it's ticked up since I know since we announced the videos. Oh, the other thing was that Fallout 76 was on like the March or February Humble Bundle. So there was an increase in players due to the fact that they literally gave the game away. Because uh, after Expeditions the Pit... Uh, they switched studios that's maintaining it, and basically it's a desperate uh, ploy to try and get as many players in the door as possible before Microsoft cuts their budget. That's basically the state of Fallout 76. I just want to know if there's anybody at Bethesda, like any in any of their studios right now, working on 76, or if it's I, just I don't think all so. I think it's deck. I think it's all been handed off to that one studio you were talking about. Like, I don't think yeah. Bethesda, I don't think even Bethesda Austin is working on seventy six anymore. I don't think so either. They're probably all working on Starfield at this point. Well, remember they're they're adding the uh, oh I should add the I should turn on my VTuber model. They're adding the Skyrim werewolf to Fallout seventy six. <laughs> the pit wasn't that Fallout three DLC? Well, that that's the funny thing, isn't it? <laughs> it's the damnedest thing. Uh, the best part of Fallout 76 is that, like, because of Fallout 3 and 4, you have confirmation that, like, literally nothing that you do um, is going to matter. So it's like, the Expeditions of the Pit is, like, framing it like we're going to actually stop the fanatics and prevent the slavery that's going on in the pit. But it's like, I've played Fallout 3. I've played the Fit the Pit DLC. I know full well we're not going to succeed at this. But yeah, they've done The Pit, they've done Mothership Zeta, they've done two things on the Brotherhood of Steel. There's a Settlers versus Raiders uh, storyline. Um, the current update right now is like Mutant Invasion, which is like uh, just kind of half focused on cryptids. But yeah, that's the state of Fallout 76. Its identity at this point is more rooted in the in Fallout 3 and 4 than it is in itself because the only update they did that was really themed around Fallout 76 was Mothman, which has limited time accessibility. So like, oh yeah, the last update was fucking Nuka World. So now they're scratching the barrel of Fallout 4 nostalgia. So, yeah. Um you ready? Yeah, I'm good. All right. We're back at it, chat. Let's go. Who is the strive to go back home? And that's, I mean, I guess that's what feels so complete for us, right? We want to complete the mission. We want to complete our journey. want to complete my something. contract. I think Enon Zur is the only person that's really satisfied at Bethesda. I mean, he doesn't. Does he work at Bethesda? I always assumed he yeah, was just. Yeah, I, I like think a, he's a contractor. Like. Yeah, yeah, he's just on retainer. Like he does. Well, he's he's the new stuff. Jeremy Soul, where it's going to be hip to mm -hmm. say that he works at Bethesda until something happens, and then they're gonna like they're gonna cut him loose and replace him. <laughs> we will discover something. We'll take it with. The, mu the music is where they will justify spending the money to get the best in the industry because they know they know that if they if they make a game with a bad soundtrack Bethesda's yeah. in serious fucking trouble yeah because it's that's always been the thing it's like well at least we get another really good soundtrack out of this game thus well and they also probably kept Dean on because it's a sci-fi game 
Michael. Like if they were doing well, more fantasy, they might think about bringing Jeremy back, but no, no, no. I heard he's work. Well, remember Inan did the uh, soundtrack for Blades, and I've heard he's going to be doing the uh, really? soundtrack for yeah for Ted Six as well. Okay, so uh, Jeremy fi there. finally got himself uh, canned out yeah. of Bethesda. Okay, yeah. And we will go back home with it. Yeah, I mean, of course, what Enon's saying is pointless. When we um, the music section of all of the of the marketing material for all of their fucking games is always like vapid and boring because they don't really talk much about what's going on with the game, and there's not really much you can glean from it. It's just like, yep, they made music for the game. We built the traditional orchestral uh, sound palette. We actually really divided the orchestral group. For example, took the woodwinds, okay? And we created like a whole woodwind layer. There's always some kind of funny meme. Like Emil Pagliarulo, uh, his warhorn being his, and him like going around and messing around with other people's stuff and like him owning a sword and making mead. Most of that came from the music section of the Bethesda podcast. So like it's fucking boring, but occasionally you get some Emil lore if you watch for long enough that almost represents particle in space because they don't play melody. Mark Lampert is looking at him like, what the fuck are you talking about? Melodies <laughs> at all. They play sort of like a high frequency sequence, you know, like together. So they almost don't sound like woodwind. They sound something between organic to synthetic then the strings. Oh no. They recorded they so that that actually makes a lot of sense with the timeline. So they've got they're recording the orchestral stuff during a mask mandate. I wonder how those like those like barriers and stuff affected the acoustics of the room. So you you see they had to put up like baffling yeah, and stuff in there. They've got that had to be a nightmare. Oh no! Yeah, they've got the plexiglass barrier for all the uh, the trumpet people. Oh or, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, like spittle is just like part of music. So yeah. they will play this long chords or long melodies and long crescendos and diminuendos and these kind of things along the line with the fast moving woodwinds will create I don't think these nice barriers blanket. are for covid It looks like a it looks like they ad hoced the the uh, foam in there though and yeah. I mean plexiglass will uh affect the sound of it so you wouldn't put it up for no reason Imagine if it like affected the the recording and stuff so that they just they wound up making a soundtrack that sounded very like isolated mm -hmm. and they were able to find like a, a like they accidentally came across like a unique tone for the soundtrack. Fucking COVID tone. <laughs> around these waves, okay? And then comes the brass and the brass, especially the French horn. No, because like literally you can yeah, see no, that the they, dividers yeah, are around put, the people who aren't wearing masks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They put they, they put the uh the horns in, in a rage cage. Yeah, because like these guys produce a lot of spittle. So Yeah. I I was in uh brass. I, I played a brass instrument and let me fucking tell you, it's disgusting. Yeah. You got like valves and shit that you open up and literally pour spit out of it. And it looks hastily put together. It doesn't look like it's being done intentionally. Yeah. Uh, playing. Why aren't the horn players wearing masks? What gives? Yeah, it's weird. Why would people who play an instrument with their mouth not wear masks? Man, I feel bad for the sound engineers who would have had to work around those like source <laughs> files. Yeah, That'd be a bitch. It's like I'm sorry, my co my my four years at a in, in audio engineering school did not cover how to mix out somebody being put in a cage <laughs> and playing a brass instrument. <laughs> the wage cage. <laughs> sort of like the beacon you know the coal 
of the brass. Those instrument groups as well, a lot of times when you are looking at that whole main theme, I'm kind of salivating, thinking about what can I... Salivating. <laughs> These two guys not wearing masks. COVID core music. There's no way that's going to be in the video, but I still think it's funny. <laughs> All the home production during COVID made for so much awful voice acting. Yeah, because um, just because you're a voice actor doesn't mean you're qualified to uh, set up your home studio. Or even have the money to do it. I do with that on the sound design side, you know, not just to weave the main theme in to different key points in the game, leveling up, discovering new places. Could we use that as straight up sound design to take those woodwind tremolos and just let's slow them way down, let's reverse them. I'll take any of that music and turn it into ambience somewhere. They've probably redone the music again after the lockdown. I'm thinking I agree with the theory that it was just re like the rehearsals that were done with the, mm. the COVID core barriers and yeah, all yeah. that extra shit that they had to hastily put up probably came down for a final recording. I wonder how much, how, like, if you're doing, like, full recordings for the sake of making, like, uh, the actual samples that you're going to use in-game, wouldn't you just do all that stuff in isolation? Like, that's how they record yeah. music for, like, actual, like, like a band goes in. The band, the, the whole band doesn't pile into the fucking recording booth. You, you get the drummer to go in there, and then you get, the like, the singer to go in there and stuff. Like, you do it in stages, and then you mix it all together in, like... Well, especially for a video game. Yeah, I would I would imagine the actual samples they're using in game was recorded in isolation. There's a lot that they're not saying and they're probably not drawing attention to because they they probably wanted on the low key that they had them wearing masks when they were making the <laughs> like cuz now it now it's not uh now it's not hip. The music is like the companion. It's the companion to the player in the same. Oh man, Mark Lampert's finally going to get to use that uh, the sound of him banging on the inside of a washing machine. <laughs> He's going to get to use that to great effect. Uh, listen, I got hours of these samples from all the Fallout Three and Fallout Four stuff we did. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Just the random fucking trash can <laughs> lid sound that plays in Fallout 76. <laughs> Mark Lampert walks around the studio with... Uh, he, he doesn't walk around with a baseball bat because he wants to intimidate people to not talk to him. He does it because he needs it to let me see something he needs to hit to record. Mm -hmm. He's got it on hand. There's so much broken stuff at the studio. <laughs> yeah, I like to these... What's... I like That's these... what Emil said. <laughs> yeah, there's broken <laughs> glass in the fucking recording booth. And cereal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you've noticed the coffee mugs that they have, the custom coffee mugs that show up in, like, all of their marketing. Yeah. Do you think that, like, they... Can I buy that? Yeah, are they... Just moving on. Game. We don't have control over how the how the player chooses to experience the game. Our sense of scale had to be totally readjusted in making a game on a planetary surface as we've always done before. And now where you have these very vast distances against this black starry background, it is a blank canvas in a massive playground and all the pieces are there for you to write your own story. Whether you jump right in and you wish to follow the main quest, the main story and go to the obvious one point leads to another, leads to another. The music has a funny way of playing the right chord change at the right time, and a lot of that just happens at random. You look over the valley at just the right moment, and that just happens to be when this one chord change happens, and there are times like that that feel scripted, and they're not. Why would you admit that? Okay, so they only have three things on the merch store. A generic Starfield logo tee, a constellation beanie and a constellation jacket. There's no way the jacket's in stock. It is ninety five bucks. 
Yeah, listen, you saw what happened with Fallout 76, right? <laughs> You're not the, the nylon bags. And I like that each player has that experience for themselves. Real No Man's Sky vibe. Personally. I believe that the game is a whole experience and music is part of the whole experience. I believe that the best music in a game is a music that you don't hear, music that you feel. This is something that is bigger what? than us. I mean, so many people worked on this game. Listen, he's an artist. Um, and so my wish is that specifically the music. So many people worked on this game, so you have to accept that it's good. I like that some people are pushing back against that trend of saying, well, you have to appreciate it because people worked hard on it. <laughs> Music will be present in a way. Also, it's all just concept art. You would think they could take the opportunity to leak, leak just a little bit. Okay. Can we have a shot of the character looking out the, the window of space? When yeah, saying but this. surely you could um, put something together. No, we've only got concept art. A that is going to magnify the entire experience. Six months before release, remember that. Yeah. And they were only showing concept art. Yeah, there was there was no way they were even remotely who even Todd who even someone thought? finally had to like tell Todd that <laughs> it wasn't going to happen. There's that fucking coffee mug that you can't buy. I 3D printed my own custom constellation coffee mug. So what did ML do to uh, what what experiment did Emma run for uh, for Starfield? He made so drugs Skyrim... <laughs> and had jetpack sex. No, he did that for Fallout Four. He made he made real life Psycho. Reminder that Martin O'Donnell's biggest thing was that music shouldn't be playing constantly. Yeah, we've been on and off with Halo, just kind of like. We will literally just say, look, something good. Look, something good. <laughs> well, it's funny because even in Skyrim, music doesn't play constantly. It has, it has its moments of silence. Yeah. I don't remember how music ran in Fallout 76. I don't think it was constant. I don't think so either. It plays a lot, but I don't think it's constant. It's, it feels less elegant than Skyrim in my eyes because with Skyrim you have like specific themes for specific areas yeah and 76 doesn't do that even I don't know if 76 does that even though like there are th like there's a crater theme and a foundation theme I don't think Fallout 76 really does um, like you know it doesn't have the, the equivalent of tavern music yeah You know if Starfield gets sequels, it will start in the same general area the first game started, like how Bethesda made every fall at start in a vault and Elder Scrolls in prison. Yeah. But I mean, you know, why are we why are we speculating about things that are gonna be fifteen years from now? Alright, we are this is just called Made for Wanderers, so no clue what's in the tin on this one. It's a level of immersion that we really focus on. That you're not just playing a game, but you're living in this in this world, in this universe. It's uh, a giant open world for the player to do what they want. There he is, <laughs> the man, the myth, <laughs> the legend, Emo <laughs> Pagliarulo. I, I literally get excited when I see him on screen. Yes, <laughs> Todd, Todd is like 
he's a you know he's kind of a delight but emil is just you're guaranteed to hear something quotable <laughs> i here's the thing i'm amazed that they still let him talk <laughs> Like, I feel like they would have negotiated hard to get Emil to, to stop talking because I'm pretty Especially sure... Especially when you got somebody like Pete Hines at yeah. Bethesda, where, like, he mastered the ability to say stuff without actually saying anything. Yeah, so Pete, yeah, Pete Hines is definitely the PR master. You think that he would be, like, looking at the fact that almost everything <clears throat> Emil says can be quoted like badly for Bethesda <laughs> like they'll never do another uh mod jam they don't want to show off how much they could do in a week if they weren't being told what to cut right like the mod <laughs> the mod jam is definitely the most damning thing that they've ever admitted <laughs> uh Emil is in second place though because like half of what he says is like yeah, we leave it up to the modders to fix it. Immo's just too honest. Yeah. You gotta love him for it. A game, but you're living in this in this world, in this universe. It's a giant open world for the player to do what they want. You feel like you've had an impact in the world. You really feel like you're there. There's certain, you know, types of entertainment. There he is, boys. <laughs> where you're just experiencing it. You're taking in what the creator wants you to see. And, they, you know, they draw that dotted line between this happens, go here, do this. The more that we can put you in the situation where you're going to decide. That's what makes video games the best form of entertainment that they are. Well, yeah, Todd Howard is rapidly aging due to the fact that uh, the contract said that the phylactery would only last until November 11th. <laughs> so uh, Todd Howard actually looks like Joseph Biden now. Well, see, the kind of the thing is, because I skipped Fallout 3, I skipped a uh, big MO phase. So I've always conceptualized him as being kind of like the skinny, wiry guy that he is in the making of for uh, Skyrim. Like, that's always been my mental image of uh, Mr. Pagliarulo. We don't just make RPGs. Like, we make simulations. Okay, so Todd drinks from the coffee mug. That's going in this, the notes. This is my mug. My custom mug. You know, Emil had his horn. I have my coffee mug. And my Tesla Model S. So what's in there? That's fully kitted out. Is it coffee or is it vodka? <laughs> the blood of innocence. How does he say and that so leads young? Elder Scrolls 6 Red Solo Cup. <laughs> to a lot of just i like that these uh assets they've made like whoever's at whoever is putting this together at least had the decency to like really uh pull together a uh a style guide for what they were going to do they're going to use the the iconic four const colors for constellation which i think this is a mm -hmm. decent design because it kind of sells like oh this is supposed to be a planet and then an atmosphere and then space so they did a good job with this like little color selection that they've done here. Like that's neat. Um, that's about it. That's all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy stuff that can happen and things you don't expect. Yeah. Oh, Todd's drinking Nuka Cola dark rum. <laughs> we always have those big fights. Like, what if a what if combat breaks out right now? Right, you have to handle that, right? Because it could. You you can't control it. The only thing you control is that that the game has to. Where do I recognize Will Shen from? What was his major credits? Um, so I'm pretty sure he used to be a programmer for like during the Skyrim days. You recognize him from when they did the thing where they were looking at uh, ten years later, and they were looking at Skyrim for anniversary edition. He was in that. 
Um, and he got interviewed a few times during the making of documentaries. Mm. Will Shen is the lead designer for Far Harbor. Yeah, there you go. That's that's where I recognize the name from. But uh, yeah, these are all these are all like uh, ten plus year employees. Yeah. To account for it somehow. We embraced the chaos. I, I think Will Shin was there since at least Morrowind. These are the dudes who owned those vacation houses we saw in West yeah. Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> These are the guys that got paid. Play out, and usually it's pretty fun. A lot of us have been doing this for a long time together, and it's nice with Starfield to go back to some things we didn't do, the backgrounds, the traits, the defining your character, all of those stats. Um, and I think there's so many games now that do those things that people are ready for something that that does a lot of the things that you know older hardcore rpgs some that we used to do there's, doing those again and there's the way. quote boys yep there's the promise <laughs> fucking timestamp that shit All right, let's be sure on what exactly they said. For something that, some things we didn't do, the backgrounds, the traits, the defining your character, all of those stats. Um, and I think there's so many games now that do those things that people are ready for something that, that does a lot of the things that, you know, older hardcore RPGs, some that we used to do, doing those again in, in a new way. People are ready for it. Holy shit, that fucking burns my piss so bad only now are people ready for it oh my god i am fucking seething <laughs> we got ball busted for <laughs> six games in a row or whatever but <laughs> now now it's not too spreadsheety anymore yeah i mean yeah i wonder i really do wonder if like they're writing some quotes that they can put in that are gonna, tr they're trying to counteract the whole spreadsheety thing. Um, cause I, that's what I was thinking about when I was making the Skyrim video was like, there's no way that they're gonna ever let them be candid. No. It's all super all pre prepared. Script. Yeah, this is all scripted. They just weren't ready for it. You know, mm -hmm. fall, we fall out New Vegas when we can't can't mention New Vegas. So, you know, that's the best part. New Vegas came out in 2010. A year later, Skyrim came out. So it's after like, Skyrim, you, the player, are now ready for hardcore mechanics, character yeah. classes. <laughs> and then Fallout 4 happened and they stripped it back even more. Yeah. And then 76. 76 was like kind of sidestep from Fallout 4. Is Fallout 4 system... 76 but, was taking what Fallout 4 did and trying to make it better. Yeah, while throwing in a bit of RNG into it. Yeah, you know, we got we still got to monetize it. It is a live service game after mm -hmm. all. It's because replayable. apparently like those those card packs that you get were originally supposed to be like the main way you'd get perks and you could buy them in the shop. By people, does Todd Howard mean normies that think Horizon or God of War 2019 2018 have complex gameplay? Yeah, so that's kind of my thought yeah. process is what he's saying here isn't that like the fans are ready for it. What he's saying is that like in a mainstream sense, Bethesda is now big enough that they can safely do it again. They no longer have to dumb their stuff down to get an audience. They have an audience and so they can expand back out. Whether or not that'll actually mean anything is a whole other debate. Whether they had to do that to begin with is also mm -hmm. up for debate. Yeah, I mean, there was a way that they could have you tried had to from do it. Soft, you had from soft back in you know Demon Souls and Dark Souls One. They never, they never strayed away from the RPGs. We've always allowed the player to, you know, to create really interesting, unique characters. This game, we've definitely severely leveled up. The tech is based on. Have we always allowed players to create really super interesting characters? I'm thinking of like thinking Fallout of 3 and 4. <laughs> Fallout 3 or Fallout 4 has two characters. 
uh, Nora and whatever the fuck the male character's name is. Nate. Nate and Nora. That's the two characters of Fallout 4. Oh, and sar sarcastic Nora and Nate. Okay, so there's four <laughs> characters. And I'm thinking, like, Fallout 3, to me, the vibe I got from Fallout 3 was that there's just, like, two characters, evil and good. So is so is Nate and Nora taking Psycho? Is that just sarcastic? Or do they take those drugs ironically? Mm -hmm. Of course. <laughs> just making sure. Now you can choose between body type number one and body type number two. Um, have you played Fallout 4 or 76? They've got custom body types now, you know. You can be a big fat guy. Well, not a big fat guy. Can't be an old guy, though. Mm. It's, it's hard. Well, the tech is based on scanning of real-world models, similar to the photogrammetry we do in our landscapes. We're kind of applying the same thing to our, to our people as well, because it's not just the appearance of... Oh, man. And just, like, tech that people were showing off fucking 15 years ago. You guys are finally doing that? Full-body mocap. Remember L.A. Noir? If you're a player and all that, but, you know, we want all the personal interactions of NPCs, other characters in the game to be as impactful as possible. And for that, you have to believe these are real people. You're a real person interacting with real people. One of the big choices is which part of the game world am I going to engage in? We always... Uh, Can I play Skyrim without leaving Riften? <laughs> That's the vibe I got from that statement. Like, yeah, where the player is physically standing, that is indeed a choice. Was that LA Noir thing going somewhere? That's kind of the weird thing is like, I don't understand what the point of including that was because this seems like it was a discussion about mechanics and then this randomly they're throwing in, oh, and our people are like digitally scanned. Yeah. I was actually thinking about doing a Morrowind video. Uh, the challenge is level 1 to 20 in Vivek. You can't leave the city of Vivek. Live stream that. I don't know how the challenge will play out because I don't know if there's any kind of loop you can do or if you're eventually just going to run out of content. Like maybe you would have to like rely on like athletics and acrobatics a lot. Because I mean, or did, the main thing I'm thinking of that's infinite is ordinators and they're high level. So you can't just farm them. You're fucking farming like slaughter fish down in the water. <laughs> <laughs> like rats in the sewers. No, I know what you can farm. Um, Dark Brotherhood assassins. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like a qualifier for that is that you, like, because the challenge goes really differently on whether or not you have the Dark Brotherhood assassins. That that's Morrowind in general, <laughs> but yeah. The girls are still ugly in the game. I am wondering how we both made it through the Raiders section without saying that Meg is really fucking ugly for no reason. Make a bunch of a single just present good looking NPC in Fallout 76. I mean, there is a general feeling of ugliness to all of the characters, but I think that it, that transcends just how they physically look. Yeah. The major factions in every game. And in this one, we've got the United Colonies that represents the future Space Republic idealized. You also have the Freestar Collective, which is the Space Western fantasy. People of course, more concept <laughs> art, but... That represents I wanted to look at. the future of Space Republic idealized. You also have the. So he literally outright stated that this is the Firefly. Yeah. Um, inspired by Firefly. I'm just looking at like the skeletons on the wall. And uh, maybe that's the. Um, that's the wall they were talking about. 
Yeah, maybe that's like the the weird alien things. Mm -hmm. The the dog triceratops the, things. The dog velociraptors. Velociraptors. <laughs> um interesting picture. So, it looks like one this town looks like Windhelm, but um it also just seems like <laughs> Oh, this area is going to be like really small. So like Aquila is probably going to be like a really small town. But also like you guys really don't even have like anything from these areas to show off. No. Like at this stage of the game, they would at least have like models, right? Like, there should be some 3D models, maybe, like, a cool-looking asset you can throw up. Like, something. Please. Oof. Freestar Collective, which is... Does a fortified town make any sense in a world with artillery? Well, the thing is, like, the... Yeah, they're, they were at war with an entity, but the main thing they seem to deal with is, like, alien creatures like alien wildlife but which is what walls would help defend you against but you are right that like if they were at war with a space entity this settlement's over it's so jover is the space western fantasy people that are out there on the frontier we've got reagent industries which represents yep, we've seen this life. before we've seen I this think it before has hey it's the groundbreaker it's Cyberpunk 2077. Yeah, cyber, cyberpunk. The new, the next, as uh, Jason Schreier said, the next Cyberpunk. One of the best starts of of any of the factions. Yeah, it's, it's a, a mega a corp, and you have to you get hired, right? Like yeah, that you would do, right? <laughs> well, that's going in the nose. <laughs> Emma, just he just he. He's given us what we want. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Pagliarulo. <laughs> really have to thank you for just giving it to us. Just like, here you go. Don't even have to like, <laughs> don't even have to read into what he's saying. <laughs> Which represents corporate life. I think it has one of the best starts of, of any of the factions. Yeah, it's a, it's a mega a corp and you have to, you get hired, right? Like yeah, that you would do, right? We'll apply for our job. We'll right. see if you cut, cut the mustard. Right. Yeah, I love our... <laughs> <laughs> Press X to fill out your CV. <laughs> Approaching it that way where, okay, what makes the world feel whole? What are the groups that would make it feel whole and believable? And then how does the player interact with them? McDonald's. again. Is the job application for the Megacorp going to be the test from Fallout 3 again? You know, based on Fallout 76, it is probably <laughs> going to be a multiple choice test. Oh, God. No. <laughs> Please. Press X to steal breast milk from the company fridge. I mean, like, so the thing is, um, there is a joke in my Fallout 76 video available now on patreon.com slash patrician TV uh, that um, Steel Dawn and Steel Rain, the two Brotherhood of Steel expansions for Fallout 76, are just a retail job simulator. It's literally like the phases of. Um, being employed in retail as a seasonal employee, which ends with you getting fired. Um, and here they're just like flat out saying, yep, this is one of the factions in our game. Which I mean, like, on the one hand, like, fine, whatever, you get hired at a corporation, like, who gives a shit? But in the context of having played Fallout 76, to say it flat out is hilarious. Is this interview even real or just scripted? Who knows? It is probably scripted. 
you know, what we're doing with the, the pirates, the Crimson Fleet as well. They're not just this foe. Let the player join them. Make note. What does that mean? The cool thing about Crimson... Oh, stop. Make note, Pat. He was looking at Emma when he, said, when he was talking <laughs> about the Raiders. <laughs> <laughs> you can join the Raiders. Stares at Emma. <clears throat> you can become Meg in this game. You are the one who gets to recruit the quirky characters. They're absolutely going to be bandits again. Worse. <laughs> it's that Halo 3 cutscene where the floods show up and it's like, they're bandits. No, it's worse. <laughs> they're going to be the Raiders from Fallout 76. Who, by the way, the right. No, the, ra the writers forgot the name of the Raider gang. <laughs> they legitimately forgot what the name of the Raider gang was in the DLC. God, that was so weird because it's explicitly stated during Rose's questline. It was the diehards that left and the rest mm -hmm. of them all died. So it's like, no, these are the diehards who came back. No, they're the Raiders. All the Raiders you see in the later games are actually capital members R of this Raiders. gang. Capital so you have R Raiders, Raiders and then you have capital R Raiders. Mm -hmm. And the capital R Raiders are actually the breakfast club of misunderstood misfits. Yeah, they even have uh, anti- we hate the Brotherhood of Steel Club. Mm -hmm. That did not exist in the Wastelanders. Is this just going to be bitching about an unreleased game, or is this worth watching? Um, this is us watching the marketing material for a game that's not out yet, so, you know. Yes. Like... Oh no, how do you know it's shit? It's not even out yet. And it's like, I'm watching you squeeze it out onto my plate. Like, literally watch the marketing material and you can see that how bad this game is going to be. And Fleet, you know, what if you're good person and you want to be a good player and you don't want to play as a bad guy you can side with the pirates or what if you want to be somebody that i'm not writing about that's not possible <laughs> no the player has to do the shit that i write it, i love that emil is consistently make... blown away by the notion of players doing things that he doesn't predict they're gonna make paper airplanes come on now Like, it, it still bothers him. <laughs> or you can report back your superiors and be like basically space cop type of thing. So let you be a good person and still play with the bad guys. Want to so, play as a bad guy. Oh, so let the player join them. What does that mean? The cool thing about Crimson Fleet, you know, what if you're a good person and you want to be a good player and you don't want to play as a bad guy, you can side with the pirates or you can report back your superiors and be like basically space cop type of thing all right so here's how this quest plays out you are going to be uh in constellation as a faction and you are going to be sent out to investigate the crimson fleet and then you're going to meet the quirky leader of the raiders who is going to invite you to the faction and if you say no you go back to constellation so like you, you are the glowy mm -hmm. nice The fact that he refers to the factions as good guys and bad guys makes me ill to my stomach. Oh, yeah, no, that's like patently immoral. Isn't that just Dawnguard? Actually, that's a good point. What he's basically saying is Dawnguard. In terms of the layout, because I think he's unintentionally spoiling the quest for how you join this, the Crimson Fleet. Ah, it's only the first quest, you know? Mm-hmm. 
So it lets you be a good person and still play with the bad guys. I think that's really cool, too. Oh, you mean that... That's just Fallout 4, though. So, okay, so... It's Dawn Guard, but you can pretend to be a vampire. And then still, like, report back to Isran. So, exactly. really, it's just Fallout 4 where you're not asked to commit to any of the sides until the ending. Until the, the T-junction at the end. Mm-hmm. Cool. Literally four seconds since the last note. Um, <laughs> you aren't forced to faction commitments. Now remember, everyone, these are just predictions based off of what we're seeing. Mm -hmm. We are we just... We are just divining this information. We're not taking the developers, the literal words the developers are saying. Like, I like that that guy's mind was blown by the fact that we're doing this as though we haven't watched past Bethesda marketing material. We don't know the trends. Yeah. We don't know what these people do. We didn't but just play uh, their most recent game. Like, trust like, me, I'm fairly confident. Context. That's the context I keep thinking right now is mm -hmm. like Fallout 76. They don't want to admit it. They the last game that they've worked on is Fallout 4, apparently. Mm -hmm. But they that's the context that I'm using here. Because that game had a very strong focus on factional whatever. There's a lot of factions in that game. And that's the context that I keep coming back to. It's like that's how factions worked in that game. We will never own up to Fallout 76. Uh, how are we doing chat Is chat holding up I think the modding community is what makes or breaks the modern Bethesda game. We know the base main quest will be UG. Skyrim keeps getting new quest mods. Fallout 4 has fallen off hard. Uh, Generally, yes, but I think the fact that Fallout 4 has fallen off is kind of a red flag. I don't think it being a great modding platform is going to help Starfield. Yeah, I think you have to have like a a decent game to start with. I mean, the question, that is a really good question. Why did Fallout 4's modding scene fall off where Skyrim's did not? Is it just because, I mean, I think I think part of it just has to do with people who are more excited about, or modders anyway, are more excited about Elder Scrolls than they are about Fallout. Yeah, the Elder Scrolls community is just less degenerate than the Fallout community. Yeah. You got more creatives and stuff in there. I think fantasy itself voice, just lends voice itself protagonist. to modding. Voice yeah, voice protagonist. I feel like, thing. couldn't you just, like, yeah, but couldn't you just make it a feature of your mod that there's no voice protagonist and don't even bother? I really think it is just a case of, like, the community's differences. Because there is a really, there are huge differences between the Tez and Fallout communities. Yeah. I mean, you just look at the YouTubers and stuff. That's not true. It's roughly the same degeneracy. No, like I'm talking about like your core community, not just the perverts, because the perverts are the same no matter where you go. I'm talking your core community and what they'll justify. So the way I've been thinking about this, if I was to make a Fallout 3 in New Vegas video, how to explain this. And the best way I can explain it is if you tell a, an Elder Scrolls fan that their favorite game is kind of bad, they will say they'll do the Giga Chad pose and say, yes. Elder Scrolls fans know what's wrong with their favorite games and accept that that is the case. Fallout fans are in a perpetual state of war with uh, the other Fallout fans about the different games. And so, like, um, I'm literally surprised that people haven't been killed in arguments between Fallout fans. <laughs> Whereas, like, Fallout fans will be like, no, you can't say Fallout 3 is bad, and then they'll write, like, a whole essay about it. With, like, Oblivion, they'll be like, the dungeons are boring. Yes! And so, like, 
the Tez community is very, um, very calm compared to Fallout. It seems like no matter what story we write, the one the players tell themselves is the one that they think about and love the most, and the companions. My fucking god. I, I feel like at that point, that's just them giving up. It doesn't matter what? what we write. All that matters is what the player writes. Oh, and the companions. I feel like they're basically admit because this is a thing that seems to be recurrent for me is a game will have a horribly awful story, but people will rationalize it by saying, oh, but the companions were good. Um, yeah, it's true of of Divinity Original Sin 2. It's true of um, the Outer Worlds. Those are the two ones that are coming to mind right now, but I'm sure like pretty much Mass every Effect RPG. Too. Yeah, our Mass Effect. Uh, you know, if Mass Effect 3 wasn't very good, but the story of the companions is really what the fans were there for. It's easier to write a character with some melodrama thrown in and everything because it's a lot more relatable than it is to make a story with like really set themes and, you know, a, a plot that actually goes somewhere. But it's funny, too, because, like, Bethesda has it relatively easy when it comes to writing in their games. All you got to do is just write stories and quests that just have you explore the world. Like, look at Morrowind. And how the factions and stuff were handled in that. That's all you really got to do. I hate to say it. I, I It feels the way they're presenting it as defeated. Like, um, they're not eager about realizing this about themselves that that's what they're good at they feel disappointed that they haven't been able to write a good story and so they're just yeah. meekly accepting that like well i guess we just we're just going to present a world and we're going to try to write good companions which like, makes it funnier that the only one they want to show off is the fucking dog i mean the robot <laughs> the robot <laughs> the dog oh my god it is dog meat no, no, no. We we established it was Codsworth. It's it's a mix of Codsworth and dog Codsworth meat. And dog meat, yeah. Can I dress up the robot companion to like funny in like funny little outfits and? Yeah, everything? can I give it funny hats? Yeah. <laughs> can I give it a bandana to wear? Oh, Dogsworth. <laughs> there you go, chat. It really does sound like they're defeated. We, you know, we tried, we tried, and we tried to make something that would be held to the steam, like accolades. The great as, American uh, novel, Last of Us, and uh, God of War, and just, people don't appreciate our writing, so fuck it. In Lex Friedman's interview with Todd Howard, my main takeaway was that Bethesda's MO is to just make games that stroke the egos of their players. He says the primary emotion games evoke is pride. Yeah, that makes Whoa. a lot of sense with uh, with how they write their games. There's a quote. But how do you explain Fallout seventy six then? Because <laughs> talk about talk about a game that just that Puts busts you your yeah that just busts your balls. <laughs> it ties it ties your balls off, spreads your legs, and smashes them with a sledgehammer. What the fuck makes you so special, huh? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Please like, get your vaccine. Multiple multiple moments where it will give you <laughs> options to invoke all of the quests you've completed, and then will just deny all of your responses. Well, allow me to throw one of the many accolades by Azora, by Azora, by Azora. Just imagine every character being the prophet. You can be proud of how much damage your balls can take. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. The thing is, like, um, Fallout 76 is the the high-impact cock-and-ball torture of uh, Bethesda games. And it's crazy, too, because, like, the main story gives you, like, that's some... Pr like, when, when you come down to it, that's, like, having access to a nuclear arsenal is kind of, like, the most powerful thing you can have. No, I like, in, I literally like, say, 
it is like the fallout 76 protagonist is literally one of the most amazing characters that they've <laughs> written in terms of what they establish you are capable of doing like i'm talking able to fight the dragonborn levels of uh like the dragonborn is absurdly op in terms of their elder scrolls protagonists um fallout 76 is like on that level right and then they wrote the the follow up stories where they had to put that that they had to put it back into the box. Yeah. They had to wind down what all they had established that the player was capable of. And so what in what the end result is you finish the launch story and then it's just sledgehammer after sledgehammer to the balls. <laughs> Like, if Fallout 3 and 4 didn't exist, you would assume that the conclusion of Fallout 76 is that the main character starts their own country. That's literally where the story takes you. And then, by the end of Steel Rain, you're a temp retail worker getting laid off because the mm -hmm. holiday season is over. <laughs> It's such a lowering of uh, pride. <laughs> so it's hilarious that they said that. That was, Man, that was a tangent due to a super chat. Hello, Captain. How may I be of assistance? How do you decree what is canon in a pseudo MMO game such as 76? Well, that's the interesting thing about Fallout 76 is that it doesn't really act like um an MMO in that sense. It's very much written like a single player Fallout game where you're the you're the sole survivor. And then everybody else is special, which if that was the premise, it would be fine, but um that's not really what they do. And so it's very very confusing kind of genre identity that Fallout 76 has. But the thing is, it's storytelling is just a single player story. I'm not like I'm not intuiting information from events. It's literally like a stip a typical Bethesda game minus a couple elements. Thanks. Hello, Claptrap. So something we really, you know, leaned into on this game, how those other characters felt about you. That's probably my favorite part. Like when you're exploring and then your companion makes some comment off the cuff about something that no. you're checking out or something. No. No, quippy dialogue. That's the, that's the only way I can read something. That, that's not what they're saying, but that's the only way I can hear it because that's usually how that manifests. So Bethesda's big realization with this game is that the companions should actually have opinions of the player and like leave if they don't like you. They did that in Fallout 4, right? Yeah, I feel like Fallout 4 does that a bit. Blue, I, you, you lock picked, you hacked too many terminals. I find this detestable. I am leaving now. I feel like all this is setting up is that there's going to be whippy dialogue, and I the only companion I'm going to use is the robot because he doesn't fucking sass me every time I do repetitive actions. <laughs> is this, did they, is, is that why? Are they retooling all the companion dialogue now? Did they see what happened to um what was it Forsaken or whatever? Oh yeah, Forspoken. Yeah, Forspoken and they're yeah, like, okay. Fuck Ooh. Shit. Yeah, the game was full of like Marvel <laughs> Cinematic Universe tier dialogue. And then like they saw they see what's happening where gamers are starting to really fucking hate that. Yeah. And they have they have to like figure out how to cut 90% of it. That would be good. Well, you know it, well, if we can just our our bottom is Lydia from Skyrim, right? Mm -hmm. Like, even I'm if we removed to everybody's dialogue, and we just gave them generic dialogue, that as long as it's still like at the level of Lydia or better, we're good. We're mm -hmm. good. I'm tired of the wasting the player's time is funny meme. Yeah, I'm. Let I'm me just... tell you about Fallout seventy six. Yes. <laughs> yeah, what was the quote? Ninety percent of the game is downtime. Yeah. <laughs> the one quest is literally waiting online at the DMV for 15 minutes. 
unironically. When will the games implement the Big Bang Theory laugh track for joke delivery? I feel like that is a quality mod addition that somebody could do for one of these games that has just awful, like, cringy clip dialogue. <laughs> is this a secret shill stream for the Patreon? I didn't know it was a secret. I'm, like, literally, we're streaming. We're both streaming twice this week so that the main message is go to the Patreon and watch our Fallout 76 video. Literally, they're trying to replicate Parvati from the Outer Worlds. She's not even the quippiest one. Ugh. It's like every step, every step is downwards. There's nothing that they've said that's really instilled confidence in me. Because I'm looking at it and it's like... They're not showing off gameplay. They're just showing off concept art. So yes. something's fucked behind that's, the scenes. And that's the subtext for this entire thing is like this marketing push came out after they announced the release date and everything. And like that's they still are afraid of showing anything. So with that in mind, here is all this stuff. We're talking about all this. And so it's like all, all I can do is let my imagination run and once again, go back to Fallout 76 and Fallout 4 and Skyrim and be like, okay, mm -hmm. what elements from those games are going to inform Starfield? And it's not looking good. Yeah, this is not, this is not, this is not it, Bethesda. This is uh, extremely worrying. <laughs> The only thing that's made me confident is, oh, yeah, there's going to be another good Inanzur soundtrack, <laughs> which we already knew that. We already knew that they were going to make a good music because, like I said, it would be a death knell for the company if they made a game without a good soundtrack. Was this before or after they announced a delay? This is before. But I feel like, I don't know. They must have, like, had all of this marketing stuff set up in advance. And maybe that's mm -hmm. why it's so awkward is everybody who is in this room that comes into this room knows that the game is going to be delayed. And so, like, they know that they're peddling bullshit, but it's, like, all contractually pre-planned and what have you. June 11th is going to be very interesting. Does a good soundtrack make up for a bad story? No, because you don't have to buy the game to hear the soundtrack. You can just listen to it on YouTube. It just feels so perfect for immersion. It's so believable. You think it's, it's a real person. So, you know, we knew we wanted to do some kind of persuasion minigame thing. There it is. Oh, my God. He's like... <laughs> He looks like he's in disbelief that Emil is like saying this right now. Like he he looks like persuasion mini game. Really? Does it have to be a persuasion mini game? We wanted persuasion pie back. All right, boys, we're getting persuasion pie back. <laughs> and then Will Shen's like, dude, are you fucking for real? Like literally watch Will Shen's face when he when Emil says this. It just feels so perfect for immersion. It's so believable. You think it's it's a real person. So you know, we knew we wanted to do some kind of persuasion mini game thing. Yeah, we sat down. <laughs> He's like thinking of some way to try and like spin yeah. this away from the like to try and do this so that they can cut out that sentence. <laughs> He's like, oh, no, please, Emil. Just please stick to the script. Down and it was funny. We didn't start with let's do an evolution of let's look back at the, the old Oblivion system. But there oh, are no. a couple of uh, beats there. <laughs> no. You have to think about what's my risk here. At least they got really <laughs> good Oblivion footage, but holy shit. Right. Which one do I want to choose? We didn't want it to be a system Okay, so whoever made this, do you think they had to look for, they had to look really hard in Oblivion for a dialogue that they could fail if they didn't have the a uh, high enough disposition? Because I feel like it's not that many. 
it yeah it's pretty rare they checked the uesp before why didn't they show the mini game when referencing it they didn't even show the mini game <laughs> they showed a dialogue check failing because of disposition low disposition but they didn't show the actual mini game because i feel like they're trying to dance around the fact that they're talking about persuasion pie which it's like persuasion pie isn't even that fucking bad <clears throat> I like. I think it's ex very overrated to hate it. I don't think it's good, but I don't think that like it's the worst system ever. The only gameplay in all of these videos so far is fucking Oblivion <laughs> gameplay. <laughs> <laughs> we could show that. We can't show. Uh, we can't show Starfield. <laughs> Might have to make note of that. Yeah. <laughs> more oblivion gameplay than starfield we are so back oblivion bros yeah that's the hardcore rpg tier that they're going to is oblivion where where there was definitely the right thing to say it feels like you're having a conversation where you're actually trying to persuade somebody of something um, so it's actually, I think it's, as far as new systems. I feel like there's not a way that you can mini make a mini game out of that idea of persuading somebody. I feel like it's just written dialogue and responses and what have you. Isn't that how sociopaths see conversations? <laughs> this is how Todd Soward sees convincing somebody as, as a <laughs> mini game. <laughs> okay, so maybe Emma wasn't at, stepping out of line by saying that because they have a lot of stuff to talk about yeah. with this. It's just, it was William, just a funny William, clip. yeah. William Will Shen still looked like he was in horror. He he looked like he took some man. He he took some psychic damage there. <clears throat> that brings up a thought. How many Skyrim videos was there before there was actual footage of gameplay? So. Most of the Skyrim marketing was they did some they did some podcasts they did the Bethesda podcast so they didn't show off too much gameplay the main thing of gameplay they showed off was a very highly selected uh like vertical slice that is uh the Standing Stones after Helgen to uh the Milmolnir fight like that's the vertical slice they showed and they skipped White Run in that process um. I, there was, no, that's the vertical, like, that's pretty much the extent of gameplay that I remember them showing off for Skyrim, but yeah. you do have to bear in mind that Skyrim was only marketed for a year. Um, yeah, it didn't, it didn't miss its launch date or anything like that. Yeah, whereas we're on, like, year five of Starfield marketing. <laughs> And plus, I wouldn't consider Skyrim's level of marketing to be a good thing because Skyrim was very, they were very, very coy with the information that they would release about that game. Yeah. You don't want them releasing that little information about the <clears throat> game in advance. You want them to have more information out there. I always liked Rockstar's uh, releases, like what they did for Red Dead, uh, Red Dead 2, where it was just like, here's genuine gameplay, like five to ten minutes of gameplay, and we're just going to narrate what's going on. This game's been a thing for five years and no gameplay has been shown. I want to say at this point, there's about half an hour of gameplay out there. Yeah. Well, we're going to be watching uh, that. So. Yeah, probably not tonight because we're at hour four. So I'm thinking we're going to finish these um, into the Starfield documentaries, like mini docs, and mm -hmm. then um, we're going to leave what we haven't done up for Thursday. Because I'm, I'm trying not to stream eight hours a day because I have to be on your stream tomorrow. Yeah.
in dialogue. I think it's, it's definitely one of the most successful ones that we've had. Yeah. I think when we knew we were making a game about space, you ask yourself certain questions, and that question is, what is out there? And so, as a game, we have romance, adventure, mystery, but I think mm. with Starfield, there's this other- No, please, no romance. <laughs> First thing he goes for, too. Yamate, stop. <laughs> First thing Emil goes for is <laughs> romance. No, thank you. I could actually do with more games that are written completely sexless. Yeah. No more Serranos, please. You're not going to land my type anyways. Yeah. <laughs> The best romances were the ones in Fallout 76, which you can hear about over at patreon.com slash TV or patreon.com slash private sessions. Where you get flirt it. options. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. Flirt with Paladin Romani. <laughs> Paladin R Romani, the more neurotic Delphine. <laughs> of, you know, the cosmos and the universe and what is out there. At the end of it, we want the players to have told their own how is Todd Howard so photogenic? <laughs> for like Todd Howard, like he's known for making appearances, but he doesn't actually appear that often. So the fact that he's so skilled at doing this is just insane. Natural charisma. Would start no, like well, literally Todd Howard is like maxed out charisma. Well, remember when he was in like was it like high school and stuff, he was like the head of four different clubs at the same time or something. Yeah, shit. and he said like he just he would just go to Bethesda and say, I'm gonna work for you and eventually got a job and took over within a couple yeah. years. <laughs> he's he he's too fucking overpowered. I really think he sold himself short. Yeah, Todd, How uh, Todd Howard is a Hall of Famer, but yeah. He literally could have he could have been the better Elon Musk. Like he saw like you put the two of them together on the same stage and it's like what what separates these two? Yeah, it's like these guys they're kind of a mix of awkwardness and then you just see Todd Howard and he's perfect. Yeah. Like look at how he just nails communication. I feel there's this other layer of, you know, the cosmos and the universe and what is out there at the end of it we want the players to have told their own journey but then look back at it and we're asking the big questions why are we all here where is it leading and what's next for humanity look at how beautiful like he, the thing is you can <laughs> tell he was stumbling but he didn't let it show you have to really yeah. pay attention to notice when Todd Howard is having to think up the next thing he's going to say. But somehow he made it flow to be this admittedly pointless statement. But start your journey to Jay. Become a Discord kitten on, on Constellation. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What a clip. <laughs> made for Wanderers. Who would have thought? That was going to be the banger. Yeah, I know. The the most generic one, I was like, there's no way there's anything useful is going to be yeah. in this one. It sounds like filler. And then, bam. They just smoked us with banger after banger of lines. Uh, I should mention today, while we have the time here, the ESRB rating for Starfield was... Uh, released <laughs> have you got the chance to read it uh i only saw i got an m rating all right i'm gonna send you the esrb rating and i'd like you to read it out loud for us okay miss brown all right rating summary this is an open world role-playing game in which players assume the role of a minor uh of a, of a miner tasked with finding artifacts across the galaxy. From first slash third person perspectives, players interact with various characters, complete quests, and search for supplies while battling enemies. Example, humans, robots, alien creatures. Players use futuristic guns, lasers, axes, and explosives to axes. kill enemies. 
They draw special Axe? notice to yeah, Axe as the, Ax, the legacy of the Axe Man continues. Combat <coughs> is fast paced with frequent gunfire, cries of pain, and explosions. Attacks on some enemies can result in blood splatter effects. Several environments depict blood stains on the ground around corpses. The game contains some suggestive material in the dialogue, and after sharing a bed with characters, example, life is a life is a sexually transmitted disease. I can oh, hear I your ba brain break at that line. <laughs> okay. Please read the full line. <laughs> That's not that wasn't even the complete line. <laughs> <clears throat> example life is a sexually transmitted disease that's a hundred percent oh no i'm wait what is that fatal colon or uh, semicolon and then yeah, the next semi line starts open yeah. it's a it's a different line i'm all for getting a little wild oh okay this is this is dialogue from the game itself okay I'm all for getting a little wild, but next time, let's try it without the jetpacks. And here's another one. Talk about seeing stars. Whew, that was amazing. A fictional drug, or uh, Aurora, is prominent in the game, with a section involving players as, players as characters working in an illicit drug lab. Oh, God. No, these are examples the ESRB uses, but that means that they are from the game. Yeah. Players can also obtain Aurora by stealing or buying it from vendors. Nice. Consuming Scuba. Aurora results in a distortion effect on the screen. The words F asterisk asterisk K and bullshit asterisk T appear in the game. Uh, and the best part, uh, below the oh. rating, uh, below the M plus, can you read that line? Oh my! Oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> In game purchases, PC, Xbox Series. So, uh, yeah. So, so it's it's got its M seventeen rating from uh, blood, strong language, suggestive the su suggestive themes, and use of drugs. Oh, and violence, of course. Yeah. So, in game purchases. Oh. <laughs> oh no. Creation Club right from the start, baby. Oh, no. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the new news that people are uh, interacting with. with the Because that was Oof. yesterday, I think, that that came out. Oof. Oof. You see, if we knew more about the game at this point, <laughs> that would be able to fly under the radar a little bit better. But because we still know literally nothing about this fucking game. Yeah, that's like literally the only news about Starfield for the past month, other than that the direct is going to happen on the 11th. Yeah. And it's some very so, cringy sex dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> so the news was games getting delayed, going to do the direct in uh, June, and ESRB rating. That's, you'll love, that's you'll love that's to see it. Known. But if they've got an ESRB writing, that's a good sign. They're not going to delay it. Or if it, there is going to be a delay, it's at most going to be like a couple a weeks couple to months. like a month yeah. or two. Yeah, yeah. So, how we feel in chat? Was that great or what? Oh, oh, that just... Stinged a little bit, didn't it? One line. Just one line <laughs> there. Three words. Three words, and I feel like I just got kicked in the chest. The sledgehammer falls, and the balls get crushed. God damn. In-game purchases. No, it, from listen. Out it's, of the gate. It wasn't just Bethesda Austin that wrote like that. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. That dialogue? That dialogue was written by the people at Bethesda Austin. Yeah. <laughs> they they gave them the sex scenes. That was scenes. their contribution. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for reading that on stream. You saved me from watching some shitty 20-minute clickbait video. That's the thing. That's the fucking news about this game. Is yeah. that is that it has cringy sex dialogue. Um other and in app yeah, purchases, but that could mean anything. That could be like DLC. 
it probably is more than DLC, but like it doesn't mean anything I don't right now. Yeah, I don't think that it would be listed as if it was DLC. I don't think it would be listed right there. Why is that being listed? What? Where is this even from? Is this just the ESRB's website? I guess. Because then, why does it have like retailers? I think, I think that's where the physical copies are being sold in the United States. Hmm. No FYE. I don't think that's an. I don't think that's an exhaustive list there. ESRB Starfield. I know that this is going to be cancer, but okay. <laughs> Oh no, you go straight. Yeah, it's straight from their website. Hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. Not a not a good time in house Microsoft. Microsoft's having a tough time, okay? They're taking it from all directions, including yeah. the UK. <laughs> I think the one thing people underestimate about video games is that someone needs to microanalyze the uh, books that are on the Bethesda bookshelf. <laughs> so you got the word wall. They went out of their way to turn off the lights so that this part <clears throat> wouldn't be in focus, but this part is still lit up. Yeah. There's a really imbalanced kind of framing to what's going on here. Yeah, it's. If because so generally you read a frame from left to right, yeah, and it feels like like I'm looking at this and I get the idea that Bethesda's going into darkness. Yes, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm like looking at the visual language and it's like so it's just the descent then and like it, with the dra <laughs> the dragons are burning everything down. That's the yeah. particular part of Alduin's wall that they decided to frame <laughs> with the logo was the the apocalyptic part of uh, Alduin's wall. Like, couldn't they shift this display over about five <laughs> feet so that it could be on the center of Alduin's wall? How much? Oh, my God. R remember, this game has a huge marketing budget. You can mm -hmm. tell. So, like, the people that they have working on this, these are people who are making, like, six figures, right? Yeah. They would know. I'm just some jackass who, like self-taught this shit, so that, like, self-learned this <laughs> shit so that I could do, like, stupid videos on YouTube. And even I can tell you this this frame looks really ominous. Yeah. I guess we're gonna mark that down. Ominous <laughs> ominous framing symbolizing the downfall of Bethesda. The endless pursuit. Episode one. And this is, this is their opening yeah. shot too. <laughs> oh, the opening shot of this little <laughs> documentary series, most of which we've seen and almost like the, everything we've gleaned from it has given us a bad impression. <laughs> Truly. <laughs> I think the one thing people so i think we're going to get to the gameplay reveal to on thursday we mm -hmm. do have a lot to get through i am but that's kind of the thing is that i'm fairly comprehensive in what all i look at so like yeah we spent hours looking at at stuff at stuff that, that that's how say anything <laughs> that, that's how the research goes you know i don't know what's in the tin until i look at it because it would be pointless for me to watch it and then like that's the whole point of the stream <laughs> is that i am seeing it and we're doing this without there even being any Starfield videos in the rotation. Like, you guys missed the Skyrim stream series where we were watching Skyrim videos between marketing uh, bits. Mathematical yes. dynamics of liquid rocket fuel. Navigating Starfields. <laughs> oh, no. So, we where did, did these books come guys. from? People underestimate about video games is that people think it's just playtime but i always say that the one thing video games can give you that nothing else in entertainment can is that feeling of pride yeah, okay wonder... so there's the quote so that's like the main line that todd howard is apparently using for marketing this game todd howard i wonder if they talk to uh braben from frontier developments um because like that dude he's he's like the lead um he's like the studio head i think of frontier Mm. and uh who made elite dangerous and he's like reportedly a really really fucking big like astronomy nerd like dude understands like astrophysics and stuff like that if i was making a game like like making a game like starfield he would be one of the first people that i'd be calling up and being like hey 
you got anything for us? Like, I would just love to sit down and chat with well, you. Well, listen, they went to SpaceX to look at how <clears throat> rocket ships are designed. Like, do you have some books that I should read or something like that? Yeah. There's a reason, like, Elite Dangerous, their game engine is, like, meticulous when it comes to, uh, like, physics and the how they proc gen their planets and okay. stuff. Okay. So I'm noticing something about this shot now. You see the uh, the cereal bin in the middle of the table, how it's kind of, like, yeah. locked into there? So that is something that would make a lot of sense on a spaceship. Everything needs to be have a place that it can lock mm -hmm. into so that everything's compartmentalized. Because if you do a barrel roll, you're just going to have everything fly around. I wonder if they actually got onto real ships in real life. Because you see that you mm -hmm. see that too on like ocean liners and stuff. Everything can be like strapped down if you hit some uh, heavy, heavy waters. One of the coolest world building shots in Firefly is Captain Reynolds using the restroom because you see how bathrooms on the Firefly work, where it's like it's this fold out urinal that um, is in the like it's it's weird that Bethesda's trying to go the hard sci fi route. Yeah. I re like nobody would have knocked them for just doing like the fantasy sci-fi i know uh, they said it too like i think uh, todd said it in one of the um one of his like awkward interviews with the community manager where he was saying like they're trying to go for something that's like a mix between hard sci-fi and like fantasy sci-fi mm -hmm. um but yeah like their design language feels very grounded and hard so yeah i don't know it's weird. I'm getting weird vibes from Starfield's just design. Like it's an eclectic mix. Here and yeah. look, mind you, we're talking about this. We've already seen this. Like they're not do they're not showing us anything new. This is literally a trailer that we saw like right at the start. Yeah. <laughs> so this they're not showing us new gameplay. This is which they do this in their marketing a lot. They'll show trailers and stuff. So right, look what I did. And even though we want to make a game that is very big and is very long, you can play for all of those years, it's all the paths you didn't take that make it special to you. That's basically the culmination of that one YouTube video that's, I've played Skyrim for 10 years and I didn't know you, did, you could do this. I don't think anything would fly around mid barrel roll because the artificial gravity would pull it down no matter what angle they're on. Um what? Like a nurse is still a thing even if there's artificial gravity. That you feel like when you finish that quest, that you feel that you accomplished something that week. The people who love video games can always say, like, you know, what'd you do today? save the world if you say that if like your girlfriend asks you what you did today and you cite something that you did in a video game <laughs> please turn off the console and go yeah. outside please touch grass Well, like, even in Star Trek, when they get hit by a torpedo, it still, like, rocks the ship and sends people flying. So, like... And and that's, like, the... Star Trek has, like, magic technology. So then you get into, like, harder science fiction shows, and it's, like, almost all of them have, like, meticulous detail put into explaining how stuff is compartmentalized so that when something happens your fucking can of baked beans doesn't go flying off the shelf and go bean somebody in the back of the head. Yeah, th so that's, like, one of the reasons a lot, like, um, one of the things that people don't like about sci-fi is, like, fantasy, you can kind of explain it. You don't have to explain that stuff, but, like, in science fiction, you have to at least lampshade, you know, like, how you're getting around and everything, and people, like, especially writers and stuff, they'll, they'll complain that science fiction feels more restrictive because you have to set that stuff up. You have to make those explanations. So this isn't nitpicking in the if if that's if the Bethesda arena to make they a stepped science into. Fiction universe, they're going to have to be held to the standards of science fiction fiction. 
Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, they're showing a little bit of attention to detail to it, but... I mean, we won't know until... Like, that's something that you will not know until you actually play the game. They're not going to focus on that in mm -hmm. pre-production. It could, it could easily be the same mistake they did with Fallout, where they jumped into doing post-apocalypse, but didn't really <laughs> want to pay any of the, like, tropes of the genre they're due. Yeah. So it's like, um, you can't just genre switch like Bethesda does and not take extra steps to make sure that you are actually giving those respect to the genre because um, fantasy nerds and science fiction nerds have very different standards for what they want. Yeah. Bethesda's approach to uh, like acknowledging other um, science fiction and stuff is coming up with a lot like coming up with a name like a unique name for a quest for a side quest so like in fallout 3 half the half the side quest names are just uh references to like classic science fiction films and shows the expanse is probably the hardest sci-fi universe that people have heard of yeah that's probably the case i've heard the expanse is very meticulous on kind of paying attention to those little details mm-hmm We've been incredibly lucky to work with such a tight group of people for so long. Like, we're all friends. Hey, Matt. You still drawing meat? It's like a second family in a way. We all sort of know or get what a Bethesda game is. There's definitely this core group who's been working together for decades and knows how to make a BGS game. And then there's this, you know, new generation of game developers who are coming in and working at BGS who grew up on those games those people made. For some people, those... Dude, okay, that narrative was the case in, with fucking Morrowind and Douglas Goodall. Douglas Goodall was a Daggerfall fan who joined Bethesda because they wanted to make the sequel to Daggerfall and was extremely disappointed at the direction <laughs> that Bethesda had gone in with Morrowind. With Morrowind, he was disappointed. <laughs> so don't feed me this bullshit that like, oh, kids, they grew up playing Arena and now they work at Bethesda. No, they probably grew up playing Oblivion and now work at Bethesda. Those are the games that got them to go into the industry in the first place and what i love about oh yeah no new gameplay for starfield we've got <laughs> arena gameplay that is those people come in and they love the worlds too and they want that's to more accurate the there we go there you go this is what the Beth this is what the new but the new generation of bethesda devs have played yeah girls that they grew up on and so we're still able to maintain what a BGS game is, but continue to evolve. I what think is a BGS game? What is a BGS game? Define it for me, please. I, I really don't know. <laughs> How long people are going to play it? You look at Skyrim, we're sitting here 10 years later, and it keeps having this life, and it changes how you want to... We just you... don't know why people keep playing Skyrim. <laughs> that's, literally what what, fuck? that's literally what I was going to ask is Todd Howard <laughs> ruminating on why the fuck people still play Skyrim. Todd Howard sitting in his office having an existential crisis realizing that Skyrim has more legs than all the other games they've released. For, for no discernible reason. he doesn't know why. Yeah. And really the reason is that like Skyrim is the ultimate in guilty comfort food. Yeah, <laughs> like Oblivion, Fallout Three, and Fallout Four are just a little too uncom uncomfortable to be the perfect comfort food. Skyrim is so greasy; it'll just <laughs> it'll slide down your throat with very little resistance. It has, yeah, and it's it has it's a so very, yeah. fattening, and you're such a degenerate as you binge play the entirety <laughs> of Skyrim in a week, and then you get done with Skyrim, and you're like, Jesus, what have I done with my life? Why is Private Sessions still playing Skyrim? Um, money. I have two more videos to make. But yeah, that's the appeal of Skyrim is that like it's unintelligent. It's just comfort food. It's just that perfect that it's the perfect formula to uh, turn your brain off. 11 p.m. Qu Quesarito, the game. 
create something. Yeah, I feel like our games sort of have two lives, right? Like, we create this game, and we put everything we can possibly put into it, tell the stories we want to tell, and build this world that's sort of a setup that when we hand it off to the players, they play it, but then... Oh my... No! What? No! <laughs> Don't do this to yourself. <laughs> Is that a Creation Club helmet? Yeah. That was the um, Golden Saints helmet. Uh, I was uh, like, I was like, wait a second. What is that helmet? Oh, no. Dwarven horse. <laughs> you did. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Right? Yeah, this was still made in their in their phase where they thought the AE was going to be the big thing. So. <laughs> oh, I'm sure Oof. it's sold. Oh, I'm, I'm sure it's sold. I'm I'm kind of mixed on it. It I'm sure it made a profit. I don't know if it if it's like a crazy sales factor. If it's just going to be another Skyrim VR where it's just going to be one more thing that Bethesda did that made a little bit of money and then they abandon. They like intellectually abandon. It'll like, make money off of it, it's gonna see it's it's an investment. It's gonna make money off of incremental sales. Like the how they've decade. they've they've literally referenced every game that Bethesda's made other than Fallout seventy six. It's it's incredible. Or they haven't. <laughs> I guess they haven't really mentioned like Red Guard and Battle Spire either. You know Give the the old the original Fallout seventy sixes of their day. <laughs> when are they gonna mention Fallout shelters? I know that's another thing that they worked on that they that um is getting is slowly getting memory hold to the point that like oh no Bethesda didn't make that they outsourced that and it's like no Bethesda made Fallout Shelter which is funny too because like people praised it at the time and Bethesda was pretty proud of it for a time Blades Legends yeah I still can't believe they showed Arena I know it's weird that they showed Arena and that example because it's not even applicable yeah but the fact that they're showing Creation Club in their praise of Skyrim is just... It's just moi from the guy who made the 20-hour Skyrim video that has the most CC coverage in it. It's beautiful. We hand it off to the players. They play it. Look at how badly it clashes with Skyrim. Look at how horrifically and immediately out of place this, this model is. Fuck me. <laughs> I'm so... Look at how Skyrim... out of place this is. It's just slightly the wrong color. This has to be, this has to be like console footage. I don't remember Skyrim looking this ugly. This definitely doesn't have the high-res texture pack. Yeah. But Skyrim is... like If you pay attention to the, de the details and really look at Skyrim, it is pretty ugly. <laughs> it's kind of a glaze it like that's what i'm talking about with it being comfort food is it's a game where you glaze your eyes <laughs> and kind of just get the form of what's going on you're moving too fast to really stop and look mm -hmm. you know you're just running through those dungeons take it and make it their own they tell their own stories and then they okay hold on what 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 was that? All the stories we want to tell and <laughs> this world that's sort of a setup that when being derailed by Skyrim player, here by Skyrim B roll. Take it and make it their own. Okay, this is Helgen. I was like, is this the fucking Western uh, Watchtower that they've okay. modded Alduin into being in? <laughs> yeah, that's. A... I'm glad I'm not the only one who thought it was the Western Watchtower. I I don't know if this guy's up here. I've never looked up there. Maybe he's the guy that Alduin grabs. They tell their own stories, and then they... You can see the arrow bounce off him. <laughs> that, that's nice. Make their own stories with our tools. I think it's a hallmark of our games that... Why? Uh, it's <laughs> so out of place. <laughs> like, Vanilla Skyrim. At least Skyrim, he doesn't have the um, elemental Skyrim. archers. Oh, oh, yeah. That would be perfect if he had the fire arrows. How does he even get the elytra? So he's wearing like fur armor, right? Yeah, and he's got the so, elytra. Yeah, like no fucking shot. He did not do like a level 15 quest in fur armor. It's just the little things about this. It makes <laughs> you wonder like if the person who made this is like 
rebelling against Bethesda, and it's like, yeah, this is bullshit. <laughs> The balls on Bethesda, man. I'm telling you. You know, you play it, and my experience is going to be different than yours. I'm going to come in and tell you a funny story about something that happened to me. And you may never have seen that because it's just a confluence of events. And I think that helps with the longevity, and it helps with that feeling. Do you think this is reused B-roll from Anniversary Edition editing, or if they went out specifically for CC content footage? It, it doesn't look like something I've seen before, but... I didn't watch that much about the Creation Club marketing, so... Yeah, it, it could be just leftover B-roll. The stuff that didn't get used originally, yeah. But it's still crazy to me that they're, like, passing off Creation Club. No, there's no way that they don't have enough vanilla Skyrim stuff to show that they had to fall back on the Creation Club B-roll. Feeling. Well, you know, it it was it was on another hard drive, like the, the the original promo stuff was on another hard drive. This is still there. There's, you know, they seem really proud of it. Are they really that ignorant? This is it <clears throat> feels very scripted, and so this was probably done at a time when anniversary edition was um still being supported by the company. Yeah, Community I think. I think it's intentional that they're using the Creation Club stuff. I think it's subtle marketing. Yeah, I think it. There's definitely it's, there's like nothing's an accident when they make this this kind of stuff. Yeah, we're not. You got to remember the people who are making these things are getting paid six figures. Yeah, we're so. not talking about lazy YouTube videos by people who get paid like nine hundred dollars a month on Patreon. Okay, yeah. this so is it. Like this thing probably passed like at least ten or fifteen people's desks before it finally got. There released. was probably a version that just had generic Skyrim footage, and somebody said, "You need to go back and get some CC footage to slip into these cuts." Yeah. There was probably like an email chain about including CC stuff. Like honestly, if I was working there, that that would be. I would tell them, be like, "Listen, we have anniversary edition." put the fucking footage in there why yeah. are you gonna waste time why are you gonna waste like precious marketing time to not market something yeah it is a world that you get transported to that you can really make your own and this that's footage where, looks you know, good for me the magic is you know to do it for two decades and close to that for so much of our group there's a big trust there that we know how we solve certain things together we were doing more when cut it Cut his mic, cut his mic. So we've got, this no, is the first, no, I just, love this. Just cut the shit, cut the shit. Yeah. If it's not working, cut it out. I liked it. Oh my God. Okay, so Todd <laughs> Howard has to be the one to bring up Morrowind. Consistent. Todd Howard is always the one that brings up Morrowind. Nobody Morrowind. else at Bethesda does. Um, They've got like a, a tube TV filter on. So the edges are rounded and then they've got the... um. Kind of the what is it the interlacing effect where yeah, yeah. there's like blank pixels between them to like save on um how many pixels you have to render did the arena okay we're at 306 i'm gonna look for the arena clip yeah the arena had like these crazy filters on it too yeah i'm pretty sure arena had the same filter okay yeah see it's got a slightly different filter but yeah They must be proud of Morrowind Xbox. He's the only person that worked on Morrowind left at the company. No, there's other people. There's other Morrowind vets that are still there. Especially if you count the people who joined during Tribunal and Blood Moon. Like, Emil joined during Blood Moon. Like, that might be crazy to think, but yeah, Emil worked on Blood Moon. There. We were doing Morrowind. And looking at what we might do after that and beyond that. And we, we had a list of what are the other types of worlds we want to go to. And obviously Fallout was at the top of the list, you know. No, it wasn't. No footage of, no footage of Fallout because uh, yeah, we couldn't get the game to run. It's fucking ugly and we couldn't get it to run. That's actually why <laughs> they fixed it because they were trying to do the documentary and they finally realized <laughs> it was broken. Hey um, guys, do you realize you can't get Fallout 3 to run on PC on Windows 10? And the, the concept art looks better than the game footage. Yeah.
Plus, it's like they were going to make I thought the story was that they were going to make a post apocalypse thing and they just kind of fell into making a Fallout game. There's no yeah. way that they were they were working on Morrowind and thinking about making fucking Fallout 3. Are you crazy? When Morrowind came out, Interplay was still doing Fallout or still wanting to do Fallout anyways. Wait, is that what he's saying right now? I'm pretty sure that's what he's saying. I'm looking at what we might do after that and beyond that. And we, we had a list of what are the other types of worlds we want to go to? And obviously Fallout was at the top of the list. You know, if we could if we could do that and that, you know, magically luckily came true. Oh, no, they are showing Fallout. Holy shit. Oh. We stand corrected. <laughs> they were in no position to buy the rice from Interplay while Morrowind was in development. Yet I'm pretty sure they were still trying to do the original Fallout 3. At, at, over at Interplay in like 2001. True for us. And right behind that was, you know, science fiction. Going to space thinkers. I at least, I don't believe the Fallout thing. I do believe the. They were planning on doing Starfield since Morrowind just because that's the rumor I've always heard. That basically Todd Howard's career and all of the decisions he made related to Elder Scrolls and Fallout was so that Bethesda would be so profitable that they would finally let him make Starfield. Man. I, for his sake, I hope it's good. <laughs> How how disappointing would that be to spend your entire career building up this studio into from from the brink of bankruptcy to this like juggernaut, and it's just to make this one game, mm -hmm. and then it's just like a flop. Or just everybody just collectively shrugs their shoulders, just like eh, yeah. Where's where's Tez five or Tez six? Just for the game to suck. I mean, yeah, that's kind of the. That's potentially going to be the tragic element of Todd Howard's career. If Starfield doesn't, like, if Starfield doesn't end, like, if that's the end of his career and it's not good, that's such a disappointment. Because, I mean, Todd Howard's a good developer in, in the sense of he runs a good studio, he's massively successful, and he has a design vision. You might not disagree, you might not agree with it, but he has a vision and he takes care of his own. But if it was all so that they could make a shitty a shitty game where they learned nothing from what they pour out. It's, yeah, like that's very sad. Like the, the post mortem lesson was like he so like he wanted to make the studio bigger so that they could get bigger but to make bigger budget games. So he's like, okay, we got to dilute our, like, we can't make Morrowind again. We got to make Oblivion. Mm -hmm. and just keep diluting, 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 and getting to the end, releasing Starfield. And, being, and people are just like, yeah, it's not, it's not an RPG, though. I mean, the thing is, like, the, like pro the progression of what they tore out was, like, perfect to, to blow them up. Yeah. They didn't go straight like, from Morrowind to Skyrim. They took it a step at a time because if they had yeah. done that, it would have failed. Yeah. And it's like they're literally just been planting the seeds of their own destruction for so long. And it's like to make this thing that I've always wanted to make, I destroyed myself in the process. That's a that's a lot more of a compelling story than anything they've ever written. Let me tell yeah. you, <laughs> the story of Todd Howard's career. <laughs> There's a magic in just more trailer shots and taking off from a planet. Like that's it's extremely <clears throat> difficult human endeavor. Yeah, a lot of our games are about exploration, and that's they the had way. game that's footage the that they could put in too. Remember, this is after they did the release, like did the, the reveal. Is this after the game reveal? I think so. Yeah. What's the date on it? Um. Okay, this is into the Starfield episode one. Let me let me check real fast because I remember watching this after that. Yeah, I mean, I think you're right, but we should be yeah clear, and I can add it to my spreadsheet. Okay, this came out November 30th, 2021. Um, okay. Mm. No, it's before because the reveal yeah, was last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So they don't have anything to show. Yeah, okay. I'm and sorry. The the time the time warp that has been the past three years has mm -hmm. claimed another. 
I don't even know what year it is anymore. Have you heard the sto- Have you heard the tale of Todd Howard, the charismatic? Exploration is what's what's out there, what's past Earth, right? So, it's incredibly exciting for us to work on something like that. I feel like every time we come to a game, we're starting fresh. We're saying, okay, we just there it is. <laughs> So the first three minutes of this has just been establishing, remember all of our games, all of our previous games, and now it's, oh, no, we start fresh with each. We start fresh. Remember all of those games we made that you like? We start fresh. Remember when we said this game was 25 years in the making? No, we start fresh. When Todd you can't re- have your cake and eat it too, guys. When Todd retires, will you do a long vid on his career? So the dream is that I can do a Todd Howard interview where I can ask him about his entire career. And if not, I mean, what I hope is that Todd Howard like kind of settles down into like an indie studio and just starts a new company. And just makes the kind of games that Todd Howard wants wants to make with all the money that all the tesla money that he has i mean he has his name definitely has the weight to be able to sell sell units so todd todd howard's new studio first game you'd be surprised todd howard talked about his son watching our kinds of videos and i have a feeling that like I don't think Todd likes Todd likes Morrowind. I don't think he likes Skyrim. I think he puts on the company face that yeah, you know, Skyrim is a very profound game and and he knows it's bullshit. Well, he did get his he he comes from the tabletop era, so did that one. That's over. How do we make it better in every way? It's got a more realistic science-based backing to it, whereas Skyrim is sort of a you know, an epic fantasy. This is a more grounded uh, game and a grounded setting about exploration. So I think that gives us a different take on how we make everything. So that's sort of the thing you latch onto when we're we're making new areas, making environments, making characters. The mechanics of the world are entirely different, but there are similarities. Mechanics. I think those, you know, those are things we like. Like we like playing first person. We like having all the coffee cups. We like being able to touch everything. Those moments may except in Fallout 76. <laughs> Listen, the game couldn't even sync weather. You think it's gonna sync havoc items? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so another player picks up an item and suddenly it just explodes across the room. <laughs> Pick up an item and it's duplicated in the other player's screen. That's probably what happened. Let's be honest. Yeah. The impression I get is that Todd Howard was increasingly hands off as time went on. I don't think he wanted to make Fallout 4 or 76. I think that there was a sense of obligation that they had to do that. And I think he let Emil run Fallout 4 at least because. I don't know. My impression has always been that he was hands off compared to Skyrim. The whole thing believable. Being able to watch. Todd Howard's son is a Salt Factory fan. Sad. The sunset and nighttime come and just sit there and watch the world go by. Seems like it's not gameplay. But gameplay. <laughs> he literally says it every time he's ever said the word gameplay. Gameplay. <laughs> by the way, for those confused by the why the description is gameplay, it's because Todd Howard saying the word gameplay has been living rent free in my head for the past two weeks. <laughs> Especially after playing Fallout seventy six. Yeah, I mean, we said that a lot. Gameplay, gameplay, gameplay. <laughs> Simple bit, mm-hmm. but it works. But it is vital. Just fucking spamming left mouse button on dragons as you slowly chip their health away. Stun locking them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fucking anything that you've done on your streams. (laughs) I am the epitome of gameplay. I am the player that developers fear. Do you know what your stream is tomorrow? um... Is it Dark Brotherhood stuff? 
don't think it's going to be Dark Brother and stuff. I think it's going to be my dual wield dagger character. Mm, I think I'm going to okay. finish her stuff off. Sounds like fun. Now so that's gameplay. So, so chat, remember, be there. Same time tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, 3 well, p.m. Might, Eastern Standard Time. It might be 4. I think I'm going to do 4. Okay. And then on Friday, uh, we'll be dropping a video. I have to export it tonight, but it's uh, basically ready. Like, it's already out on the Patreon, so. Uncensored and complete over on Patreon.com slash TV. How you feel through the rest of it. I also think that because... It Which you also get access to my video as well if you subscribe to either Patreon. Mm -hmm. And I certainly recommend Private Sessions video. Uh, this is not, like, part of the shilling bit. I actually like really appreciated his video because it had been months since i had seen what i felt like was a good uh analysis video but i've been a bit checked out of the genre i'm thinking of starting a channel on my discord for submitting analysis videos and then like uh community grading them mm. it would be nice to have a, a filter what did you have to cut for YouTube? So most of the concerns for the what had to be cut for YouTube is in the later parts uh, with Wastelanders. That's where the uh, that's where the spicy political takes from Bethesda come in. Um, it's mostly just we swear a lot when we play games <laughs> uh, compared to when we recorded. So there's a lot more swearing than usual in the video that kind of had to be subdued because just in the like the time that we were playing fallout 76 youtube was crazy with the guidelines switching up it's based in a more realistic atmosphere is like you have a lot of people on our team there's no fucking no way they're doing atmospheric sim simulation come on now <laughs> don't don't be insane the I don't think you're even allowed to fly the ship in atmosphere. I think they've already confirmed that. Oh, yeah. You can fly in space, but you can't actually. Uh... Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of questions I have in that. I'm going to have to ask <laughs> for a source so we can check that out on Thursday. Who are super into certain things like robotics or you know engineering, and, and they can use this lifetime of knowledge they have gathered and then use it in their work. It's a neat looking door. I'd love to see it actually in the game. Like literally just <laughs> standing in the ship, looking at the door. They couldn't get that footage. Nope. What if there was something in the shot that they weren't prepared to reveal? What if the game crashed while they were trying to record it? Mm-hmm. Everyone comes from you know these different areas and brings stuff to the game that can make it in, and it all it all matters, you know, from the rocks to the the clutter to you know what the spacesuits look like. It's you know based on people's experience and sort of learning about how things work in the world and trying to apply it in a way that. It makes me nervous how often they say realistic when they mean hard sci-fi. Yeah, I've been kind of mulling that over for a bit. The uh focus on emphasizing how realistic the game is going to be realistic sounds better you know you know the normies and stuff they don't really get the definitions between soft and hard sci-fi and stuff realism though we've been drilling that into their head for like two decades now yeah that's what it feels like to me is i doubt it's going to be very realistic yeah. but like they're still going to market it as being such because i think it's very hard to prove that they were lying about that realistic sounds boring yeah realistic sounds like a space sim which is like 90 yes. percent of the time super boring because space is a bit boring yeah because things happen over the course of you know hundreds of millions of years and billions of years believable for this universe yeah it starts feeling so real to us like all you're saying there we do all that again. stuff but then concepting like it's so like okay so i like this 
I like this a lot. This is what I was talking about with the uh, tons of attention paid to how they're living their life and like kind of the compartmentalization of stuff. This is pretty cool. Is that a container we can loot from? Yeah, it's probably going to be like a, a loot container for sure. And so this was probably going to pop off and like go to the side a little bit and then you'll get the menu to pop up and it'll say like H2O bottle and uh, black eyed peas. And uh, but I mean, like, it's still like if, if this is if this is their what the mindset that they're going into when they're designing this kind of stuff, that's cool. All the parts of Red Dead Redemption 2 I det that I detest are the parts that they're doing their damnedest to achieve realism. Really? I was kind of into that stuff. The parts that I didn't like was the like movie scene components yeah. where it felt like that they wanted they wanted to be making an HBO cowboy show i kind of like i, I kind of like when uh triple a developers go a little crazy on their I, I i like i like red dead redemption 2 because it gives me this feeling of like guilty ple like, it, i feel guilty almost where i'm like running past all these environmental details and stuff and it's like somebody spent years working on this little setting here that you're, like you're, you're looking at ignoring. thousands of dollars yeah, yeah. And i'm just ignoring and it's like if you're going to blow your budget on like half a $500 million game, I want to feel that when I'm playing it. I hear the animal skinning complaint a lot. I skinned a lot of animals in Red Dead and never really felt like it was out of place. But, you know, I'm a bit more, I'm a bit, bit of a uh, slower paced gamer sometimes. Like Red Dead Redemption Two is catering to my desire to like take life slow, and then yeah. there's other games I play when like I want to have like fast paced, um, more fast paced gameplay. Everything they eat, or the you will eat the bugs. <laughs> <laughs> Why does it look can like I, this? Can I can I have my lab grown wagyu steak? Like the tray on the left looks really bad compared to the like kind of mock ups they've done on the right. The rabbit skinning animation in Red Dead Redemption 2 actually works IRL. Yeah, I think a lot of people are uncomfortable about how um, the anus is interfacing with the rest of your body. <laughs> <laughs> the toys the children play with. Basically. See, like, this is. Okay, there's the occasional concept art they show that's like tonally way different than the other concept arts yeah where it's like some of it will be really gritty and like the perspective on this feels kind of fucked up but the the black cat has been a consistent element of uh this other style of concept art that they've been showing occasionally and this almost feels like fallout 76 in like the attention to detail like isn't it wacky that we put the the animal backpack and the cowboy hat on the robot It's the same. It's the same concept, concept artist that worked on Fallout Four. Or what are their bedtime stories? What is their art? What is their history? What is their entertainment? Are you what actually going to answer those questions? Because I, I remember asking those questions yeah. in Skyrim, and I did not get any of those answers. I don't yeah. even know what the fuck was going on with it's Talos and Sovngarde. Asking questions. I was in Talos and Sovngarde. Like it. Yeah, be <laughs> I know, it, I know. It's that usual Only thing of, to stop and guard and he was an imperial. It's that usual thing of like Bethesda asks a lot of the right questions and they don't come up with enough of the answers. Like that uh that that or quote I use in, in a book. Or that quote I use in the video where it's like, "Oh yeah, it's just it's a tower underground and there's this whole story about how it got there." And it's like, "What's the story?" <laughs> <laughs> you've posed an interesting question with the tower being down there but you haven't actually told that interesting of a story you know who did environmental storytelling really well Bungie in Halo mm -hmm. ODST mm -hmm. remember when we were talking about the rookies animations and you were saying like how him trying to straighten out the uh, the, the sniper, sniper rifle, rifle, rifle yeah the barrel was yeah, it was a sign of his like um, his practicality. And I was like, actually, I saw that as like him being impractical. He's just trying to straighten it out because it's just like 
Like I do shit like that all the time where I just fuck with something, even though I know it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we both had completely different reads of that character based on just the one animation. It's like, that's environmental storytelling done right. It leads to different, con it leads to conclusions, character conclusions, a, a broken tower in an, in an, in an environment that doesn't necessarily mean ca like players are going to form conclusions based off of that. Like you went half of the way, there's still another half to go. I've and never, always... I've never heard of Patreon banning people uh, instantly. You could try Subscribestar. That's the that's an alternative that I have. Or you can uh, do a YouTube membership or private sessions, and you'll get the video too. Mm, yeah, but yeah, so um, yeah, Bungie does a little bit like, especially with ODST and Reach, they do the environmental storytelling meme like a thousand times better. Yeah, I mean, you know, limited limited scope and everything like that. They were able to focus in on that, but I don't know. I I, I never really felt like it worked that well in Skyrim and beyond. As if you really want to know something, read the listen to the hollow tapes or read the journals. Yeah, I did get a few comments that were like, "Well, you didn't read the journals in the dungeon," and it's like, ugh. Come on. <laughs> that's that's the extent of storytelling is that there's a journal that got added. Because the what if what it feels like with the journals compared to like written dialogue in Morrowind is that the area the level designer had an idea for what the story of an area was that they wanted to tell, but they didn't have the time or the resources to tell it. And so the easiest way to do that is to just drop a book into the world that has all the information that you want to communicate to them in a in a journal or in a terminal if they're lucky they might get an audio log or a bandit that says like a line that you can overhear when you're sneaking yeah yeah text is not meant to be a crutch it's meant to enhance the experience Almost every time I read a journal, I just think, man, it is convenient that somebody wrote down all this for some reason. <laughs> a lot of, yeah, a lot of journals <laughs> in Bethesda games are seem to be written by people who have never actually journaled. They're like, that's something that I do or have done in the past. And the types of information that you typically write down are not the type of information that Bethesda likes to include in their journals. Sorry, Todd, please continue. There has to be an emotional trigger that occurs. And I think as time has gone on, we're able to boredom an emotion? even better picture Yo, that triggers that. What do you mean by emotional trigger? <laughs> that emotional thing. Is there, is, is there supposed to be like an emotional response from the image I'm seeing? It's pretty. I don't necessarily, like, I'm not necessarily really feeling that much from it, though. I find it weird that the player character can't have a journal in Skyrim, but all of the NPCs do. That we the weird thing about Skyrim, and I pointed it out in my video, is that it's really weird that it's a, it's a game about a Nordic warrior culture where everybody writes their feelings down in journals, in in their diaries. Well, you know, they they can't express their emotions to each other, so they they got to write their deepest, darkest emotions and secrets and stuff down in their journals at night. Starfield has an accurate depiction of a panic attack. Warrior poets? Okay, but the Nords are not presented as warrior poets. They're almost always presented as, like, massive ingrates. Like, Philistines of culture who wouldn't be literate. That's how Nords are presented in Skyrim. They're not presented as being, like, this culturally sophisticated place that values honor and... War, like you literally join the honor faction and half of like more than half like 90 percent of the characters will say that they're in it for the money you always have that step out moment into the world so to say Technology oh, okay. no thank you please no more step out into the world moments <laughs> that's their thing 
You're going to like it or not. You're going to be getting that every time. I do wonder how Starfield's going to start, what they're going to opt for. I guess you make your character and then like there might be different starts based on what you select. Step That'd out of your cool. ship. Yeah, what's what's better than one step out into the world reveal? How about three? I too will convenient leave a conveniently placed journal detailing the last moments of my life before getting killed with all the necessary clues to access my stash of precious items. <laughs> Make sure that when you are recording your death that you flip it off before it actually happens so that nobody has to hear your guttural, guttural death sounds and the sounds of your bowels loosening. <laughs> Change, we've all changed, so our expectations would be there, is, up there goes Emil campus. again. He's got one shot of Emil Pagliarulo writing some kind of boring dialogue. Moment. Us being able to do that and have it feel new every generation, every game. Is something that is really special about what we do. I like to say that Starfield has two step out moments. That's crazy. Oh no. <laughs> no, Todd, please. <laughs> it's the moment you create your character and then the moment you first step off of a ship. I want less, not more. <laughs> Our process of making it is is a journey for us you know halo 4 has two step out moments too right <laughs> oh when you first walk out onto the deck of the forward <laughs> unto dawn and when you first uh step out of the wreckage on requiem hey it's two step out moments <laughs> that makes it good right that is very very rewarding and coming to starfield Everybody starting over and saying, what would you want to do? What does going to space mean to you? Getting away everybody from comes back to the same terrible world. games. I want to see what's out there. Really? Not a single person said they want to escape? You forgot when you step out of the room after playing it. <laughs> uh. No, you know one person said, I want to bang aliens. What what a great video to title The Endless Pursuit cuz the only thing I thought of by a video <laughs> named The Endless Pursuit is like endless <laughs> radiant quests <laughs> or endlessly pursuing that G roll in Fallout 76. <laughs> okay, this one's shorter at least. So I think this is going to be the last thing that we're checking out today. Yeah, I think we did the Into the Starfield videos in reverse. Whoops. <laughs> space cloaks or space periods. That's basically what they've said the story's going to be. I am amazed. <laughs> I am amazed listen. at what they have admitted so far. Well, listen. They're listen. They're they're lying, and they're saying that the game is going to be worse than you. Th like, they're actually covering up how good the game is by saying that the game is going to be bad just to trick you. No, Skyrim, I'm not high on copium. <laughs> Skyrim. They had to. The Civil War barely survived the cut in Skyrim. Starfield's its second shot. They've at got. Life. They've got it this time. Yeah, they figured it out. They they finally like done it. <laughs> Like you said in the, I think it was your Skyrim video where you're yeah. like, you know, it's... they keep trying the political storylines, yeah. <laughs> and it's just it, uh, like I literally say it is inauthentic to their identity to do this, and they just keep <laughs> trying to do it because, like, the older games did it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing Space White Run. I think it is really fitting that they've decided that their logo is the vault door. <laughs> like, there's so much uh, perfect symbolism for Bethesda in the abandonment of Elder Scrolls. <laughs> that they've embraced Fallout and made three Fallout games since Elder Scrolls V. Remember that, gang.
At Bethesda Game Studios, we love to create experiences <clears throat> that, through art and technology, transport you. We've brought that to many worlds, but never. Remember how hyped you were for this trailer? Also, who are, okay, who are these two characters that are talking to each other? And why is one of them wearing a guard helmet? You see, my eye, it, ca it, catch it catches the little details. The stuff that they want to have flash by, I, I can laser focus in on that shit and say, something's wrong with this. Yeah, that's, that's got to be like an old pre-production uh, clip. Either that or like it's the player and their companion. Mm. The guards before they got hit in the knee. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, to what's above us. What the fuck was with the circle? Like, what's going on with the framing of this? Where Transport it's you. a slowly panning out circle, but it's going you to the lower to third worlds, instead of the center. But never to what's above us. Yeah, ooh, what? Like, I get what they're going for with the zooming up in the space, but... Well, you know, it's a starfield circle mm -hmm. motif. How many fucking introductions for this series are there? What's out there? What our future holds? In some ways, yeah. Each video has felt Egypt. like it would have been an appropriate introduction. The bus is from the stars. We want to return. Do you think the towns will be the same size as Skyrim since it has to run on Xbox and PS5? Well, that's kind of the tricky thing. It depends on the level of fidelity. I think that the traditional limitations have been broken due to the way that they've staggered the improvements to these systems and the fact that they're kind of going back to running things at 60 FPS, at least on some select systems. But, I mean, there's two ways that I think they'll go about it. Well, there's one main way I think they'll go about it, which is I feel like they should take the criticism to heart, and if it's at least white run sized segments so it could be like five white run sized segments of a city so it's a bigger city in total because that like that's what the imperial city is right like there's yeah. no way that they're going to make a space game that has more <laughs> fucking white runs so but i think that's copium i don't want to be black -pilled. i know the stream seems like it's the other way but I want to say that they're going to do better. I'm not just going to sit here and say it's going to be worse than what came before. Because what came before was Fallout 76, and I don't see them doing worse than that. <laughs> it's a very pretty shot of Jupiter that they have, though. Starfield is our first new universe in over 25 years. Oh, who gives a shit that it's a new IP? It's a game we've dreamt of playing. And it's only now. And we have the hardware. Hang on, though. This is a picture. This isn't a render, because look at these two people that are over here. On the left side. Mm-hmm. Like, what? What? Starfield. What is that? Hang on. Starfield is our first new U in five years. It's a game we've dreamt of playing. And it's only now. So they've got the concept art, right? Mm -hmm. And then you think, okay... Concept art, and then the next thing's gonna be a render. Ready? We have the hardware. Nope, it's a picture. Is that, is that a photograph? It's a photo they're, because there's yeah. that dude's wearing a hoodie and like yeah. a cinch backpack, and there's like a little memorial there. This is a picture. Yeah, yeah. Because they literally can't show anything new in this little serial. <sighs> you're su you're supposed to think it's a render. So are they trying to pawn off? A picture as being something that they're rendering yeah because you would think is so because how it goes is idea product idea concept art yeah final or render ins inspiration product like so so really this should come before the concept art because this is what inspired the concept art i in you know if we're following the logic there yeah, I think they're trying to pull a sneaky one here. Is If the next shot is a render, I will shit my pants, but I don't think it's going to be. Where the technology and...
I mean, it's a render, but it's not. It's not. Yeah. Uh, it's not a. It's our first new. It's not what they showed in the concept art. Universe in over twenty-five years. It's a game we've dreamt of playing, and it's only now. It really is amazing. So, why wouldn't they do it where? They show the picture because obviously the concept art is based on the picture, right? Mm -hmm. So they show the picture and then they show the concept art and then they show the render of the game of where that's at. Yes. Now that we have the hardware. Like. <laughs> what the fuck? Remember, chat, we're just two people who taught ourselves how to do like basic video shit to make shitty videos on the internet people who are making these things are being paid live like livable wages for DC. they went to school for like four years we should not be able to pick this shit apart like this man this is this is uh impressive <laughs> <laughs> we've reached a new level of bethesda disingenuous marketing yeah, and it's crazy that it's like literally just slipping this little knife in at the end. Yeah. <laughs> Which it's the beginning. It's supposed to be the beginning anyway. Yeah, so uh wow. The technology and the experience to push our we're, oh, creative boundaries even further. Is are we seeing the, the third time? Yeah, we've I think seen this? I think this is the third time we're seeing ML write this little uh exchange. With the, it is it is what it is. Is Emil a tapper? Does he tap one key at a time? Oh, is he? It's a, a game we've dreamt of. A little playing. little pecker. And it's only now that we have the hardware, the technology, and the experience to push our creative boundaries even. He is. Yeah. He does, Emil Pagliarulo confirmed to not use the home row. He's a he's a seeker pecker interesting that's that's impressive because i imagine he writes a lot of words no wonder it takes him so long to make these games <laughs> i wonder how much tech voice to like uh voice um, to text oh yeah he uses, and then he just goes in and cleans it up <laughs> you know i like to use my voice it helps me imagine how a conversation would actually sound is that why all your all the raiders sound like they don't speak english they all they'll sound like they're aliens this is emil pagliarulo he's in the lab he's cooking the meth <laughs> he's cooking up the bars that are gonna make starfield a banger story the crimson fleet you're gonna love it So the question is, when we play Starfield, do we go do the Crimson Fleet first thing or last thing? Hmm. I think I think we're going to have to coordinate on this. Honestly. Yeah, we're going to have to be in comms and be like, OK, yeah. uh, one of us has to do it. Like, we'll probably uh, have to do a coin. Uh, you flip. know what? I'm going to no, no, no. I I'm going to go on. I'm going to go out on a limb. I will take the Crimson Fleet. You'll do it first. Yes, I'll I, do it. I will I'll, I'll do it at bullet. the end because I feel like that's a thematic <laughs> end to the playthrough. It is what it is. Sign on his desk. Oh, we pointed that out the first time that they used the soul sequence. But yes, it does in fact say the 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 legend himself, Salt Factory. <laughs> it is what it is. Oh, sorry, Salt Factory is what can you do? Sorry. Yeah, what can you do? It is what it, it is. It is what it is. Is what I said a lot at my previous job. Yeah, it is what it is. Got said a lot when the development of Fallout seventy six. <laughs> Are you gonna wait yeah, until some other people make Starfield videos first? Nope. So Starfield is gonna be like Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven, where I grind the fuck out of that video. Yeah, I'm gonna. I I plan on hitting the ground running with that. That's why we're doing the research before the game comes out. Because we're going to have all all the notes and stuff like compartmentalized and down, ready to go. Now, this doesn't mean we're going to be making like 10 hour deconstructed analysis videos, mm -hmm. but we'll we'll see what. <laughs> we'll uh, which, see what OK, happens. a chatter asks, which is worse? He hunts and pecks his awful dialogue or he says it all out loud in speech to text and <laughs> says, yep, that's good. <laughs> that's. That's a great question, man. 
I would love to do you think because so when I'm writing when I'm writing I like to then stop and then read like verbally mm-hmm. read out what I wrote so that like I can especially like dialogue and stuff like things that I'm actually going to voice that's so what that I can hear it does he stop and read out like aloud yeah all, his... all the all the cringe he writes because <laughs> yeah a, a lot of the reason why there isn't very much cut from our videos in editing is because all of that gets cut in writing because we're reading it out constantly yeah and so like it's it's mind-boggling to me that you would write something and not like think about how it would be said and like how it's going to come out you get to shadow one person at at bethesda for a day who is it i kind of want to know what todd howard does all day oh for me dude for me it's emil uh, yeah, em- <laughs> Emil is definitely. It's here's the thing. I'm thinking it from it like we each get to pick one. I know that you're going to have stories to tell after following Emil around. <laughs> I feel like the world needs to know what Todd Howard does on a daily basis. Yeah. You will not believe what Emil does when he's in his office alone. Keep the door open. <laughs> further in it we invite you to- more concept art this is new concept art yeah very high was the last concept art animated they've all been animated they've all had mm. little animated details where the ship will be a, a layer above and so mm, okay, all, all yeah. it's doing is like panning across but yeah it gives it a, sim- a semblance of motion to join i know how to do that <laughs> yeah the last group of space exp- or like they've got a fog layer added that kind of yeah, flows across. Yeah, yeah, I, I, see I mean, it's a good in. integration of like uh, it's probably digital concept art, so they're probably just getting like the layer assets straight from the yeah. artist to uh, so that they can composite it into like a more dynamic scene. It looks cool, but I've seen games with cutscenes that look like this. Yeah, D- uh, Divinity Original Sin Two does its cutscenes <clears throat> like this. Oh man, I love that Reach map. You know, a lot of the concept art does remind me of Halo Reach, which isn't a bad thing. Because Halo Reach, like, Reach looks like a cool planet. Yeah. Explorers. It's a next generation role playing game where you'll be who you want, go where you want, experience our. This story. one's new. This one's not. And forge your own. This one's not. More than that, Starfield's about hope our shared humanity, and searching for the answer. Pink Gunner. Answers to life's greatest mystery. We have a lot to share. For the first time, we'll provide an inside look okay, at the so inspiration. Okay, so they haven't, we haven't seen the mocap stuff yet, so there's episodes of this that they haven't released. Because hmm. they showed mocap stuff in the other, in the other making of stuff. Yeah. So and process behind Starfield. We hope you'll join Constellation. Okay, so this fucking Pre-order. watch, that watch that they show, it uses the user interface that they've shown off a lot. That um, is, it's that a, is a collector's edition item for it's sure. A, so it's a smart watch. It has like a shit ton of features for telling you the temperature, the pressure, um, the weather, like all that kind of stuff. It's a very advanced watch. Um, it actually looks cool. It looks way cooler than the fucking... You want to get the pip boy? <laughs> and go with us on the journey. Actually, as functional. We craft our next epic. Bethesda's studio just looks like a liminal space now. <laughs> and that's how it ends today, chat. Uh, we went on for five and almost a half hours. Pretty good stream, actually. A very good stream. Way better than what I was going to do, which was work on the Moro and subtitles. Yeah. No, this is very productive. Mm-hmm. How, mu- how much, uh, how big is the... The little note file? Notes. Yeah, the notes that you got now. Uh, We're at 85 lines, so not bad. Yeah. Considering that a lot of the trailers said literally nothing. All right, I will respond to your DMs promptly. Don't worry. So, um... We're going to be doing this particular kind of stream again on Thursday. There's still more stuff that I need to check out. 
And we're going to be doing another Starfield stream on the 11th when they do the Xbox showcase, which is 90 minutes of the Xbox showcase and 30 minutes of Starfield. So we're going to have 30 minutes of like new stuff to look at on the 11th of next month. I don't know if the 11th has passed yet. It's not Thursday. It's the 11th of June, but that will be uh, the next stream after that. And then uh, tomorrow I'll be over. We'll be doing this again, but over on private sessions channel. Uh, we're doing this to raise awareness of the Fallout 76 project that we've done that you can check out early access of. And if you don't want to pay us, it starts premiering on Friday. But it's going to take a month for all the parts to come out. So we encourage you to go pay for it because you'll get the uncensored full cut. Uh, you'll get both uncensored full cuts, whichever one you choose to support. So we are doing that. Raising awareness of Fallout 76 is a charitable, worthwhile cause. Uh, yeah, we got to raise awareness of the people, the poor people who are trapped still playing the game. So thanks everybody for come, who came out. We had a great stream today. And uh, we hope you'll check us out again tomorrow, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Bye. Bye, everybody.